find yourselves in the small room of the coffin maker's shop. The room that you immediately left, the disappearing and decaying bodies of the vampire spawn strewn about. As Clayton begins to pull open the drawers of the dressing, the, the dresser, and in the hidden compartment at the very bottom, as he pushes down the latch and it pops open, revealing what's inside, the black velvet bundle is almost staring at you as you reach your hands in and you can feel the weight of it. The bones themselves, older, almost almost petrified. And as you begin to open it, you see that in your hands, it's not the full form of a skeleton, but it is what remains of St. Andrew. This is it? I believe. Does it feel magical at all? Roll in our comic check. Oh, pretty good. Thank you for the follow, Tony D1. Thank you for the follow, Tony D1. 26. Ooh. Um, no, they don't they don't feel magical. I think these are it. Sonax, can you please take a look? Of oh. course. I will see if they are sanctified. And I'll just sort of like throw you, not throw you, but like sort of just <laughs> rush like, 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 the bones. <laughs> well, the, there are bones here, perhaps. At the the Troka card had mentioned bones and, and wisdom, and I just want to like go through all of the other like drawers and stuff just to see if these were the bones that Venture of the card was referring to. See if I can find any kind of like knowledge or scrolls or whatever. Uh, roll an investigation check. Ooh, that was almost good. <laughs> Thirteen. You you look through um, and you check every drawer, looking for any other additional signs that there may be a potential um, hidden compartment, etc. And you find nothing here. It seems to be just the bones. Nothing about them seems to be magical or special aside from what you know. These are the bones of Saint Andrew. They are the integral piece to keeping the church hollowed ground against Strahd. Do I get the sense that these have been desecrated at all, or do they still feel Roll sanctified? Roll a uh, religion check. Ooh, religion check. <laughs> Ooh, ha, ha. Hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 in the earlier session, we're allowed to be a little bit. 19, 19, 19, 19, 19. Um, They still seem to be um, hallowed. I have good news. It seems whatever foul agents were acting here have not yet uh, desecrated these bones, so they should be able to create hallowed ground. Thank you, Toot and Drill. Thank so, you, Toot and Drill, for the follow. So I, 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 I gotta ask, Sarnax. Um, I, I'm just, I'm just curious. I, I guess it must be some combination of of the bones and the location that that must create some sort of a, a connection because. You know, if you didn't notice, there were a bunch of vampires spawning in the next room, and the bones are right here. Well, yes, they were not properly uh, put to rest, so the it will take a proper cleric in order to use these bones. I would say that you, especially with that religion check, would know well enough that the bones have to be buried to make uh, the ground itself okay. hallowed. All right, all right. That 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 makes sense. Uh, we gotta. I mean, we gotta get back to the church. Thank you for the cheer. Thank you for the bits. Thank you for the cheer. Yeah, pretty sure we're getting announcements up. We gotta. We gotta. That means we. If there's nothing else that we can do here, we gotta get. We gotta make haste and get back to the church as quickly as possible before any word of this spreads. Too many people already know that these bones are missing. I agree, and even if it's just us five and the grave digger and this gentleman tied up in the corner, I believe, as we left him. Yes, what do we do with him? Uh, thank you, Pleasant Thirteen, for the follow. What kind of state do we leave him in? Is he just tied up, or is he? He's he's still <laughs> under suggestion. I under no, suggestion. I dropped him. Oh, you I dropped, dropped him. That's why so, I tied him up. So. so he's he's tied up, and he's basically just um, in the corner. He looks horrified. Um, we didn't find out what we don't know what he was going to do with the bones. No. So we should probably interrogate him and understand what he was doing with these. No, I got to be honest, Professor. Before you uh, 
magicked him, I, I thought we were going to have to rough him up a little bit to get the info we wanted. Um, well, I believe now that may be the course of action, Shepard. Uh, did you, did you like, tie up his mouth or anything, or is he just tied up? He's just tied up. He's not gagged. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll walk over to him. I, I mean, I, I suppose we could just take him to the church. Do you think that the father might want him to answer for this uh, transgression? Well, uh, I mean, whether the father wants him to answer for this transgression or not, he will answer all the same. While I'd like to sit here and interrogate the man, maybe it's best we do it back at the church. How can we take him inconspicuously through town? Does it matter? Yes, it would... Don't you think it will draw attention to us? If we have this bound man that people may know as the coffin maker through the, the entire town? Oh, absolutely. Professor, if I may, um, there's quite a few unused coffins in this room. Oh, my. Well, well. That is quite a... That's actually brilliant. Quite an idea. Yes. Well, how, how do we keep him quiet? We just gag him, right? Of course. We should probably do this non-magically, because I believe I'm pretty tapped out for today. I am very <laughs> exhausted as well. All right, Sarnax, help me find a coffin for his, for his size, I suppose. Very well, and I'll, I'll cast my lantern light, and as we as we go through so the room... you are upstairs, so you're not on that level. You are upstairs oh, where okay. there are the wooden pieces. It's the workshop where the coffins are put together. The showroom is downstairs on the main floor. It's the first room you walked into when you first entered the... I'll, uh, I'll just, I'll pick them up, and I'll put them over my shoulder, <laughs> kind of like firemen's carry them downstairs. One moment, Shepard. Sure. Perhaps we should take a look at these... And I'll gesture to the fucking corpses of seven vampires spawn. <laughs> you see as they, they have essentially at this point turned to ash. And there are seven piles of ash on the ground, or on the, the floor around you. Is there any doubt that we have that these were the creations of the Countess? Well, I mean, it, it, these appear to be exactly what we saw in the basement of that other church. Uh, yes. And if if we know anything about what we've learned, then no, I, I think you're right on it. And then I wonder, who would these individuals have been in life? Were people going missing? Do they have family that were looking for them? Uh, maybe we can ask the father. You might know. You might have word of... of people around here that have gone missing, or, or they might not even be from this town. Why would she be turning all of these people into vampires, Bob? Perhaps other, other vampires in Barovia? I can't fathom, what, what, what business would she have with such pawns, especially here? Wouldn't she keep her, her spawn in her, in her castle? Given the day we've had, I'm not sure I would put anything past the realm of possibility. Professor, consult the reading. Was it not stated that a powerful ally of the devil would be found with these bones? Well, it doesn't say these bones. It says a bones, bones of, of, of an ancient enemy. Perhaps we were presumptuous. Perhaps this is the ancient enemy, but maybe it's more of a metaphor. Maybe there is will there will be a lead, and hopefully this man can give us some more information. Let us throw him into a coffin. Agreed. So I'll try to I'll try to put him on my shoulder and like firemen's carry him. Honestly, with the the time that you would take to do this, it would be easy enough to to put him on your shoulder to begin to carry him down the stairs. Uh, and then we'll just try to find an empty coffin that's his size. You here to the main room. Um, the door opens up into the main room, and as you look around, you see that sitting on the coffin nearest the wall, a woman in a regal black dress, no longer adorned in armor, lace spilling out from the sleeves of her outfit. She crosses one leg over the other, and you hear 
the wood of the Coffin Creek. Oh, my new friends, I see that you are getting integrated into the Lock-In Society. But I would warn you not to go poking your nose into other people's business, you see. It is not going to make you friends in high places. Now, we will let Heinrich go. He has done his part, and you can take those loans, if you wish. But we won't hurt him, no? There is no need. He was simply... And she looks towards him. He's not faced towards her, he's over your shoulder. He was simply out of his mind with lust. Lust for Lust for bones? Why? No. Not for bones, Professor. For other things. Things only a woman like myself can offer him. You must forgive him for his This deeds, you see. I will handle it from you, yes. And you will be on your way. But we will see each other for dinner yet soon. And we can talk it all out together, if you like. You expect me to just put this man down, leave him with you, and walk away like nothing's ever happened? Of course, why wouldn't you? Shepard, put the man down, leave him with her. Professor! And let's walk away like none of this happened. Anger in you. You can't be serious! Why are you so angry? She is the Countess of this land. I would not disobey an order from her. I uh... see as she looks at you and a slight smile graces her face. A tendril of near bone white hair falls and lands gracefully on her cheek. She blows it away and it's almost as if it rides on the wind as it finds itself attaching back to her head in perfect in perfect placement. Um, I'll kind of glaring at the professor. There was, you see, an infestation. It was so kind of you to rid the poor coffin maker of it. I know it caused him so much stress. I'll, I'll put the man down on the floor, and I'll just pull out a small knife and, like, cut the, the bindings. And then put the knife away. Now, friends, go get some rest. At the end, you have been so busy. Don't worry yourselves in things that you should not be getting involved in. I wouldn't want any of you to be hurt. Of course not. No, we are just... Simply continuing on with this expedition, as planned. There is lots to be learned. And when you come to visit, we can talk about so many things. I will show you the castle, and I think you will find many rooms there called answers you seek. Books, of course. Of course. Well, I certainly look forward to it. Well, we'll be on our way. Good day. Good day. And I pick up my case, and I just try to shuffle awkwardly out the door, like past her. She watches you, but she barely moves at all. It's just her head slowly turning. Come along, all. All right, Professor. Countess, I'll take my hat. It's Ma'am. great to see you again. As I'm leaving, I'll stop and turn. I'll look at her and I'll look at him. I haven't said anything to her yet. And I'll say, Am I correct in my presumption that you punish uselessness quite ruthlessly? That would imply that Henrik is useless. Very well. I wish you a good evening with one reminder. 
When there is the desecration of hallowed ground, that does become my business, Countess. Great. Then you might want to make your way to the church. Thank you for the host. Thank you for the host. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As you see, a poor coffin maker shop cannot be desecrated hallowed ground. Thank you for the resource. Thank you for the resource, oh, that's nice. Thank you. And I will do my duty as you do yours until next we meet, Countess. And I'll walk out the door. As soon as the door is closed and we're like 10 or 15 feet away from the, uh, the coffin maker shop, I just want to turn to the professor and, uh, we, we gotta go now. She knew about this and she doesn't even seem to care. We have to get back to the church no, not now. A, not a word until we're further away, Shepard, please, let's and go. I'm gonna start, like, like, jogging. I will try to catch up and try to keep up. So I guess we're going to book it to back to the church. Right? Yeah, I'm not like full on sprinting, but I am a hustle. I am like going right back to the church. Like doing the whole like dumb thoroughfare. Yes, <laughs> very much so. You make your way back to the church. You enter in through the large arched doors and you find yourselves in the empty main walkway, the pews on both the left and the right, and you once again um, see the you see the father at the very front, kneeling in front of the statue of St. Andrew. Father! Father, is everything alright? He moves quickly as he turns around and looks at you. Yes, everything is fine. Is everything fine for you? Can, can, can we go in your office? Is, is everyone here still okay? Yes, you, you seem rattled. Is it? We, 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 we will move quickly. The, the children are fine. Irina is fine. And he quickly shuffles towards his office. You make your way into the small wooden room, the lone desk, uh, as he sits behind it and, and looks up at you. Um, a bit of alarm on his face. Uh, she, she knows. She, she knew the whole God's damn time. Is this doll? It has to be. Unless she has eyes everywhere, and I suppose she does. But she didn't even care. She could have waltzed in here and slaughtered everyone. We should probably give some context as we... He's looking at you wide-eyed, a bit of confusion, but almost a knowing look on his face. Almost as if he believes he understands what you mean. We recovered the bones, the grave digger, the grave digger sold it to the coffin maker. We went to- but what reason would Mili have to sell the bones to Heinrich? We don't know. Well, we, we assumed he did it at least for money, for, for whatever, but we don't know why, why the coffin maker would well enough. Those... I'm sorry? I pay him Mili I pay him well enough. Uh, we, we, I don't doubt that for a but second. But the, the church does not have an abundance of money, I can't pay him so much more. And, I, and that is totally understandable, but he, he's something about his siblings. He needs more money for his siblings. Either way, punish him as you see fit. We went to the coffin maker's shop. We found him. He took us to the bones, but there were vampire spawn in his, in his, in his shop. We, we destroyed them all. Seven of them. It was by a miracle, uh, the grace of, of, of Sarnax's of god over here, that we, even, Garrix, that that we right. even had any chance at all. That must have been a harrowing event for you. I, I do not understand why he would take the bones and leave them in his shop. Must, unless, father. Unless what? He needed... You said, how do you know that she is aware of what has happened here? She was in the very shop once we nearly perished to the spawn, it, it, taunting us, collecting her stooge. She knew that we'd already recovered the bones. She knew. She knew about the bones. She said that he was overcome by lust and he was simply lusting for Shradanya, and that's why he did it. And she just let us go, provided we left, provided we left that 
damn coffin maker with her. He seemed almost charmed or betwixt. Perhaps she placed a similar charm that Mad Mary referenced with her, with, in regards to her, her daughter. Have you heard of anything like that? Can she charm people or... or... I know that she is very persuasive. And she's quite beautiful and people will oftentimes do things for her. But I... I don't know of the ability to charm. I do not have much contact with the Countess. I'm, I'm sorry, but that man is in grave danger and there was... There's nothing we can do. Uh, if he is in league with the Devil's Thrall, then he has... He has made his own path. Whatever punishment he gets will be too good for him. Lust makes both men and women throw their reason to the wayside, and it makes me doubt every single person in this land of death. Father, does this whole populace simply allow death itself to walk all over them? No. This is not in the lucky. We are fortified. We are far from the gaze. The devil's prod. I, she does not travel here. Yet so she has, it seems. Yes. But it is not a common occurrence, as I've said. That's right. I, I don't know what to make of all of this. Either way, we did not dare to defy her given her obvious power and ability. Uh, so we, we left the coffin maker with her. She let us take the bones. You have the bones? We do. May I please? We need to Sorry. get these into the ground as soon as possible. <clears throat> do you need assistance, father? Please. Let us go. Let us. Let us inter these remains. And he gets up hastily. He doesn't even attempt to take them from you. He sees that you have them as he opens the door and shuffles out. This is the quickest that you've seen him move as he makes his way weaving through the pews until he reaches the statue he's been kneeling in front of. And you see as he gets down to his knees and he begins to strain and struggle as he attempts to push the statue to the side. It appears to be on some kind of track. Um, and it takes him a bit of time, but he finds the force to do so, and he moves it to the side. And you see that there is a rough hewn uh, spot into the fresh earth beneath the floors, beneath the statue of this church. Uh, where there is a perfect indentation for the bones to rest. Would you like to lay them to rest? I would not presume that the father of this church would do that. I will assist how you would suggest them, father. You may lower them into their spot. You have done great here by retrieving the bones for us and returning the hallowed ground to this church. On this land, Tordania may not stand in all of her accursed ways. And so, Irina and the children will walk safely upon the church grounds? They will. I look down. Is it dirt or is it stone? It's dirt. It's dirt. I'll, I'll reach down and I'll try to get, you know, stick my claws into the soil and run it through my fingers and, and give it a, a smell. Does it smell like the same kind of soil of throughout Barovia? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll lay it to, to, to rest and, um, I'll, uh, I'll reach to, to Professor uh, Azran. I'll say, could you please present the bones, Professor? Oh. Do I have it? Oh, anyway. yes. uh, I will take them out gently. Enough, you 
I don't, every single one. They're wrapped up in a velvet. Oh, they're wrapped up. So I have them wrapped up. Are they, were they recently wrapped up? Is that what they're supposed no, to be? No, okay. it's covered in dirt. You can tell that the bones are basically wrapped up in this velvet thing and placed into the earth. And you, I would say you can see that there are um, areas where the dirt is not... Um, like compact against the side where it looks like dirt is um, spilled over them and then so it's like they're laid on this velvet they're, the velvet is open on the ground and then the dirt is piled on top of them uh, so I will gra- I will uh, uh, hang my lantern up if there's any kind of hook anywhere and I'll hang it up and I'll grab the bones with both hands and I will uh, place them down gently and then I'll reach in and I'll uh, push all of the disturbed soil on top of it. And then I'll reach into my um, into my robes and I'll pull out a little uh, a little black satchel that, and I'll reach in and it'll be some, some really potent ash and I'll just scatter it across. He, before you even are able oh. to put ash, he stops you. There will be nothing entered with the bones. Yes, this is not the time or place, Sonics. We cannot be sure of what is in that bag. These... And this is not the time for the conversation. Our ways are our ways. Please respect them. I will. And I'll take my ash and I'll put it back in the satchel. And I'll put it back in my robe as I'll uh, reach up and I'll pull my lantern off the hook. And I will uh, just say uh, very softly as I stare into the flame, Garrix, you normally care not for the petty squabbles of these mortals, but please cast your draconic eye over this church so that two lords of light may protect its grounds the Lord of Mourning, and the Shadow of the Dragon. And please grant me the power to destroy. I'll step back. You step back and he slowly moves forward as he lowers himself to his knees. And you see with his bare hands he begins to spill dirt over the bones and slowly pat it down. He places his hands upon the raw earth and begins to chant, a chant to the Morning Lord. And for the first time in Barovia, you see a quick burst of pure sunlight shoot in through the stained glass window and illuminate the entire area in which you're standing. For just a split second before the overcast clouds are able to snuff it out. But it was there in that moment. A look of shock falls over Father Lucian's face as he looks up, his hand still firmly placed over the ground. I have not seen the ray of pure sunlight a single day in my entire life. We are truly blessed this day. So this is hallowed. That, that, that morning that... Lord be praised. No. Morning Lord be praised. That yeah. was amazing. And he slowly begins to start moving the statue over the plot again. He looks to each of you. Please help. Please help. It is very heavy. Absolutely. Of course, Father. And you are able to slowly move the statue in place. Uh, if I had a gold piece for every thing I've seen today that I've never seen before in my entire life, uh, this this place is truly a mystery. This is a land of firsts. This land needs gods of light, as many as we can muster. Father is the goddess of the moon, a deity of light as well. I am not a worshiper of the mother night. But it is her light that leads people to her pasture. Regardless, the children in Irina will be safe. 
But I worry, with the powers of seduction, how long until more minions come to steal the bones again, perhaps bearing weapons or torches? In this very moment, the only people who know of their resting place are those in this room, Milivosh, the Countess, and the Coffin Maker. And that list may get shorter by the end of the morning. But in this in this moment, the Devil's Throat cannot walk into this church. That must be the reason that she had the coffin maker obtain the bombs. There is something here she wanted, or planned to want. Yes, well, that is what has been bothering me. She knew we were bringing the bones back. It's as though she's already gotten what she wants. Oh, oh well. You're uh, sure that the children are all right? Yes, I'm positive. I saw them a mere 45 minutes prior. Can we check on? At least, you know, say good evening. If you would like, they're in the first adjoining room to the right as you exit the church. Uh, that'd be good. Take, take a look, Shepard. Uh, do we have business here still, or are we going to get back to the to the inn soon? I don't mean to be a pest, but I am. Bush. Before we go, Father, what could possibly be here that you would want besides these boats? Are there any artifacts? Are there, is there anything else here that you think she would want? No, not in the church. I... There is only... one thing I can think. And that is, three days from now, we were to have a feast and celebration of the morning. The first time that many would congregate inside of the church. If that was my fear, if the ground were not hollowed, what could happen here with so many enclosed in such a small space? Oh my god. Aside from this and the arrival of the children and the woman, nothing else has changed. Either she knew they were coming, or she had plans for the feast. I could not say. Well, I have no doubt that we didn't completely ruin her plans, whatever they are. Three days, you said? Three days, yes. As in tomorrow, the next day, and the day after is, is the festival. Yes, on the evening of the Festival of the Blazing Sun. It is the evening mass. What, what time? At 8 p.m. Well, I, so it sounds like we're going to stick around here for a few days. Or at least get back here in a few days. Maybe we should discuss what our next plans are. Yes. We do have much to do in Velaki, so... Father, please take care. I will. I will stay in the church for now. All right. Mr. Morgan, please escort me to the children. No, absolutely, miss. I'll, uh, uh, Father, thank you, and uh, proceed to where he mentioned they will stay. I will stay here in my thoughts and prayers, but I am greatly, greatly appreciative of what you have done for me for the town of Volaki, and potentially for Barovia. Send for us if you need us. One more thing before we go. Um, you mentioned that if we brought the bones back, you might have some tome or, or books about the Morning Lord. Oh, yes, of course. I will I will grab that for you. Thank he you. shuffles off for a moment and heads back to his office. It takes him about a moment, but he comes back with a very old leather-bound tome. Um, and it's, um, it seems to be a hymnal as well as a text about the Morning Lord in general. Um, and he hands it to you. You may keep this if you see fit. Thank you. I'm not much of a singer, but this will still come in handy. There is valuable knowledge in these songs. Thank you. I will uh, open my keys very quickly, <laughs> put it in, and I'll close it. He looks to all of you, he, he nods and closes his eyes as he leans down in front of the statue of St. Andrew and begins to pray, pick up his chanting. You slowly make your way through the rest of the church, the creaking wood beneath your feet echoes in the um, high arched room as you make your way towards the door. You grab the handle and it turns easily as you swing the door open. 
and inside are a, is a room full of desks, and sitting at the very front are three um, bouncing children. They're giggling and laughing. The doors seem to be able to keep the noise from entering the rest of the church. And at the very front, you see Irina, a book held open as she's telling a story or a tale, and the children are drawing or writing down what she's saying. They seem to be um, in some kind of lesson. The children's clothes have changed. Their outfits no longer dirty and tattered and moth-eaten. They're now in um, clothes that more resemble the outfits that you've noticed the Valachian people wearing as they've been milling around town. Dark colors, blues, grays, blacks, purples, but uh, a little more frilly, a little more um, interesting visually. Nothing nearly as striking or colorful or interesting as the Valachi, or not the Valachi, the Vistani, but um, definitely less drab than the Brovian people. And they seem to be comfortable as they are engaged in lessons. I think I'm oh. all right. Hello. Um, I was not expecting to see you so soon. Uh, children, we'll have, a, we'll have a break. Feel free to mill about. And immediately Thomas runs straight up to you, Shepard, and wraps his arm around your leg. He doesn't say anything. He just holds on to it tightly. And you he's, he holds on as if he's hugging it. And then he, as you look down at him, it's, he almost realizes, and he kind of leans up against it and kicks one of his legs out. And he's like... <laughs> Hey, 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 buddy! Hey, kids! Uh, look, you guys are, are look how well behaved you guys are. This is this is great. Is we everybody are, all right? We are learning a lot of things currently. Good, good. That's that's great. You gotta you gotta stay up on that for sure. I'm going to be really smart so that I can go and I can do all kinds of things and like be an adventurer just like you. All, all right. Well, learning learn is the first step. That's what the good doctor always told me. You gotta learn. I'm going to be a doctor, I, fl- I think. I'm going to learn medicine, so when people get sick, I can fix them. And then I will kind of be like you, but also kind of be like the dragon. Uh, you'll you'll be even better. Yeah, you'll be like Sarnax, for sure. And you see as he holds up a picture of an actual dragon. We were learning about dragons today. Wow. I know you're not a dinosaur. I, child, am also not... A dragon, although... He kind of looks at you and his face falls for a moment. He's like... <sighs> but don't be disappointed. None of us are worthy of being dragons, young child. He On... looks at you for a second, and then he looks at the girls. That's exactly what the dragon would say in the sky. <laughs> and... However... The fire of a dragon is what burns in your soul. That spark within you, if you foster it, let it burn, let it spread, let it blaze until it's a glorious inferno. Then you may not be scaled, winged, or clawed, but you will have the spirit of a dragon. He is definitely a dragon. He is long-winded like a dragon. I'm surprised he did not blow fire. That's really cool. And he touches your hand. I I'm, touched a dragon. I'm gonna... Give him a I'm gonna <laughs> do that, and I'm going to use... Uh, I'm gonna look at it, I'm gonna kind of have this kind of strange look of uh, trepidation. And then I'll hesitate and I'll kind of lean down. And can I use thaumaturgy to do a little puff of. Uh, sure. <laughs> I'm just going to just do a. And there's going to be a tiny little thaumaturgy puff uh, <laughs> as, as he does that. Oh my God. Did you see that? I didn't. I can't be the only one who saw that. Did you see that? I, I did. Sorry, I know he was a, of, I know he was a magical thing. Very, very impressive. That is so cool. We, so cool. We will be back in the morning. We just wanted to make sure that everyone was all right. We uh, did. I mean, you are not going to stay with us tonight. I would. I would love to, but we have a lot we have to talk about. Is Lady Irina going to stay with us? And they all look up at her with yes. big eyes. Yes, of 
course, we just wanted to stop by and see how you were doing. We're going to go over to the inn now, right? Okay, then... You four stay together, always, alright? Understood? We will, because Irina is teaching us a lot of really cool things. That's how I knew that Sarnix was a dragon! That's great. Promise me, all three but of you. I don't know what color he is yet because he's both mean and not mean, and scary and not scary. But kind of all dragons are like that. Keep working on it, but promise me, the three of you, you will not leave straight. Do not stray far from this church. Understood? We won't leave. And you listen to Miss Irina at all, always. Okay. All right. I will do that. Thank you. And you are learning about the duality of fire. Continue your studies, child. I will. I will do that. And one day, I will be a doctor, and I will cure people, and be an adventurer. And I will meet another dragon. Very few are as lucky to meet two dragons in their lifetime. I have a feeling that you may be one of those few. You see as he hooks his thumbs into his into his vest and he kind of moves from side to side. Yeah, I will do this. I have to go learn now. I want to draw more. Yes, learning is important. If you want to be a doctor, stay on top of your studies. Could I be as smart as you? You've been smarter, I think. Okay. Take care. I'll turn to Irina. All right, children. It's time to head back to the front of the class. Just please send word if anything... Like, I want to kind of take her aside just really quickly. Do you mind? No, not at all. If anything seems amiss, with the father, with the church, with the children, if you're feeling amiss, please, let us know right away. Yeah. Send send word to the inn. We don't care if it's the dead of night. You wake us up. That's right. But you you cannot step foot off off, off these premises. So just find a way to send a note to the inn, and we will we will find out. Sorry, I had the wrong playlist on because I was fixing it. Continue. Uh, so, so just make sure that don't leave here, and send word if anything seems strange amiss at all, please. I I will absolutely. It's, it's imperative for your safety and the safety of of, of the abused children. Of course. So far, everything has been fine. Father Lucian has been completely uh, um, amenable to us. He's gone out of his way to make sure that we're, we're doing well, and he seems very kind. And the children are happy so far. They have a lovely little room and bunk beds, of all things, which they're enjoying quite a lot. And it's as she says this that you hear a loud slam against the window. All of your attention turns as you see the body of a, of a crow blood spilling out of its chest cavity as it slides down the window. Having heard the noise and me being like sleep deprived, I immediately draw both my weapons Shepherd? before I realize what it is. And, the and children scream as they cower beneath the beneath the desk. It's alright, it's alright. It's okay, kids. It's alright. Nobody panic. Nobody panic. And I, I put one weapon away as I walk towards the window. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Professor. I, I'm, is this an omen? A gnome of what? Of what is to come. <sighs> no doubt. Let us go outside. I'm, I'm, I'm looking I'm looking out the window to see. It if is I a can... stained glass window. There's no latch for an opening. Oh yeah, I don't want to. Um, <laughs> I'll roll an investigation <laughs> check. Twenty total. You looking at this, it looks as if the bird had this raven or crow. It's it's hard to tell. It almost seems to be mangled, but this black avian creature seems to have slammed face first into the window as if it had flown directly into it. And the impact itself um, crushing the bones in its body, almost plastering it to the outside of the window as it slowly slides down the glass, leaving a trail of blood and... Uh, all right, everybody. Material. Stay away from the window. It's just a bird. It just looks like just a bird. It is not just a bird. Well, maybe we should discuss that out of this room. Yes, let us go around to the other side. I believe that we should not shelter Irina 
from trusting the danger that she is in. She walks to you and she grabs your hand. I am not unaware of danger, Sarnax. The children, however, should be sheltered. Now is not the time. You can fill me in another way. Yes. Agreed. But as children, we need to bless him. On flight. Now, let's sit down and let's talk about what's caused this. And we will move from there. I'll, I'll reholster my other weapon and we, we gotta... Let's just go check it out and let's get to the end. Alright? Agreed? Yes. Let's go. Uh, as, as soon as we leave the room and we're out of earshot of, of the fourth of all, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just a little shaky. I'm all right. You do look quite tired. I just I gotta get some rest, but the, the thought of, of closing my eyes is, is distressing. I, I must be honest. Well, either way, we're going to find. We have to find some way to rest in this land. Yeah. So, let's just, we should take a look at this bird. I can see if it's magical or not. Like that other one. All right. Although it's now dead, I suppose the magic may be gone. I'd say you do an arcana check to see if you see any residual magic. There is no question that it is a similar bird to the one that you killed yourself, Professor. Well, let's just see. So I want to walk around to the outside. You walk around to the side of the church and you see the lifeless body of, and from this vantage point you can easily tell that it is a raven the lifeless body of a raven lying amidst the dead grass and the rocks. As you move towards it, you slowly pick the form up in your hand. Its head lolls off of the side of your hand um, as blood begins to pool in your palm. And I need you to roll an arcana check. Nine. You look at this, and it's really hard to tell with it being dead. Uh, as far as you can see, there's no magic currently on it, but remnants of magic you're unable to detect. Uh, uh, I'll say Prestigio, and I want to use Prestigiation to clean up the blood off the window. Um, and uh, I'll... Uh, I don't really get a sense of magic, but... I mean, it's dead either way. The, the, the magic may be gone. Uh, let me try one more thing, and I'm just going to cast, just instantly, so we don't just stand around. Uh, I'm going to cast detect, mag- detect Magic. Okay. While he's doing this, I am just... Oh, I have to, I have to take a lot of, uh, ten minutes. So, do you mind if we have ten minutes? I, I, that's fine. I'm going to keep my back, basically, to the window <laughs> and what he's doing, and just keep my eyes on the thoroughfare in the street. Um, make a perception check. I'm on fire right now. 25. All right, you keep your eyes. You spend about 10 minutes to do so. And just as just as you're about to finish your dis- detect magic, you begin to notice, um, bustling along the thoroughfare, what appears to be a group of about five, five, maybe six men. It's hard to tell. They're really tightly packed together as they... Um, oh, thank you for the cheers! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank it's you. good to see you in chat again. Hello. Um, you see as this tightly packed group of people is walking through the t- thoroughfare. They have a sign. The, the person at the head of it has a sign in one hand. You can't really see what it says as they're raising it up and down. And towards the back you see that they have a woman and a small child in manacles as they're pulling and dragging them down. They're they're cheering, um, come one, come all, the festival of the blazing sun. As the people in the back are... Um, are grabbing and pulling these uh, this woman and this child from side to side and they're pointing their fingers at them all will be well all will be well and they chant that as they slowly walk forward you notice that the people that are kind of milling about on the side look at them <sighs> shake their head and turn and continue about their business as if this is something that they have seen um 
on occasion, and it is right about this time that you finish your detect magic, yep. and you can tell that there is outside of, I would say your detect magic, I mean, probably can't, but you can tell that the ground is hollowed, but outside of that, there are no other magical spells in effect. And thank you for the cheer, for Kega. Oh, thank the you for Kega. Oh. That's a twist. That's a twist. Kega. Do we have the... It's the what's behind you, behind always. You. Oh, thank you. You got a twist. So while Kels is getting that twist of fate, for every 500 bits, we get a free reroll. So yeah, we're gonna yeah. it's, uh, it's super useful. It's like better than advantage. And we we take tra- we keep track of it. With and we use them uh, quite liberally in this campaign. Yes, we, yeah. we do. So that we kind of have to. To survive. Find a spoopy uh, vampire coin. Find the spoopiest vampire coin. Ooh, which I think you, that's the only one you have. You used everything from last session. Oh, I don't think you ended with spoopy. anything. Why, do I, why can't I hold all these coins? These coins are for the from the wonderful Norse family. They are. Norse family. They Sweet, have delightful really coins. Fun, uh, Classic Nosferatu. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Shut up! Shut, shut up! Shut, shut, up. Up. shut the fuck up! Shut up! Uh, there we go. There's a twist. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. Uh, professor, if you don't yes. mind, uh, hurrying up a little bit. There, there, something's going on. Uh, well, it's the ground is hollow. The bird is not magical that I can tell. Um, um, before we go anywhere, um, how did the bird come? Like, what direction did it come from? Roll a perception. Sh- no, roll a survival check to see if you'd be <laughs> able to tell the tra- trajectory in which it hit. I got a fourteen. It looked like it flew straight in. It was as if it was flying and it just went straight in. Did it cross over the graveyard, or did it come in from like a side property? It looked like it would have crossed straight over the graveyard. Crossed over. Cool. Okay, just checking. I. I'm concerned at the surveillance and the machinations of folks. I would like to speak with Irina once more before we leave. That's that's fine. Let's just let's just make it snappy. What's what's going on? I was, I, I was I, concentrating. I, I don't know. They're they're transporting uh, pr- prisoners or something. I, there's a, a woman and a, and a, and a child in, in manacles. And child. Uh, I, I, that's why I don't I, look. I don't. I don't know what's going on, but they're they were chanting at him and dragging him through the thoroughfare, and and, and I just they mentioned they went up that direction. The one the priest mentioned, the festival of the blaze himself. Is wait, so that's the same one he mentioned, right? Hmm? Is the blazing sun? Yes, yes that okay. is the festival in three days, and they were having a feast in the evening at okay, the church in celebration of the morning lord. Um. Why would they have people in chains to, 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 to celebrate? Doesn't I, seem right. I don't know. Perhaps we should take a look while Sonex speaks with Irina. Yes, please catch up, Sonex. We will. We had already seen individuals in stocks, did we not? Earlier you did. today. Oh, you're right. I didn't make the connection. Do you think it's related? I would not be surprised. I will hurry. Catch up, please. And I'm going to go try to find uh, I'll be behind you in his room. So yeah. the three of you, or four of you, because Connor will be with you, okay. the four of you make your way down the main thoroughfare. You are, I will say, um, staying within a good distance of them to continue to hear them and see where they're going, but not close enough that you're getting really into, um, into their space. And they essentially just keep chanting the same things. They seem to be... Um, touting about the festival of the blazing sun and that all will be well. And as for you, Sarnax, you make your way back inside. You open the door to the room and once again you see Irina um, telling the class about flight and how it works and the dangers of flight. As she noticed the door open, well, children, um, one moment, I will be right back. You stay right there. I would like to see a drawing from each of you of your favorite bird. And no, Thomas, a dragon is not a bird. Just because it has wings does not make it a bird. Understand? And he... <sighs> yes, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> and he begins to start drawing. She 
makes her way towards the back of the class and she uh, slinks out of the door next to you, looks in, checks on them, slowly shuts the door. Is all well. Pardon the disturbance, Miss Irina. Not at all, Sarnix. I must ask you a question. Of course. Do you know where the heart is? Do I know where the what? The heart. My heart. On a humanoid. Well, I know it's in their chest. May you produce your blade? Do you have it on you? What are you trying to ask me to do? I am going to show you on my person where you should strike should any stranger approach you. I'm not going to kill a stranger. If anyone means you harm, you may need to. She, roll a persuasion check. Natural one. Uh, so I do not... Uh, you don't know that. You're proficient. I am proficient. Six. She looks hesitant at first. Well. All right. And she reaches into her bodice and she pulls out her blade. And she hands it to you. It is not for me. You see, someone like you does not need to be strong and brawn like Kana. All it takes is a quick motion and a bit of deception, and I'll quickly pull out my sacrificial dagger and just to gesture. She jumps quickly. Oh. All you need to do yes. is know where to strike. And I'll put it back. And I will open my robe slightly and I'll press directly into a point on my chest. Now take your blade and press it directly here against me. I don't want to hurt you, Sarnax. Do not strike. Feel where it rests. Feel the motion. Her hands trembling as she puts the tip of the blade up to the flesh on your chest, and she's staring at it, afraid that any movement could cause harm to you. All right. If anyone approaches you and means you harm or the children's harm, use that blade. Strike here. One blow will do the job. Yes, Sonic, I will, for the children. Of course. For the children, and for you. Yes. You have much to play here. I am afraid of that, but I believe you might be right. She quickly moves the blade away, and her hand trembling as she slowly puts it into back into her bodice, and she sighs heavily. Well, it was not how I expected this afternoon to go. But thank you. You're welcome. Perhaps it may save your life one day. But I pray you never have to use it. You might not be the person to ask. Shepard, no, he's not. Would it be wrong of me? They're so small. Should I get them little blades? I'm afraid they wouldn't, you know, Thomas. But I worry for them ever so much. No, they're too small. No, they are not too small. Look, I would teach them, of course, the way my father taught me. I got mine around Thomas's age, but... The world so is cruel. Nature is cruel. We live in a, a realm of death that wishes to kill us. The flora, the fauna, even the civilized folk. Oh, talk to Father, Father Lucian. See if and what he can provide. And if he agrees, as I think we both agree, then they should be able to defend themselves. All souls must be prepared to take a life should they wish to sustain their own. Those are true words, Onyx, but I must get back to the children. Be safe. You as well. And we will see each other again soon. Soon. And I'll turn. She places her hand on your shoulder and she squeezes it quickly. Well, good day then. And she opens the door and quickly bustles inside. 
and I'll try to hustle to get the group. It doesn't take you long. Uh, it seems like the group of people with the two manacled uh, commoners, they seem to be taking their time on occasion. You'll see as the um, burliest of the men grab the two by the manacles and they'll um, direct them in front of the crowd, almost as like a warning um, as they pull them back into the group and continue their chanting as they make their way. Um, the slowness of this... Um, of this display allows you to catch up fairly quickly. Uh, and this has been going on for, I would say, about ten minutes now. <clears throat> uh, are there, you said there's some people out kind of watching this. Yeah, there, there are people who are milling about, going into different shops, um, some peddling wares, etc. And they notice, and they'll kind of look, it's almost as if they're looking to see who it is, and you see that a few people look like they recognize it, and they, sh they shake their head, maybe they roll their eyes, and they continue about their business. What, uh, did you say roughly what time it was? I didn't. Um, and I'm trying to think. You got there, and I got into Velaki at about two-ish... Or you finished with at the church about two-ish, and then it was probably about an hour at the coffin maker shop. Let's say it's been another, so it's probably about somewhere between four and five. The evening. Yeah. Okay. It's slowly, the right. evening slowly approaching. Excuse me. I'll just kind of flag someone who's standing around watching. Oh, hello. I didn't mean to bother you, but what is this display that the... Oh, you're... You're not, you're not from around here. Yes, um, they're spreading negative opinions, you know. So, malicious and happiness, of course. They get put into the stocks. The, the child was? Of course. Malicious and happiness, you, you go to the stocks. What, you, uh, what does that mean, malicious and happiness? What, what could they have done to spread the She looks around. We really shouldn't be talking about this, but... Well... And she pulls you off of the road. You see, the Burgomaster, for as long as I can remember, he does multitudes of festivals and things. He believes that happiness in the city of Loki keeps the devil strolled away. And, well, of course, anyone who is seen being malicious or spreading unhappiness, who doesn't believe that all will be well, which is his slogan, that they're spreading malicious unhappiness and they're punished. So, recently we had the Wolf's Head Jamboree, and a lot of people felt that it didn't really do much for the town, and more people have been charged with malicious and happiness, but I'm sure that whoever that was and her child, they were just saying that the festivals aren't any fun. That's mostly why people were put in the shops. Because so all will be well, all will be well! And you see as she smiles and the crowd turns, all will be well! And they, they chant and they brandish the prisoners around as they once again turn and make their way back up the thoroughfare. And what is the punishment? Well, it, it depends on the person what they've done, of course. To these two. What you know, the crime is, of course. Thank you for the host, Abby! Thank you, Thank Abby. you Abby. So, for them, I'm imagining they'll probably spend the night with the donkey's head in the stocks and then they'll be let free. But depending on who you are, what you've done, what you've said, the kind of unrest you've stirred, sometimes the burgomaster punishes you himself. And those people I don't often see again. But, as you know, all will be well. Yes. Professor, yes. I think I need to go to the inn. Uh, uh, yes, of course. She uh, looks at you and she taps you under your chin. If I were you, I'd smile. All will be well. I give her, like, a sneer. Like a, okay. It's at least better. Yeah. Well, I must be on my way. I can't be seen with those that are frowning in the streets. Thank you for your consideration. Happy to meet you. All will be well. All she turns be well. around and bustles away. I don't see what more we can do here. Find Sarnax, and let's get to the inn, please. All right. Let's go. 
<laughs> so we made up the mystery. <laughs> what are all of your passive perceptions? Ooh. 18. I might be guarded. Passive. Ranger, some uh, 16. Oh. 15. 16. Okay. I just 14. have to update my I have to update my card real quick. Um, Sarnax, what's your AC? Uh, AC is 18. AC 18. Okay. And Double then your 18. passive wisdom is passive perception is 18. Yes, but your passive wisdom. Oh, passive wisdom is or passive in- intelligence. Sorry. Oh, passive uh, investigation. Yeah. Is 12. Okay, cool. I'm just making sure I have those. Uh, Clayton, your passive perception. This is 14. <laughs> There's no way this will be bad. <laughs> uh, your AC is what? Either 13 or 16, depending on if I have major armor or not. And then your passive uh, investigation is 16? Uh, uh, higher. Investigation is higher than that. It's 18. Okay. I just haven't updated these since you were level 1. Rush Shepard. I am AC 16. I am passive with 16. Passive in 14. And then Victoria. Passive wisdom is 15, passive investigation is 11, your PC is 12. Woof. Woof. <laughs> Unless I fuck something up. Richie, tell me I fucked something up! <laughs> it's at this point that the DM sure is now just session. curious. <laughs> Shut up, Dusky. I am just curious. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So... Sarnax, we will fill you in. Yes, yeah, so it is right about this point that Sarnax makes his way to you. <laughs> You begin to make your way towards the inn, this mob still following ahead of you. As you see the inn um, come into view, you notice that they continue along towards the crossroads that eventually veers to the right and heads towards the center of town. Um, You, however, are heading straight to the inn and not following the mob? Well, we're already here. Perhaps we could just... What? I would like to see this ritual in person. I you mean the punishment. Yes. yes. There's punishment. There's rituals. They're performing worship. I would love to know more. I, I mean, we, we, we ass- did we get the impression that this was going to be carried out on the festival? Wasn't that one of the things they said? The what pun- will be carried the, out? Their punishment. No. No. We, she she uh, simply said that they're just going to be um, added to the stocks. So I'll read to okay. you what you saw when you originally walked through the town square um, as it mirrors essentially what she said was going to happen. Okay. What, what was the um, term she used? The malicious? Malicious uh, unhappiness. The shops and homes that enclose the town square are decorated with limp, tattered garlands and painted wooden boxes filled with tiny dead flowers. At the north end of the square stands a row of stocks, locked in which are several men, women, and children wearing crude plaster donkey heads. In the center of the square, peasants in patchwork clothes eye you suspiciously as they use cups and vases to draw water from a crumbling stone fountain. Standing tall at the center of the fountain is a gray statue of an impressive man facing west. All around the square are posters proclaiming, Come one, come all, to the greatest celebration of the year. The Wolf's Head Jamboree. Attendants and children required. Pikes will be provided. All will be well. The Baron. Mm -hmm. You then saw that there were a bunch of men who were tearing those down and in their place putting up, Come one, come all, to the greatest celebration of the year. The Festival of the Blazing Sun. Attendants and children required. Rain or shine, all will be well. The Baron. Listen, I, I I understand your curiosity, and I'm not saying we shouldn't go at least take a look, but, I mean, I didn't even realize that there was a, a crime for, for, if we had said or done the wrong thing, God forbid what would have happened. This is a very curious place. A, a, a crime for just saying something. I, so Morgan, I suggest you keep your voice down. Fine. At least while we're out in the open. Yes, let us look chipper. So let's chip her up, and I think just to investigate why they would need children at these things. And yet we see, and now we see a children in chains. To be very clear, I'm not going to chip her up. My charisma is like negative something. So I am like very much like, like I just have, I have resting tiefling phase. <laughs> Noted. What do you mean to chipper up? 
Thank you, Pleasant, for Thank the you cheer. Pleasant. Thank you so Thank you. much. It means smile, Sarnax. Just look happy. Fake it if you have to. I think well, we're all faking it. If it uh, helps anyone to chip her up, I have ensured that the children will be provided with blades. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I really wanted to make tennis. <laughs> Thank you again, Blizzard. Thank you so much for the Thank cheer. You. Well played. What if they hurt themselves? It will be a valuable lesson. <laughs> I've uh, um, the children. Wait, uh, did you did you did you give them you gave them knives? Well, I have ensured that Irina will provide them with knives. Yes. Why? Uh, why? How is that relevant? <laughs> no, this is that's fine. I, I mean, I got my first knife when I was just a kid. I mean, Thomas is is what eight nine? I, I don't know. I mean, he's, he's old like enough. Four. No, he's he's <laughs> okay. he's seven. Okay. Um, the older, the older, um, the youngest, eldest daughter, the eldest girl, Alana, is um, around nine, and then Myrtle okay. is four. The, the oh, youngest, my, four. the youngest <laughs> child might <laughs> might be a toddler. A fucking she, night. <laughs> she might be a little young, but the others are, are old enough. It's fine. It's, she's it's worth learning how to defend yourself. She is uh, too old. She is she is far far along. Four years old. Uh, well, uh, maybe in your culture, but the, to wield a knife? you don't yes. really get that dexterous ability until you're a little bit older. I mean, it doesn't hurt to learn what they do, and it's for safety, obviously. I, I'm with you, Sarnax. It was a good idea. I'm just upset I didn't think of it. It is never too early to learn how to take life. Well, these children were just in, in boxes me and, uh, a day ago. Yeah, we're going to make sure that never happens again. Well, exactly right, Shepard. Is it one the blades that will assist in that promise? I pray that they don't have to use them. Uh, maybe, maybe tomorrow, if we have some time, we'll stop by and maybe we can show them a thing or two. Wait, I do my creaky chair. Well, uh, if you would like to get some rest at the end, we could take a look and then update you if you'd like to go back. Or you would oh. accompany us. Here's your map of Milwaukee, by the way. Oh, fangs. Hey, fangs a lot. Ooh. That's not a knife. I, I mean, uh... Oh, this is a long way. Now that's a knife. I don't want to abandon everybody. I, there's still a little bit of daylight left. I, the sun's going down, but... If you can last uh, maybe another hour or so, uh, probably much shorter than that. We should just take a look around. I'm very curious All right. about... All right, I'm not, I'm not leaving you all hanging out to dry. Let's go. All right. Uh, I will turn and lead the party down towards the center of town of Hastia, towards where the mob is headed. It is as you get to the center, or the crossroads, Sarnax, you notice a hooded figure lurking off to the shadows. This is the fourth time you've noticed this same hooded figure. And as you notice it. You see as... So you're at the main crossroads, the one that heads up towards the lake. Yep, right here. As this entity or as this figure realizes that you've noticed it. Just you, Sarnax. Just Sarnax. Yeah. You see as it turns and heads directly down the road straight towards um, Lake Zarovich. Thank you for the cheer! Thank you, thank you, thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Another, 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 that should you. make you nervous because Zed Will said just for precautions. Oh, oh don't say that. Oh. No. Thank you, though. We appreciate it. So you were the only one that notices this. I will immediately say there is a hooded figure watching us and is uh, leaving a leaving, heading away from us towards Lake Zarovich. I suggest we make pursuit. What? What? Shepard, there. Keep an eye. <laughs> Uh, 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 with, with him pointing, uh, and I look the direction that he's pointing. Do I at least see the the road that he's referencing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of the main roads. Um, you, when you were at the gate coming in, the guards told you that there were three gates. Um, this one, one towards the lake, and then another one out of town on the opposite side. Um, and 
that main road is heading towards the gate that leads to Lake Zarovich. So the, the one to the lake is the so way the north the gate, the well. Zarovich gate. No, they are heading down a smaller road towards the center of town near where the coffin maker shop was. Um, do I see? Do I? I don't. Do I see the figure he's referencing? Or are they already gone? Um, I will roll a perception check. That's going to be a 19. Uh, you're, the figure isn't staying to the road, but you do see is a hooded figure is kind of um, moving in and out of different shadowed uh, pathways, making their way down the road. Professor, he's right. And are you sure he, he was watching us? Well, this they were watching us. This is the fourth time I have seen this figure. Yes. It is no coincidence, and it could be an agent of the Countess. Yes, yes, let us try to get more information if we can. Only in this town they've been following Only since you started, this is the fourth time I'll say that you've seen this figure. the lot. Uh, since you left the church. So the oh. first couple of times they didn't look to be, um, it's just like well, suspicious at all. Them, but now that this is the long. fourth time you've noticed, and they've noticed that you noticed, that, um, it became suspicious. All right, with that, I'll just start to walk towards that direction. I will follow behind, trying to look nonchalant, like we're not chasing somebody. Right, right. We're walking with purpose. We are not, yes. uh, we're not hustling. At least until we get down this road, nothing ain't there. You continue down the road. This road seems to be lined more with houses than businesses, uh, more of a residential section of town. As you continue moving through, darting from house to house, you see as this figure shoots across the thoroughfare, pulls a key off of a key ring, inserts it into the door of an incredibly large mansion, the largest house that you've seen in this entire village. The door swings open, a large arched door, and this figure jolts inside. Even from this far down, the sound of the slamming of the door almost reverberates through the ground. Looking up at you, this house seems disgusted with itself. A slouching roof hangs heavy over furrowed gables, and moss-covered walls sag and bulge under the weight of the vegetation. As you study the house's sullen countenance, you hear the edifice actually groan. Only then do you realize the extent to which the house hates what it has become. Sark Sarnax, was that him? Yes, it was. And this could be another answer from the cards. Do we see me, like... Like placard outside of like something house or like a number or a, a roll an investigation that check. Too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like old houses, they would always have my like, fucking tail. What, what are you referencing, Sarnax? Oh, that did me dirty. Oh, it's almost so good. <laughs> yeah, it's like a four. You notice that there doesn't seem to be some kind of placard. It's overgrown with hanging bits of ivy. You can't read what it says. You actually have to walk up to the house and move the ivy out of the way to read it. This is a mansion, is it not? Isn't there a wealthy individual in me with a countess? That's exactly right. I pull out the map, just try to, you know, like, like we're tourists, like, oh, hey. <laughs> um, I pull out the map, and I want to see if I can... Does this house that we think is the, or that we got confirmation is that wealthy woman's house? Yes, it so appears to be in the same location. This is right. The ivy is covering the name uh, 30 feet away. I would like to, as subtly as I can, use Mage Hand to just sort of brush the ivy away to see if I can read it. Just be aware, everyone, because whoever went in that house is most certainly watching us right now. And they have been since we've arrived. And I'm not too concerned about keeping this entirely secret. Perhaps we should just walk up and knock, taking this on directly. Yeah. Well, I suppose we could. Do we think it wise to knock, perhaps get invited in, perhaps be led to a grand banquet hall? And then when more vampires fall on the ground, crawl out from beneath the tables, and we are all exhausted and tapped out. Do we think that will end well for us? Mr. Sarnax, that's awfully pessimistic. We seem to be realistic for this land. 
I suppose. Well, well, I think that no, Victoria. I think depending on what we can learn about this estate, I say Manu, and I'm going to send my hand and just gently move. The As ivy your out hand of the moves the ivy out of the way, you see a an iron placard filigree adorning the border and the words Watcher House. Watcher House? Watcher. Watcher. W-A-C-H is actually pronounced Watcher. Don't correct me. T-E-R-H-A-U-S. Whose last name was that? The the lady. Right? We've we've heard this name before. Yes, we have. You've heard of Lady Watcher, yes. Right, so this is the Watcher House. Okay. But it's, yeah, but the it's, W. Yeah, so it's pronounced Watcher. You said right? W-A-C-H-C-E-R? Mm-hmm. H-A-U-S. H-O. Um, well, this at least confirms our suspicions. Oh. Um, but we, we, we don't have time to, to worry about this right now. We're all exhausted. You especially. I'm all right. Right. I'm all right. And I think... Let's head back to the inn. We know that she knows. And I would say at this point, because you turned this way and chose to investigate this versus go following the mob, they would have already put the people in stock. She would have missed that entire... Okay, so it feels like it's been long it enough. It feels like it's been way. long enough that you wouldn't have... You wouldn't be able to see them simultaneously. Well... Damn it! <laughs> I, b- I believe in you when we say get wet. Is someone eating on me right now? <laughs> oh, and Zed Wills, to answer your question, they got their invitation from Strahd. Um, after Death House. After Death House. No, no the, um, the, the moment you oh. went through the gates of Barovia. Okay. Yeah. Episode we just zero. followed someone who was following us to a mansion. This is not like the. This is Vox House. House. As we make our way back towards the <laughs> end, um, I would like to make note of maybe the shops and things that were passing. Mm-hmm. Does it appear that there are one? I want to see. Um, I'm keeping my eye out for several things if, if you'll allow it. One, I'd like to keep my eyes out for this toy, make, toy maker shop. Two, I'd like to take a look to see if there's any kind of clothier or like, uh, you know, someone who makes clothing or, or like... Uh, I would say having gone through the town center, you know that... So basically where you're at, you're... If you want to pass me the map, I, I will show you. It'll be easier that way. So you are right here. Yep. And you know that this right here is the town square. Okay. This is the coffin maker. Okay. This is uh, the toy shop. And you know that all of these, all along right here, are all the merchants. So, my And this is the inn here. So, uh, okay. you're here, you'd be traveling down here, you yeah. have to continue down this way. So, would. So, to then. Be able to. It, let visit me readjust shops. my question then. Not to visit them. Would I Would I be aware, though, <laughs> of at least Careful. some some shops for clothing you and accessories seen, and things? Yes. Okay, all right. I, I figured I just wanted to make sure. All right. That's all. Thank you for clarifying our cardinal directions. Yeah. Uh, well, let's return to the inn and get some rest. Agreed. Uh, I think we've got some things to discuss before we retire, but we do. At least let's get to the safety of our rooms. Exactly right. Relative safety. So we'll return, and I guess you, we already got rooms, right? You yes. did. You make your way back towards the Blue Water Inn. Gray smoke issues from the chimney of this large two-story wooden building with a stone fountain and sagging tile roof, upon which several ravens have perched. A painted wooden sign hanging above the main entrance depicts a blue waterfall. And so this is, um, just to keep, hold on. Mother of <laughs> My thoughts exactly! When the vampires fall and emerge from the <laughs> table. <laughs> Put them in that order, please. You, you, you lay your head on it on your pillow and realize the entire bed is made of vampire spawns. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh, so I'm you'll gonna see you. that coming from the speaker is a pathway. You'll be entering in through those two doors. 
And then you remember when you ordered or when you um, got your rooms that they mentioned there was a stairwell outside, a staircase outside that led up to the guest bedrooms. Okay. You can see that stairwell is pointing towards you, Andy. So you basically would go outside, go up, use your keys to enter in through the guest bedrooms there, or you can head back into the bar slash tavern area through the two main doors. Okay. So you are now outside of the tavern. You can choose what near the end. You can choose what you want to do. We should retire to our room so we may have whatever semblance of privacy we can be afforded in this land. Agreed. Uh, yes, let us retire. So you're just gonna you're gonna take the outside stairs and head straight up to your rooms. Yes. All right. You are able to do that. You um, you have... Did you do one room or two? I honestly don't remember. I believe we got three. Three, rooms. three rooms. Right? Yep. Um, let's I'm so, pretty sure it was only two. Oh, you did two then, yeah. I don't remember. Uh, so you make your way up. You can remove that. And go to the one on the bottom. This is the blue water in. Yep. We did get three. So you got three rooms then. And you make your way up. You open the outside door that makes its way to the guest balconies. And you find that there are two rooms immediately off to the side. You're easily able to enter in to those rooms. Um, there is, a, for the sake of it not being on the map, there is a third one immediately next to it that you can enter in. Oh, oh we, we can, can let's just say we just got, got two. Rooms. We got two. We got two. That's fine. Sorry, I didn't. Entering into didn't the that. room, <laughs> two cozy beds with matching footlockers rest in the far corners of this fifteen-foot square room. Wolf furs are heaped atop each bed. Between the beds, a lamp sits on a table under a shuttered window. Two tall black wardrobes stand against the walls by the door. So these are our rooms here. Yep. Uh, put down my case. I'll put down my lantern. All right. Well, <clears throat> it's been quite a day, and I believe we need to plot our first course of action. Um, I think the obvious next step is to try to get into that house. The Walker house. By what means, Professor? I'm, I'm still not opposed to just walking up and knocking on the door. Well, we have two options. We have the forward approach, as Victoria suggested, or we could use subterfuge. And maybe in the dark of the night, slip in. I would not presume that if the individuals that live in that house are allies of the Countess, that we have any subterfuge in our pockets, so to speak. They will know that we are coming, they will know that we are here, they will know where we are at every step of the way. You have the doll in your case, there are ravens in the sky, there are hooded figures around every alleyway. That's a good point. I guess, I guess if I may be so presumptuous, the professor's just concerned that if we knock on the door and they turn us away, then we've got no other choice but to force our way in. That's right. Um, we need to be careful, though, because I certainly don't want to end up some kind of criminal for creating unhappiness or whatever that woman was mentioning. It's quite a predicament, this. The Countess is a strong ally, clearly has a high position in the town, and within her home, presumably, are additional bones, or at least some key, some some knowledge, some wisdom. Uh, in my case, is very closed right now. Uh, in regards to very close. possibly <laughs> defeating her. Speaking of which. Uh, I will. Ooh, it's just in there. It's one action. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. 
uh, in the Hangouts. I think it's uh, If you need me to tell you and I have them pulled up right now. That's, I want to just have it. it for me. Um, I am not necessarily convinced that my case is hopefully. Am I am I like convinced that that my spell that, that, that my case is blocking the scry spell? Where on is the your case? It's on the ground. Are you holding it? No. Okay. <laughs> um, I would say <laughs> that <laughs> you believe that when it's closed, yeah, it's it functions like a bag of holding. It would prevent a uh, scry spell. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, um, I'm concerned about the dolls in the case. I think we all are. Yes. Where are all of you at this moment? We are all together in one room, so I presume. So we are all here. For now. Let's say, uh, yeah, yeah, so I what was, are all of you doing? Um, sitting around. Are you around? just standing in the middle of the room? No, no, no. I mean, I, I would probably be leaning up against the wall or against one of the tables, you know, towards the door, but just kind of relaxed. Beds, just sitting the just... Yeah, I'll be sitting on a foot locker with my lantern. And Tom is right at the door, like acting as like a, a guard. Okay. Um, I will. Uh, so I'll, I'll I'll go to my case and I'll open it up and I'll say, I believe it's time that we at least end the magic on the door. I've gained some power after that fight with the vampire spawn, and I believe I can get rid of it. If, if that's something you think you can do, we can still use that doll to convince this girl that we are who we say we are, then I don't see any other problem with that. Uh, so I will reach into my case and grab the doll. You reach into your case, and you move your hand around, but you find no doll. Oh. Is it behind me? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I don't do that. It is, it is check behind me. <laughs> it is in this moment that you hear <laughs> is one of the wooden armoires against against the wall. The door swings open, and hanging from the wooden rod inserted inside, a noose around its neck is the doll. A sick smile on its face, the stitches no longer in the place they had been before, but now in a lilting, almost awkward smile. I, I jump back and immediately, what in the fucking nine hells? Is that, how? How does- It slowly begins to spin around and around and around. Professor, do it now! The spell! And I cast the spell magic on it. Okay, yeah, roll for it. Oh, wow. Oh, it's that high. Okay. Um, oh, my God. I don't want to play. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is horrifying. Okay, I choose one creature, object, or magical effect. Mm-hmm. I will choose the object. Um, three spells. Uh, I each fucking spell or four I know. Spell or higher on the target, make an ability check. The DC equals 10 plus the spell's level. Uh, on a s- ability check. Okay, so... It's plus five. Yep. So we'll see what I roll. Oh my goodness. Uh, that is a, a 22. Yeah, no, it doesn't dispel it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you. <laughs> All right, I you, you 22. 22. Oh. You extend your hand out and you say the, um, the verbal um, component to the spell, and you see as the spinning halts quickly. The noose completely disappears as the doll drops with a thud to the base of the armoire, its arms hanging limp, its hair spread out around it. You now see that the strange smile on its face has righted itself back to just the curved stitch smile it had previously. Oh, the gods. Did, 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 you, did you do it? Yes, uh, yes, yes. The magic is gone, but... There is evil here. How did it get out of the case? I, I mean, the in itself. You, you, you haven't even. The, the case has been in your, your, your. I've been holding it. 
Please do a thorough investigation, Professor, of every inch of your case. And please tear apart this room as well. So I'm going to go through and just, like, look through my case and in every, like, you know, my reagent kind of section, and then I'll close it and open it and check the, the storage compartment. Um, and I just want to make sure that, like, everything is in there, that it looks fine. Is there anything amiss um, besides this doll being missing where I thought it was? Oh, God, and then Nikki gets up. Why? Why? I don't care for it. Uh, okay. What? Oh, God. Um, um, Every time of, Nikki moves, we all freak out. A bit of markers. Uh, I, I know, I know that I'm tired and and I'm not quite thinking right. But what if? Uh, are we sure that 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 woman, Mary, she even has a daughter? You rummage through your case, and everything seems to be in place until your hand comes in contact with a folded up bit of parchment. Oh my god. Is it a bowl of wet spaghetti? <laughs> <laughs> Feel grapes! <laughs> Professor? to have full agency in my case. Shall I, Professor? Yes, please. Okay, you were holding your hand. I thought you had a lighter. And I was like, too far! Too far! <laughs> That'd be cool. No actual lighter. <laughs> I'll ignite the corner of it and just uh, watch it burn. And then I'll just, as it, as it gets to a little small thing, I'll just flip it into my lantern. And for chat, I just want to share this all. This is what it said! Murder! Murder! With a little smiley face! <laughs> That's horrifying. So, you burn it, right? Yep. I'll just flick it into the little last bit of it into my lantern. We, 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 don't, we don't even know if this woman, this Mary, is... is, is. Not, not another one of these, you keep calling them, eight agents of, of the Countess? Um, I, 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 I don't so even know what to think. I, I felt like she was telling the truth. We're being played for fools. I, I know, I know. Can I pick up the doll and, and just kind of investigate it and feel... I want to, like, s- squeeze it and see if I feel anything inside. Does it feel, like, totally normal? Um, yeah, um, roll, ooh, should we even have you roll for this? No, I mean, you're squeezing it, you're, you, you feel that there is something hard inside of the doll. There's something inside of this. Yeah, I can feel it. Could do it, shall I? (laughs) I'll pull out my sacrificial dagger. Don't deface the front. We need it intact if this daughter is I'll throw it over exists. and just kind of expose the back through the through the dress. Is it in the back or is this inside? It's like, just inside it's in, the just in, a, in the body. Not in the main the body. This is the proper form. And I'll lay it down. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see your creepy underwear? I, oh, I, I saw her creepy no, underwear the looking, first day. I'm not looking at creepy underwear. Because I pulled her dress up and then I felt kind of weird. <laughs> I was like, I'm just curious. You place the tip of the blade into the fabric of the doll as you slowly slide the blade along. And you feel it come into contact with something. There's no clink. There's no noise of metal on metal. There, there is a feeling of resistance for a moment, and you spread the doll apart, and inside are three severed fingers. Oh, they appear to be not fresh, but only maybe a month or so into their decaying process. The thick, um, the blood that had remained inside of them um, coagulating around some of the stuffing. The 
fingers appear to be feminine, young. Like a teenage girl. Good girls. Three. Is, is that all that's. I, I, I shudder to ask in there. I'll, I'll look around and I'll start. You know. All that's in there. Why? Do I have any magical, like, reagent power of severed fingers? Like, does uh, that sound like arcane magic to me? Uh, 24. Uh, you know that there probably are some, you know that hags use strange things like teeth, etc., but you don't know of anything. Um, off the top of your head where you're like, oh yeah, that uses severed fingers. Um, and I will say that you know well enough that the spells that were on the doll did not use severed fingers. <laughs> How long ago was it that Mad Mary said that her daughter ran away? It was weeks. Correct? Blue weeks. I'm gonna hold probably up. roughly about a month. Does it look like this has been, for my knowledge of, I, I can I? In, uh, you could roll a medicine discern- check to see. <laughs> I was like, how do I word medicine? Check? <laughs> you know, okay, that isn't obnoxious. Nine. Um, they are young fingers. Um, it falls within the rough timeline, and the size looks like they could potentially be from a 15 year old girl. But you don't know how much fingers change from 15 to 25. This. Quite a lot. <laughs> Perhaps, Shepard, she did have a daughter. Did being the operative word of that sentence. God damn it! What is it with this godforsaken land and butchering children? Can we see, um, like, from his check how they were detached? Yeah, uh, it looks like it was a clean cut. Clean cut. Okay. Well, it's hard to say if, by the way, these are from children. Whether it was Mad Mary's daughter or... Mary's daughter. Shouldn't be calling one bad Mary. The daughter or not? This doll is not a threat anymore. Fingers are removed. There's nothing else left. No, there is not. But for what purpose do we have to bring it with us? In case she's still alive, maybe go break the spell. Alive, missing three fingers. We don't know if they're her fingers. She allegedly charms many young women. It all connects. Either way, was it not on false pretenses that Mad Mary gave us this doll that was clearly bewitched? You think she knew? Why wouldn't she? There is no risk in taking the doll now. There is no more magic. I can confirm that. I removed all magic from it. It can't be used to spy on us. It can't come alive. It can't make nooses. It can't write murder on a piece of my parchment. It's just a doll now. And if you could save someone, why not just take it? I'm with the professor. There's always time later to burn it. Then you will be the ones to carry it. We'll go back in my case. I grab it. And, uh. I will. I will. I will. I will place my hand on the chest of the doll where there's a huge gash, and I'll say, the party! And I will mend the gash shut. Okay. Uh, so that it's just a full doll without any With any, any fingers. Any fingers in it. Yep. Um, I hope you come in useful. I hope so as well. I am becoming more and more uneasy of the running theme of children. And even if the children are given knives 
what is to stop one of the many agents of the Countess from snatching them up? The hell ground is all we can do. I mean, we could hire guards, but they could be charmed just as well. Lust is powerful in this land. First thing in the morning, we arm the children. Fair? Fair. I have some other things I'd like to do as well. We've got a couple of things on the docket, talking about this this mansion, and we need to find that man with this monkey. The toy maker. Yes. Correct? Yes. Uh, You're in charge. I'll go where you say. We should devise some sort of plan. You quickly hear a knock on the door. Kana, please open the door. My hand is on my weapon. Kana slowly opens the door, and you see the innkeep that had uh, that you'd purchased the rooms from standing there. You you have a a letter arrived from Doctor House, and she hands it to Clayton. Is it addressed to me? No, it was. We were just told to deliver it to the adventurers. I want to take a look. She hands it to you, and well, have a good evening. And she turns and bustles away quickly, clacking down the stairs. As you open the letter, it's very simple. There is a seal at the top of flourished W. New friends. I invite you to dine at my home tomorrow evening, 8 p.m. Please, grace us with your presence. Lady Fiona Lochter. I read that so loud. Seems so fairly popular. This is all far too coincidental, all of this. Uh, Do we think it's a trap? It is absolutely a trap. What was that made of? Fiona walked here. But when we out trap the trap, that is my thought. Exactly. They are indeed laying a trap for us. But I believe that they have no idea what they are getting themselves into. So here's, if I may, Professor. This, this place is just absolute godforsaken hellscape. I, I don't think that there's anything... All, all bets are off at this point. My only concern is if in the course of what we're doing, they come after us and try to put some town, city law on us, whatever you want to call it. What then? As far as I'm concerned, this is, there's, there's no, we got nothing left. I, uh, I'm not letting anybody put me in some goddamn stocks. I, I understand, I understand. I, I, perhaps we could appeal to the Burgomaster and enough townsfolk, at least, in Grovia Village, it sounded like they oppose Shalanya. They, they wanted. They would be free without her. Maybe we can somehow appeal to the Burgomaster, but if he's the, if he is this Baron that we keep hearing of, perhaps he is part of part of all this. It's hard to say, but I think we are powerful. We could handle some guards. We could get away with your shadows. We can. We have ways out. It would not be the first time you've been an outlaw, would it, Shepard? That's correct, Sarnax. I, I don't talk about it much, and I like to think I've set myself on the right path, but regardless, my point is, if anybody comes for us or stops us or tries to get in the way of us doing what we need to do, I am home back. Yes. Neither will I, and Rest assured, no one will put you in stocks. The city will burn before that happens. How did they know we were staying here? 
They seem to know everything. The Ravens. They're everywhere. Is also, there no, there's only one in. That helps. <laughs> I would say your intelligence is high enough you'd make that connection. <laughs> uh, either way, let us thoroughly investigate each room to ensure there's nothing there's nothing left that is spying on us that can see us while we are here. And I'll take 11 minutes and cast Detect Magic. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll go through both rooms just detecting, and if you guys want to, like, physically yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll shuffle things around, around, use the yeah. lantern. The room seemed to be free of magic. I'll pull my hood off. <sighs> Aside from, obviously, like, your case and any of your vestiges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The things that should Arch, be magic Arch. are magic, but aside from that, you don't notice any other magics. Once we're kind of realized that we're in, da- in not in any immediate danger, I'll take pull off my hood and I'll sit down with my lantern to the side and like finally breathe a sigh. There will be no peaceful rest while we are here. Uh, I, I know you probably mean that in a we have a job to do sense, but, uh, you know, in a, in a more literal sense, I'm, for as tired as I am, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep. You must try, Shepard. I will. I just, I don't, I don't even know how to begin to comprehend these things. Well, one day at a time, just a moment. Worry really not about your comprehension. The thing that we do need, however. Is your finger on the that trigger? Yeah, you can count on that. I'm glad. I am going to retire. I, I will as well, but uh, P- Professor, do you have some spare parchment and a writing implement I could borrow until tomorrow morning? Yes, of course. Thank you. I, I'll return the, the, the writing implement. Um, I will... Make sure that my alarms are set. Uh, Do we care how we divvy up these rooms? There are two beds in each room. Who would like to sleep on the floor? I'm accustomed to it, it's fine. As am I. You're exhausted, Sonax, why don't you take the floor? Uh, Thanks. I will take a bed with Mr. Morgan, and the ladies can share the other room. Is it edible? That works. Uh, but uh, once we get into our uh, respective rooms, I, I'll just. You said there's like a lamp or something, like a candle or whatever. Yep. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna. I, I just need to ride a little and, and clear my head, and I, I promise I'll lay down and close my eyes. Oh, and I just want to write a letter before I get away. You pull out the uh, supplies that Clayton provided you. The quill, the parchment, and the inkwell, and you begin to, you dip the quill into the ink, and you begin to write. Just a couple of different And letters. at first you don't notice the change, but as the lamplight flickers, you realize that you're not writing with ink, but blood, as it begins to drip down the parchment. Uh, uh, I, I, just, I, I like rub my eyes, and I, I, I look at it again. It's just ink. I am. I am very tired. I. I will. I'll finish my writing and I'll, I'll put the candle out. I, I promise. If if you want to go to bed before me, please. take your time. Uh, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to uh, transcribe with my new kind of upgraded vestige. I'm going to transcribe. Um, I think the first level spell I may have. I don't know where they are, but anyway, I'm going to do a bit of transcription. I think you I put them in the. I didn't have the spell scrolls. No, I know. Oh, oh. So I they're see. in the cabinet behind yep. you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, do you guys want to take a quick break? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Break. We can refresh. I'm going to try There's and do this a, a couple of times uh, during the I, session so we can get drinks and use the restroom, sure. etc. Right. Um, I don't have them yet, but I'm going to give you the letters that I wrote. Okay, perfect. Ooh. Sounds good. Great. So we're gonna take a quick like. So hey, chat. Welcome everyone. If you're just joining us, we're playing Curse of Strahd. That's if you couldn't tell. Oh. For Labor Day. Today, Labor Day is a. Labor Day. You have no idea how happy I'm way off tomorrow. Oh, I know. It is, it is so, so fantastic. Late. 
Yeah, we could. We could play a little extra if, if Mickey's prepared to do that, and we'll see where the night takes us. So I, I have these because I want to make my own. Uh, Ooh, nice. I want to make my own uh, pen or pencil custom. I should business. bring my set love, over. So are you going to set. try to fashion it so that there is a like a pen on the end, and then it looks like, like you're a writing with a Yeah, blue. either like graphite or ink. Oh, okay. Graphite, okay. Graphite, okay. But yeah, that's that's my plan. Cool. Um, that's great. Yeah. Excited for that. Uh, Thank well, you guys so much yeah. for your great comments. We really yeah. love it. Um, I should start bringing my stationery. So I mean, you guys are all, we, we, we recognize everybody here. You know, you guys are all regulars. Uh, and it doesn't need to be said, but if anybody's just joining us, please uh, keep your comments spoiler free if you can. All of the players at the table, we have no, we know nothing about the module and we're really enjoying it. Um, if there are things about the module you'd like to discuss, you're more than welcome to uh, message Nikki in our Discord. By the way, exclamation point Discord if you want to get that link. Yeah, we are hanging on the Discord. Just again, if it's anything that's spoiler related, use spoiler tags or, or, or direct message Nikki if there's stuff you want to talk about. She's always open to talk about this kind of stuff. Um, Abby says thank you for finally dispelling the creepy ass doll. Yes. Right. I mean, we had to level up! Yeah. You, feel, you don't even have access to the spell until level three. I, it was the first spell I took at, at fifth level because we don't have it yeah. beforehand. So I, um, I'm gonna get out. I'm sorry. So it's like there's a bunch of juicy stuff. At at uh once you hit level five, but I'm like I just, this needs to be one of my two spells because you know it is what it is. Uh, Dusty, how would you define Shep's well being mental strength right now? Uh, very very low. Uh, obviously it doesn't help that he's exhausted. But even if I get a long night's rest tonight, um, Shepard is not some fearless hero, right? I mean, like, yeah, he's, you know, he's this guy who hunts monsters or whatever, but, like, he's never seen anything like this before, so he's very much shaken to his core. And, you know, he's not a being who is without faults, and he's not some paragon of bravery. He, you know, he said he feels real fear, right? Um, I like to define bravery as what you do in the face of fear. It's not the absence of fear. So that's kind of how I view Shepard, right? It was. Um, yeah, I don't think bravery is not being scared. I think it's what you do when you are scared that defines how brave you are as a person. Um, uh, uh, I, I can't, I'm going to scroll up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, what did I do? I love strings. Sorry, you guys probably made look at me. Where, where, I can't find the mouse. Sorry, we. I might have missed a comment or two. We just don't want to. I'll, I'll scroll up. I might have. I might have sent the mouse all the way over yonder. <laughs> mouse over yonder. Oh, there it is. I just saw it. It flashed by real quick. Yeah, this is weird. So my computer's a little further now from. Set up so getting this mouse to. I just want to make sure we didn't miss any comments. There, yeah, there, yeah, yeah. There it is. Come the next night, it'll be back to being anime. Oh, dear God. I hope not. Oh, God. What's, oh, there. we had multiple questions about our soundtrack. Is there, is there oh, a link available to that? No, there is not a link available. It is a Spotify playlist that Derek put together for me, which were or for himself, but then gave to me, which is really great. And then I made a couple of playlists for the areas that I wanted to flesh out with like my own flavor. Um, but after Strahd is over, okay, I will saying. ask Derek if he's cool with it, yeah. and then we could share the link. That would be great. I just don't want the, yeah. Yeah. There's probably be. right. There, for now, there's some of them are like stuff. named spoilery things, so I just kind of want to keep. But that down. would be a great reason to stay tuned. And it's good to see you again, Captain Man. To the to the end, um, because we'll we'll be happy to well you know provided Derek and Nick you're both okay with it. Yeah. There's no reason why you, we. Couldn't, I'm totally fine with it, but it's Derek. It. A lot of them are Derek's playlists. So I'm sure. sure he's cool with that. Sure. Well, we'll find out. We got a few months. Um. So now the question with real talk with Turtle, I think. Um, said before we started our break, the role playing for this game is tops, y'all are in the zone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll drink to that. I have my great nerves. players. I need, I, need, I need something a little steady my nerve here after that fucking doll shit. Um, uh, he's been out of his comfort zone, fully understands it, does he? Probably, we probably already said that. Um, mm-hmm. So Bukega says you guys should do a stream Spotify. So Critical Role does character Spotify playlists. Really? I yeah. love that idea. Holy shit! Where they like, it's all, you know, it, they pick songs that in their mind, like, makes them think of their character. So I would really I, we've love to so, I, We've talked about this a lot. And we have a lot of songs for individual characters we've yeah. talked about, for sure. That's a great idea. Yeah, so I 100% want to do that at some point. For all of our campaigns, we can do that. Fuck yeah. Um, but yeah, we totally should. 
uh, Clavin says, are you all super excited for Halloween and great to see you? Oh, yes. We're always very, excited very for excited Halloween, Halloween, even when it's January. Yeah. We're um, excited for Halloween on November 1st. Exactly right. Yes. Hey, other side, Steve. Good oh, to hey, see you what's again. Up? Hey, I hope you're having fun on ESO. Ooh, hey. ESO, nice. Yeah. So on Halloween night, um, we are that weekend, I guess we'll say uh, we'll all be at Anime USA. So if yeah. you guys are in the DC area, and Halloween is on Thursday, right? It's the Thursday. Yes. So yeah. there's nothing going on at the con that night, right? It's just like day zero. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. just the yeah. I'm trick or treating. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, would it be if we're gonna be doing? I'm trying to like ramp up my cosplay for this stream as we get closer to Halloween. So am I. I kind of want to like go to the con, as go to Anime friend. USA, and, and as Chris I'm 100 going as like. Okay, cool. Well, there you go. We'll, okay. we'll have some good pictures for everybody. Because I, I really want to make... <laughs> I have one. I, wa I want to make Judgment and Redemption. And I it's full size. Um, I've got a lot of leftover so Eva fan from when I, when I, I did Kenny. Too. Yeah, so I, I would love to get your guys' opinions on what I'm we think uh, Judgment and Redemption look like so I can craft them. That'd be awesome. If you can find a 3D file, I can print... Oh, yeah. that would yeah. be and lot. that would make it easier for you because then I, all you have to do is put it together and paint it. Let's talk about it because I was yeah. thinking about using foam, but if that's an option, we can figure it out. Yeah, for sure. Okay. We're ready to get back in. I mean, yeah, yeah. I will say it is harder to be spoopy earlier in the morning. It is. I I, it is. I found the very beginning as a DM really hard to like get my it's mindset so into early. super well, we're, spoopy. We're warming up. We are. And my yeah. brain is foggy from so much classic WoW, so yeah. like I have to like snap out of it. And Let come me back eat to reality. this other cheese and then we can play. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I've got Mountain Dew poisoning because I, I also had, like, think that doesn't help that I didn't eat anything before I started playing. Yeah. Yeah. I had some coffee and that was about it. So I'm going to stay up for an hour and inscribe invisibility into my uh, into my spellbook. Sure. I will have the letters for you by next session. Sounds good. So for the initials there. So invisibility is. Can you can you send me who they're to? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So if you want to do that to me for me right now, because that can help for the rest of the session. Oh, sure, I'll message you. Uh, I'll message you kind of what my plan was mm -hmm. because it will become more evident in the morning anyway. Sounds good. And I'll before I go to bed, I'll just put my lantern down, uh, stare into the flame, just say a prayer to Garrick, and then go to sleep. Uh, if you're gonna eat that cheese, I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick. I'm almost done with this cheese, but yes, please do. Oh, uh, you're almost done with that cheese. I'm almost done with this cheese. Wow, you're almost done with that cheese. I wish that we could black out the room and flood it with candles. I did buy a bunch of candles, but we never put them up. We probably should. We should. The problem is, like, because there's so much lighting, you can't see them. It was like with the crystal ball. I think we should block the windows. We yeah. need to. Um, I can help with that. So we don't get all washed out for players. the first. Yeah. But as the sun sets... Hopefully it'll be gloomy. And lucky it's kind of gloomy and overcast today, so. Yeah. It's making it less bright as it normally is. That cheese was phenomenal. It was some good cheese. So what are what are you what are you all up to in chat? Um the today bo day is a label day. Sergeant Benedetto. I wish we could do polls in chat because I do a poll to see if chat wants me to TPK you guys. We can. Ooh. We can absolutely do could polls. Could we? You just gotta set them up. Well, that'd be fun. Oh, you know how we do the mini game? Mm -hmm. You can do polls and all sorts of shit. Oh. Well, that'd be so fun. Like, it doesn't even have to be a, a mini. Like, they actually. I know at least the, the Streamlabs chat bot. Uh, what is it? Streamlabs. OBS. They have all sorts of that stuff. You can do polls, you can do all sorts of cool stuff. That's awesome. Um, Zed, we want to see your art. We have, I think, I believe we have an art channel in the Discord. We do. Oh, yeah. We make art. We yes, would love we to see it, so please post it there so we can see whatever it's art you create. It's a creative channel, I believe, um, is what it's called. So. I love artists. I wish I could draw. Um, I wish that I took the time to learn. So please show us. And then West River Rat made some bean yes. soup. Ooh, and that makes me want to eat some soup. bean soup. Yum. Mm. We love bean soup. What kind of bean? 
Um, they said, but it scrolled up too fast, oh. so I don't know what kind of bean soup. It was oh, ham and, and bean. bean. Oh, that's the uh, best. Oh, ham yum. and bean soup. Love Ooh. that shit. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, you send out your letters. You transcribe your spell, and you lay yourself down to sleep after doing your nightly rituals. Are you going to do anything special before you go to bed? I'm going to kneel down uh, at my bed to pray, and as I close my eyes for just a moment, I'm going to see that tendril that fell down from Strahd blow back up, and I'm going to bang my head on the thing, or uh, bang my hand on the bed, and continue to try to pray. You all fall asleep. Victoria, you begin to dream. You find yourself manacled to the bed, blood spilling around you. You look down, and where your stomach should be is a huge, empty hole. Your spine completely exposed, but you feel no pain. And you look as the blood is pooling and pooling and pulling as it starts to fill up the room around you. You look to the side and you see Kana sleeping peacefully on her bed as the blood rises and rises, covering her. You see her hand reach up. She looks like she's flailing as she's drowning as your blood fills the room. Everything goes dark. Do I wake up? Shepard. Oh, hell. Sorry, I'm, I'm messaging you right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm focused, I'm focused. Here we go. You dream of wings. The wind blowing through your hair as you soar over Barovia? From this high, it's hard to see what you're looking at, but you're riding atop something. You're astride a huge beast. You are a huge beast, a monster, a dragon. As you look down at your arms and your legs, your wings unfurling as you fly, soar over the land of Barovia, a silver dragon. You let out a burst of flame as you annihilate the land around you, burning this damned land to the ground. in in your wrath. You circle around and you find yourself landing atop the ruins of a huge mansion, a place you've never seen before. Dragon statue, tiny in comparison to your dragon form. A sense of accomplishment. A sense of power. A sense of righting the wrongs of the innocent and defeating the devil Strahd as you watch the land of Barovia burn around you. You wake up. Is that it? Mm-hmm. We all wake up. Yep. Then we do we get a long rest? Yeah, you all have a long rest. Oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> well, that counted. <laughs> yep. Wowie zowie. That was... Woo, feels good to have my hit points back. <laughs> oh. Spice metal swords. Oh. Oh. Would you know anything about dragons, Shepard, being a monster? I mean, I would say that, and please correct me if I'm wrong anyone at the table, my knowledge of dragons would nothing would be nothing more than skin deep of like any passing lore you would hear in Avantress, right? Unless the, unless the continent of Yona has never heard of a dragon before, I would have at least heard and know what they look like or lore about them, but I don't. I would have never in my personal life... Would you know them. that they breathe different things? Because ZC makes a good point, which you are a monster slayer, so I guess it would make sense that you would know that they breathe different I mean, things. Some idea. I would or, say that my, my favorite enemy is very much just like monstrosities, so it's not, I'm not like this That's kind of, of what I was thinking. When it comes to all kinds of beasts, right? Okay. 
I might have some idea, but I'm not like well versed it's, in it. It's okay. It's it's important if he would know, but my assumption is that he wouldn't know. Um, so I kind yeah. of went off on that. Assumption. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that I would have any particularly deep deep knowledge. No. Okay. Cool. Can we leave it as it stands. <laughs> Um, I also messaged you, but no rush. You can, you can take a look. Um, I want to just, if, if, or if we're all awake um, and we're convening, then that's fine. I can. Then or not. Are we all convening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get out. get out of bed right. and just kind of write myself and then come in. Um, uh, uh, all right. Uh, I, I, I've got some things in town I, I'd like to take care of. Uh, Welcome to join. It won't take long. I'm just popping out real quick, and uh, you know, maybe maybe Sarnax and I will, will pick up the, the the daggers for the children and, and show them a thing or two. Is he broken on you already? Did you sleep everything? Yeah, I actually feel fine. I I, I slept well. I didn't think that I would, but I I feel very good. It's wonderful. Happy to hear it. And you? I slept. So, so again, Professor, if, if you'll give me leave, uh, please, I won't be long. Please just keep an eye out for things. Sarnax, are, are you interested in, in joining? Of course. Both of our eyes will be useful on this quest. We, we won't be long in, in any kind of, of, of lessons that we give these children. It'll need to be repeated anyway. We'll, we just want to make sure they're safe. Yes, yes, of course. Um, if you don't mind, I'll stay in and do a bit of reading and, and writing. We shouldn't be going well. All right. Be safe. Are you accompanying them? Uh, you, you can if you'd like. It's nothing urgent. Sure. It's up to you. Please, by all means. Any, anyone is welcome. I just don't want to leave the professor alone. As long as Connor's still here, that's fine. Connor will keep watching. All right. Let's, go. Let's proceed. Uh, I want to prepare my spells. Um, I'll have my invisible servant make tea in the room, because that's something that mm-hmm. we can do, so I don't have to go downstairs. Um, and I want to turn my uh, my case into a writing desk and uh, try to transcribe while they're, uh, while they're up. Okay. You're easily able to do that. Uh, Kana sits silently and um, watches the room as you do this. Uh, the rest of you make your way um, across the balcony, uh, the guest balcony overlooking the tavern area of the inn, and you see that it is um, completely vacant except for two men that appear to be passed out at a table to the corner, um, almost in a drunken stupor. You see as... Um, the lady of the inn is uh, shaking them, attempting to wake them up and ushering them out. Um, it doesn't seem too interesting as you make your way outside, down the stairs, and along the path heading down towards the church. It does not take you long uh, before you're able to get there. You walk up the steps, enter inside, and you see it just as you left it the day before. Um, Father Lucian is once again still in front of the, um, the statue praying. And you can, now that you know where the room is, you can hear the faint muttering of noises coming from the school room. Uh, did, did Sarnax get the idea that we would need to purchase daggers first before we go there, or that... that uh, she said she was going to be talking to uh, Father Lucian about obtaining daggers. Okay. Yeah, but okay. she was going to try to get them daggers. Okay. I mentioned then that. Then that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Then yeah, we'll just go, that's, we'll just go right up to the room, I guess, and, and head in. Hello, opinionated fairy. Thank for thank you for your D and D style uh, hey. Kirby. Well, nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's adorable. I love, <laughs> I love Kirby. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm a, a big fan of Vampire Bat. Me too. <laughs> we'll we'll knock on the door. You knock on the door, and uh, you hear shuffling on the inside as the uh, the door creaks open slightly as you see Irina's face peek out. Oh, it's just you. Well, we're coming in to say hello to the children. Uh, uh, yes, and uh, I, I believe Sarnax uh, mentioned something about uh, learning how to use 
a weapon. Oh yes, I, I talked to Father Lucian. He is considering it. He believes that Thomas should definitely have a dagger, and that Alana um, may require one, but he believes that Myrtle is a little too young. Though we are, we're still in conversation about it. He is having them brought over later today, and they're, they're, at least Thomas will be having his first lesson. All right, well, well I, I think that's reasonable given that this is the father's house, and as long as we, we're still going to teach the young one, uh, because it's it's only right that she's aware of, of the dangers of these things, if, if that's all right. Of course. Um, he would really like to see how the elder children do with the teachings. And if they do well, they could motivate her to take it seriously. And if they do end up hurting themselves, it will be a valuable lesson. But we're not going to let that yes, happen, Sarnax. Nice. As long as the lesson doesn't take their lives. No, of course not. This is about safety and... and in the meantime, we can use so my dagger. Defense. That's that's fine. We'll just use one that I have, and we'll just give him an overview, and we, we can do this uh, maybe for the next few days while we're still here. You would like to teach Thomas? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, and I would, I would oh, like well, Sarnax's help as well. If that's... He would, I'm sure he would prefer that much more so than Father Lucian teaching him. I'm honestly... When I brought it up with him, I'm not quite sure he even knows how to wield a dagger. That's that's all right, and 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 I, I think we should move it forward with, with teaching uh, Myrtle as well, even if we don't give her her own dagger for a little while. Well, if you're planning on doing the teaching, then I don't see why we couldn't. With Sarnax's help, yeah, absolutely. Well, when would you like to get underway with the lessons? Uh, the children are currently doing the reading, and then we have writing, and then we have mathematics. Well, the, uh, the, the professor's uh, doing his morning uh, preparations for the day, so we've got uh, maybe an hour to spare. We can do it now. We've got some oh, errands to run while we're in town. I wasn't expecting that, but um, I could push them at their lessons forward an hour. Uh, we would be greatly appreciative. Well, come on in, then. You have daggers. Uh, I've got mine for now. Well, Sorry, next, maybe just show. keep yours to your son. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel Not about suitable this. for a child. Well... We'll do what we can. Thanks. And she ushers you in, and I'll say that you you spend the next hour or so um, explaining uh, daggers to the children. Thomas is completely enthralled. Myrtle doesn't seem to care at all. Um, she she has maybe five minutes of attention before she's drawing, and um, she keeps drawing horses. She seems to really love horses all over her notebooks. Um, but um, you spend the first hour of the very first day teaching them what they are and how to use them and how sharp they are. And Thomas gets a little overly excited and um, nicks his finger a little bit and uh, Sarnax is able to heal it. But it's, it's the first lesson on how dangerous they are. And from that point on, he seems to handle it significantly more carefully. Um, a valuable lesson. I was in seeing so... Um, Alana is able to tell that she too does not want to nick herself with it, and so she is careful. I want to spend a considerable portion of the hour explaining and trying to help these young children understand what it means to defend oneself and take a life. Because this is a very harsh reality. Of, I'll of say this. you you get to the defend yourself part, and as you start to get into the heavy taking a life portion, Irina stops you and it's been about an hour. I think that conversation would be better to stop tomorrow with. All, all right, um, of course. We want to be respectful of everyone's time. And more so the children. They, should you leave shortly after that conversation, they would have a harrowing rest of the day. Understood. My apologies. And it is about there that you're able to wrap up with the children. She ushers you out and continues their lessons. You're now standing um, at, outside of the church, unless you wanted to do anything with uh, Father Lucian. Um, and it's been, I would say it's probably been almost an hour and a half, almost two hours since you left. I just, morning. we don't have to RP it if you don't want to. I just want to find a place where I can find someone who makes clothing and, and like accessories and have uh, dresses made for the girls and a hat that looks like mine made for Thomas. And I'm willing to pay whatever it costs to, to have that done and 
them here. Okay. Um, did you want to? Did you want to go get the professor first and see has the majority of the money? Um, I was going to use the money that he gave me. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'll say if you want to do that, you're you're welcome to. Just whatever it costs, you let me know, and I'll take it out of my own money. Um. Quick rattlesnake. Quick rattlesnake. Oh, oh, yeah. Quick rattlesnake. rattlesnake. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Gotta, yeah, we gotta get a mug for you, quick rattlesnake. rattlesnake. Um, so while they were doing that, I would be just out in the graveyard, um, kind of having some like, quiet contemplation time and just kind of going through the rooms and reading the stones. <laughs> Okay, I'll say you're easily able to do that. A lot of these seem incredibly old. Uh, roll, uh, roll a perception check. Thank you. Yeah, Rattlesnake Jake. You weave your way through, so you're separating essentially. You're staying behind while he heads off to. Uh, just while they were inside teaching the kids, oh, okay. I would have just been kind of in the yard of the So in church. the meantime, you're meandering through, and one of the things that you notice is, um, I would say it's about 15, maybe 20 minutes in, you start to notice that on some of these tombstones are the words, had a soul, lacked a soul, without a soul, with a soul. And... Not all of them have this, but there are tombstones that will say the name died here this day without a soul. Interesting. So they they would have one of those four, not more than one. They would have one, one of, of these, those four. Whether it said without a soul, lacked a soul, with a soul, or they wouldn't have anything at all. So not every single one of them has it. Weird. I'm going to write that down in my, in my notebook with a reminder to tell the professor. And you, um, you make your way, uh, you leave the church and you're able to meet up with Victoria, um, who wants to go shopping. Mm -hmm. Shepard's going to make his way towards the town square, so. Yes. Yeah, again, I, we don't have to RP the whole thing or anything like that, but, but basically, whatever I find, I want to have those items made, I'll pay whatever it costs to have them made. With the explicit direction of when they're finished, if I don't come back to pick them up, they're to be delivered to the church to the three individuals. And I'll pay extra for that if I So it'll it. be 30 silver? Done. And how much time are we going to say will have transpired just by um, the time we get back? By the time you make your way to the center of town, to the shop, you're easily able to walk through town. You see... Um, the stocks, you see that those two people that you remember from the day before are there with the people who'd been, um, the women, children, etc. that had been the, there the first time you'd walked by. Um, the stocks are now almost full as these people are, um, manacled into them with the plaster donkey heads over their, over their actual heads. And you're able to walk by, uh, people mill about, seem to be disgusted by it, but you see as they walk away, they all put a plaster on fake smiles and nod at each other. All will be well. All will be well. As you make your way through, um, the entire thoroughfare is lined with shops. Um, produce, uh, which seems to be uh, really lacking, and the, the items that they have seem to be part, at least partially rotting, but there seems to be enough for sustenance. Um, sustenance. A baker's uh, shop, you also find... Um, you walk past a strange, darkened building labeled Blinsky's, to Blinsky's and your eyes dart to it for a second, but you continue on uh, without Clayton with you as you make your way towards what appears to be a tailoring boutique, a sign, no name on it, just with a thimble, a thimble, a spool of thread, and a needle um, as it swings back and forth in the wind. You make your way in, you... Uh, spend a little bit of time um, with Laszlo, who appears to be the owner of the tailor shop, and you direct him to what you would like to to be made and where to deliver it. And he says it will take, you know, about three days, given the luckily the size of the children makes it a much easier thing um, to craft, and that he will have it delivered for you. Perfect. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for oh, you guys. Yeah, we're going to return back as soon as we're yeah. done all this stuff and then just pick up the Professor and Connor. 
All right. You easily make your way back to the inn. Um, as you make your way in, you're walking along the, uh, the, the guest balcony that overlooks the tavern area. And you see now that it is just the, uh, just the owner as she's cleaning up behind the bar, the two drunkards that were passed out on the table have since left. And uh, you make your way into the room to find Clayton and Con. So did you get to them? I did, yes. In fact, I, how long has it been? Uh, I will say at this point, probably three hours. Oh, that quite a bit done, yes, actually. Uh, I believe I've successfully transcribed everything that I found in in Death House. Wonderful. Exactly everything. Cool. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. I was very productive. What Are you happy person? now? Yeah. He defrayed those. I agree. There will be more. Oh, <laughs> shit, so, so and that's will, not including the ones that you gave to me. Yeah. Those, that's not including, including the ones that I've already transcribed. Got it. Exactly. Got it. Got it. So uh, I will add uh, magic missiles. Uh, this guy's self. Yes. So we have some time before our dinner engagement. On our way back, I do not know if you noticed the toy shop that we passed. Yeah, I was keeping my eye out for it. I believe that should be our next stop. It didn't appear to be open, but at the very least, we could go, uh, you know, wait, see, see if anybody shows up. In. Yeah. Professor or Victoria, yes. would you refresh my memory? on what Madam Ava said about the bones, about the toy maker. Please, please read. Read your notes. Let's take a look. Oh. Yes, it was the artifact card, if I'm not mistaken. This card sheds, sheds light on one who will help you greatly in the battle against darkness. Look for an entertaining man with a monkey. The man is more than he seems. So if this is right, if, if, these, if these cards are accurate, this man may put up some kind of front, or some some he may try to rebuff us, and, and I don't think we should take no for an answer. I agree. It is fated that he will aid us whether he likes it or not. Well, you were out and about. Did you see where his shop is? We did. did. All right, then lead the way. Done. Yeah, so while we walk, my guy, put your hands in. Of course. I spent some time out in the graveyard while the gentleman was teaching the children. I saw something peculiar on the headstones. It seems each one was denoted with a, a recollection of the soul. Either they had a soul, or they did not, or they lost a soul. Some variation to me. How many had souls versus those that didn't? Significantly more did not have souls. How? Meaning that most people that die do not have their soul? It's curious, isn't it? Yes. It is curious. I, do I, in my past research with Barovia, does that, does that strike a bell at all? No. Nope. Uh, I, I, I don't, unfortunately, I, that doesn't sound familiar at all. Have you been able to read through the window of the history? Um, I haven't spent too much time looking at it yet, but I will prioritize, prioritize that right away. Yes. Uh, that, is, that is so curious. It is. I'm not familiar with the religion here, but what perhaps would, that would shed some light on it. What would rob them of their souls? If not, if not the land itself. Well, either way, I think hopefully whatever information we learn in this uh, Bokta house, presumably, uh, maybe you can tell us more. Uh, so I guess we'll, we'll continue. We continue along down the winding paths, past the strolling commoners, until you make your way to the Merchant District. You head straight towards the, sm the strange, dark shop of Blinsky Toys. 
this cramped shop has a dark entrance portico, above which hangs a wooden sign shaped like a rocking horse, with a B engraved on both sides. Flanking the entrance are two arched, lead-framed windows. Through the dirty glass, you see jumbled displays of toys and hanging placards bearing the slogan, Is no fun, is no Blinsky. <laughs> Uh, so this is it. Uh, I, I, guess, I guess he's open. Uh, it's a little dark in there. I am failing to see what the proprietor of this establishment could do to aid us in our battle against the darkness. Out of character. We showed the doll to someone, mm-hmm. and they said it looked like one of his. It has a label okay. on the side that says, Is no fun, is no Blinsky. Right, okay. Well, I mean, at the very least, uh, well, I'm not going to make assumptions. I'll take my hat off and I'll try the door. The door gives you just a tiny amount of resistance, but it seems to be just the rust in the mechanism as you're able to turn the knob and push the door open. A small jingling bell dingles as you walk in. <laughs> jingles as you walk in. I don't know. I said jingles. Uh, as you walk in, uh, dust uh, puffs up around you. It doesn't seem like this place sees much traffic. Lining the walls are the creepiest of toys. Off the side, you see a ears to contain. It's a transparent bag, it's a fine, um, almost silk-like fabric woven together. Um, just enough that you can peer through it and it appears to hold what looks like marble eyeballs. A strange dolls with misshapen heads and um, lolling smiles. Um, Very reminiscent of the doll that you have. Seems to line and fill every single corner of this of this place. And behind the dark wooden desk hunched over seems to be a man in a purple outfit a jester's hat upon his head he's a large man chubby and perched on his shoulder is a monkey a live monkey not a doll not a toy you see as it rifles through his hair beneath the cap and seems to be picking and eating things from his scalp Uh, after you professor Oh, uh, hello, my good man. Uh, do you happen to be the man known as Blinsky? Well, hello, welcome to Blinsky's. Blinsky's toys. Is is that a is that a yes? You you are Blinsky, or are you just a player? Are you looking to buy toys from Blinsky? Potentially, these are lovely dolls you have here. Um, I must say, I've never seen. A monkey quite like that before. Did you oh, get that from you like Piccolo. Piccolo, oh. Piccolo. I, I do very much. I'm uh, more enriched. There's a name in here that I didn't put in here. It just happens <laughs> to be a name. <laughs> what is written in the book? Um, uh, you like Piccolo. Would you like to hold him? Ah, uh, well, uh, perhaps... Piccolo, would like you to pick hold his him. hair. <laughs> and he holds Piccolo out to you. You oh, see oh. this... Huh. Small pet monkey, um, and he's got a strange little mask on his face that seems to be fashioned for him. It's um, stark white with rosy pink cheeks. He looks strange wearing it, but he doesn't seem to bot- mind that it's on him. The as he has a mask on? Uh-huh, as uh, the monkey leaps <laughs> from Blinsky's hand directly onto you and immediately starts picking through your hair. Oh, 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 oh. Watch the hat, watch the hat, and I take my hat off and say this. You move it just as he seemed to make a motion for it. Um, uh, he it reaches like reaches out and then goes back to pick, picking at your hair. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, this is not the most comfortable. Um, so, I will ask you again, are you Mr. Blinsky? I am Mr. Blinsky! Oh, well, it's a pleasure, my name is Blinsky. It is on design. It's no fun, eat no Blinsky. Well, that is a very charming uh, slogan, indeed. Um, I came up with it myself. I am the master of tiny wonders. Well, I I wanted to ask you something. I I have have a question. Uh, Curio, and my case will float up and open. You see he looks interested at what you're doing. And I will pull out this doll. 
And I will ah. say, does this look familiar? Is this one it of yours? is one it has, of my creations. It is a tag. You, do you remember who you sold this one to? I sold that to Mary for her daughter, and now I'm French. God, this accent is hard. It was the music to be fair. It was It was for Mary, for her daughter. So... Mary did come here. Do you know? Have you met her, her daughter before? It was delivered. I have not met her or her daughter. I see. Did you sell it recently? Hmm. Fifteen years ago. I see. He's got a pretty good memory then. They're all in here. Every toy I've ever made. No. Yes. Would you like a tiny gallows? And he reaches over and you see a tiny gallows. You pull string, it cuts vegetables if you like. Why, why would you even suggest that? Does it look like you could put a finger in it? Yeah. See, but be right. careful. Do you want a toy? You hear in Blinkskis. Do you practice the medicinal arts, Mr. Blinsky? I do not. I am but a humble craftsman. Have you ever been to Barovia Village? Maybe once or twice. Maybe or definitely? Eh, definitely once or twice. I don't travel often. I prefer to stay here and to work on my creations. Piccolo, the monkey. Is he from Barovia? I am not sure where. He came to me recently, but I like him. How recently? Maybe a month or month or so. He was given to me by this strange traveler in town. He's staying at the Blue Water Inn. Oh, oh, so you haven't had the monkey long? No, it was traded to me for some toys. He was quizzical, this man. Wow, I think that's it. That's, I think we're done. He's, um, he's the, 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 car the carnival man. The man with the carnival wagon. Uh, we, we don't know him, but maybe we'll find him. Oh, everyone knows of him now. Do, 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 you, do you know his name? Yes, his name is Rictavio. Shepard does literally <laughs> that. <laughs> Professor. Rictavio. Yes. How do you spell that? Just like it sounds. Doesn't matter. Rick followed by Tavio. Doesn't matter how it, how, how it's spelled. It matters what it starts and ends with, my friend. And that is? R and the O. That is right. Um, well, uh, I appreciate uh, this lovely doll. Uh, that I, I would really appreciate. Would you like to buy some more from me? I no, could. I have. I have some new things. I have this hag doll, and he no, shows you what looks like a horrific hag doll. Put that. It seems to be made out of some kind of um, flesh woven together. It appears to be animal flesh, not human flesh, as far as you can tell. Sir, we're not buying anything from you. Put that it goddamn thing down. It smells just like you would think a hag would smell. Just, oh, God, no. Can no. You, do you have a little baby in your family? Do you want this? It is a death rattle. And he pulls out what appears to be a rattle, but the head of it is a skull. Oh my God. Do you like? There are little bones inside that jingle and make the rattle noise. You are an appalling individual. I am not. I am a. I'm a genius. I'm a creator of tiny wonders. Do you have anything more agreeable? Well, let me look. I have. Would you like this little coffin? No. <laughs> I wouldn't like a little coffin. Uh, anyway, are we done here? I think we're done. I was thinking maybe you could get a toy for the children. Do you have okay. a dragon, Mr. Blinsky? I have a dragon. No, but I could work on one for you. Uh, sorry, I, uh, the place we went to before, we, we don't, don't, don't do this here. It's good, good. I oh, like... I see that you have a lantern. Would you like this lantern? And he holds up a simple lantern with a hood covering. The hood spins as the bass plays a music box tune to reveal pictures of clawed monsters, winged demons, witches and wolves all over the wall. Different hoods seem to be able to be purchased, telling different stories. How much is that? The the little the little hooded lantern. Yes. Do you want the set of ten different story hoods? I mean, that's, that's actually, actually that's actually the man. Cool. It will be 
three gold pieces. All right. I, I don't want to be assumpt- uh, presumptuous, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and guess you didn't make Me that. Too. I did. I make everything. In I don't actually. I am it. not as good as Von Berg, but I am learning. If it's for the children, that's fine. That's as good as me. Can I recall... Von Berg? What? As good as whom? Von Berg. He is my... Well... I consider myself to be a student of the great inventor and toy maker Fritz von Berg. Fritz von Berg. You know, speaking of him, I hear that Lady Stardania has one of his masterpieces in her castle. A tiny clockwork man. You know, she likes... She likes newcomers to Barovia. Like a wind-up toy. Yes, like a clockwork man. If you happen to make your way to dinner, because she likes your kind, do you think you could check him out for me? I've asked on multiple occasions. No one's come back, so I'm assuming they can't find him. But if you happen to be there, would you look for the clockwork man? Sure, whatever you say. If I could study that little clockwork man, I could make amazing things. All right. Yeah, yeah. But speaking of this, you... You, yes, you look yes. like you are a smart man. Would you like a tot in the pot? Based on the name, I don't believe so. Are you sure? What, 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 tell me what it is. He opens up the cabinet and he pulls out a depiction of a hag stirring a cauldron with two withered cloth arms. As he cranks the stir, a haunting tune plays. As the tune crescendos, a scream is heard, and a child's head pops up out of the cauldron. Oh, I'm done. Put he it reset down. it. He pushes the child's head back put, into it. Put it down now. We will be going. Um, good day, sir. Please remove this monkey. But, but what about my Vistani fortune teller? Go on. He holds up a clockwork bust of an old woman that comes to life when he puts a silver coin in the slot. She moves back and forth. Ask her a question. What is my name? Ah. (laughs) Dargos. Sometimes she lies. It's fine. <laughs> Sit down under the under the couch. Uh, well, uh, charming, yes. But uh, no, I believe the the lantern will be fine. Um, well, thank you. Uh, good day. Uh, in, please take your monkey, and I rip it off and I throw it at him. Eh, leave Donter Piccolo. He's mo- one of the most valuable things I have ever gotten. I'll put the the doll back in the case. Um, and Are you sure you don't want to look through more? I have a flayed rocking horse. We're sure. Y- yes, please. Uh, maybe you... we'll come back. A flayed rocking horse. Carved to look like a horse whose skin has been removed. His muscles, tendons, and blood vessels are all intricately shown. In some areas, even those layers have been removed in favor exposing parts of them. And it rocks back and forth. That is... Do the children of this village find this amusing? Well, you know, they take what they can get. Do you do commissions? <laughs> I do. What would you like to have created? A dragon. Just a dragon? A great red dragon. Do you know what that looks like? I know what a dragon looks like. Does Is he going to breathe fire? Do you have that ability? I can see what I can do. Yes. Fire. Fire Ooh, and flame. And if you put your fingers near its mouth, it will bite them off. No, no, not that. Flame. Produce flame. Then gold pieces. Uh, uh, for I, a commission. I, 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 like, lean in towards Tarnax and, like, whisper to him, Don't, don't, don't give anything to kids that might harm them. I don't trust this guy. If a toy dragon harms them, it will be a valuable lesson. I mean, I, no, I, I get that. I, I'm not, I'm not doubting that or you. I, I don't, I doubt this guy's ability. I don't even think he's malicious. I think he just might be an idiot. He has made all you of know, these wonderful abilities. I just realized, and he 
looks through this big leather bound tome. He goes back probably about halfway. I gave that doll a name. That's Morbid Molly. Yes? Yes. It's Dolly? Yes, Morbid Molly. Morbid, morbid Molly. And like, and the, the purchasers of this doll, they, they knew that before they bought this. Yes. Of course How did they did. Come to make it. Such an interesting name. I looked at her and I said, as I stitched her lips on, You look like a Molly. Well, well that's very creative. Yes. I, b- I believe he meant more of the morbid aspect to her moniker. Yeah, you know, that is just what came to Blinsky! Well, ah. Before we leave, while, yes. while we're doing our transactions here, what do, you, what do you fill these dolls with? You know, bits of fluff that you find around, some hay, loose straw, old grass. It just depends on what's available at the time. And that's it? Of course, what else am I going to put in it? That's a great fucking question. Do I, I completely re- agree. Do I recall before Sarnex cut the doll open, did the seeming look to have been disturbed, or did it look kind of consistent with the rest of... I mean, the seeming on it was pretty haphazard to begin oh, with. Oh, it was. So. Okay, so this is not... So, like, it, it seems like I it's... I guess her eyeball it, is... It seems like it's, right. it's, you know, it's created in a way that it was intended. The craftsmanship seems great for okay. how it was intended, but it's not... So there wasn't some obvious thing where it looked like it had been ripped open and restitched. Yeah. Okay, got it. Do you want to buy the Burgomaster's hand? That is a local favorite. I mean, of course, yes. you know... What is that? I did ask, yes. What is that? Well, it is a clockwork dismembered hand wearing a white glove with an ornate signet ring and dress shirt cuff with gemmed cufflinks. It moves around on its fingers when wound up. Oh, that actually sounds a little fun. How much is it? (laughs) Three gold pieces. Pay the man, Professor. Why? Pay the man. That is an absurd... (laughs) What, I, what else do you have? Would you like to get the laughing top? What is it? A wooden spinning top that looks crudely carved. Hey, when did I write this description? It looks finely carved. <laughs> Yet when it's spun, it catches the carving in such a manner as to make the sound of children laughing or crying in the distance, depending on which direction the top is spun. No, we don't want that. Do you have any dinosaurs? Let me look. I've got a jester marionette, a wooden puzzle box, a faceless doll, coffin jack in the box, wooden people with things, marionette puppet theater, toy with Stanley Baggin, pair of clown masks, wooden top, stuffed bat, torn up with Stanley dolls, headless doll with detachable heads, miniature gallows, wooden nesting dolls, bat mobile, musical merry-go-round, strong ventriloquist dummy, nightmare rocking horse, a zombie doll, toys with dice, another straw doll, I have some eye marbles, bone slide whistle, I've got another hat doll, I got bone dominoes, I've got this stitched together little teddy bear. Um, I've got a Raven Song music box. What is that? Oh, the Raven Song music box. It's yes. a clockwork raven that sits atop a porcelain skull. You see this skull right here. Winding the mechanism in the back, plays an eerie tune while the raven picks the empty eye socket to the rhythm of the music. How much is that? <laughs> Three gold pieces. <laughs> Professor. Oh, so just... Is that it? That's it. I'm cutting you off. Animal. Other is there a dinosaur? <laughs> um, let me look. We've got an executioner's coin bank. Um, I've got the hearse. Um, let me see. Lil Undertaker's understudy. Ah, that's pretty much... And then I've got this entire set of dolls back here. And he opens a cabinet. And you all immediately see pristine, near-perfect dolls. Maybe 20, maybe 30. All of their faces, an exact replica of Irina. And that's why we'll take a five minute break. Oh. Uh, I will be right back. Oh. <laughs> what? Uh. <laughs> Um. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, we'll take a break. Uh. Hey, chat, how's it going? We're gonna just refresh here. Uh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> What if we just left? <laughs> we are! We're leaving! No, not now! Uh, what are we gonna do? Just burn this guy's shop to the ground? Zoom 
gonna shoot this fucker! I hope I have this prepared. So I got it, don't He's fucking got it. worry. He's got it. I always had that shit. I will allow you to cast that. Just say he's a monster and slay the shit out of him. How do I do it? No, yeah, how, like, I'm wondering, how can you do... I mean, it's magic, right? Like, it wouldn't just... It would have to be... So, so no, you shoot at the ground. Is, yeah, yeah, we could. I was going to say, I don't want it all to originate uh, from the weapons, because, like, for example, I can cure wounds. Right. But I would flavor it as me just bandaging somebody up. You know, like, patching them up. You know what I mean? And making it not as me just, like, waving my hand and doing shit. So, Zone of Truth, in my opinion, would be almost like me... Roughing the guy up, but in a way that is, he's compelled to to not be able to lie about it, right? It, it was was just the first thought that I had. I'm open to it, right? To make it seem less magical, but still be, you know, because I don't want to just be like, you will, Jedi mind <laughs> trick the truth, right? But yeah, how can you do it where it's literally a zone on the ground where I, in everybody in it? Grapple the shit. I don't know. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know. We'll just talk about it, because then there's just some fun, flavorful ways where you're right, it shouldn't all be from the gun, maybe it could just be like a variety of... <laughs> there were there were like, definitely things that I would want to put like the infernal twist on, right? Why not be yeah. able to say that some of the magic that I, that stems from me yeah. comes from my yeah. infernal background, yeah. right? That's great. There's some devilish stuff there that yeah. might be able to be invoked. I love that. A can of beans on the ground. <laughs> Can of beans on the trail. Do we all we all see these dolls? Oh yeah. Okay. They're out of unlike all of the other things that you've seen. These are like pristinely crafted porcelain dolls, and they look identical to Irina. Why is this place so fucking disturbing? Everywhere we go, like there's not even a moment of respite. <laughs> Welcome to Barovia. How's everybody doing on this Labor Day? Did anyone have any fun Labor Day plans? Did anyone have a good summer? Well, tomorrow's actually Labor Day. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. It's a free Labor Day. Eat food and play classic WoW. That sounds great. I'm gonna do nothing but do that all the time. Should I do a full pot? Yeah, sure. It'll get it'll get consumed. Cool. Z says, never test a while. Yes, make a full pot, Richie. You've been given the go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, ZC. I will 100% make a full pot. Do you guys want to hear some more of these amazing Blink yes. toys? So the lazy marble eye set, a bag of glass eye marbles fashioned in various shades of blue, green, brown, and hazel. When you roll a marble on the ground, it always appears to be looking at you. Oh, That's so creepy! The ghost whistle, bone slide whistle, carved in the shape of an emaciated skeletal figure, mouth agape at the end, which emits eerie, ghostly sounds that can be varied in pitch with the slide. Um, the death rattle. Um, and that's sitting on the top of an enameled wooden rod as a skull. The remains of a known jester who visited Castle Ravenloft to try to entertain Strahd. The skull rattles with the finger bones of the gnome and cackles gleefully at the worst possible moment. What is wrong with these people? <laughs> it's really out of his family. Yeah. The hag doll. <laughs> that's why I like. Only that. if it wasn't like a like a only if it wasn't like a dark comedy and it was like serious and horrible. <laughs> the hag doll, a leather hag doll, reaching down her throat reveals three children like cloth dolls. No, Ew. no, I'm, I'm, I'm telling this guy. <laughs> Hunter, Hunter Govan, plush doll of a male human wearing medieval hunting clothing, a crossbow and a sword. There's a slit on the doll's back allowing you to turn it inside out, turning him to a black dire wolf. Both only have one eye. Yo, that's tight. That's cool. That is the coolest fucking thing. <laughs> Uh, Death's Door Domino set. A wooden hand cranked coffin shaped box that when open reveals a set of domino tiles made of gray bone. Pretty cool. My pal Ivy. A small clay bust of a bald woman with instructions to dampen the head daily. After 1d4 <laughs> days, no. the head begins to sprout long, fine vines of poison ivy. Wizards of the Coast did not put a chia pet in their fucking mind. <laughs> yeah, they <definitely> did. <laughs> yes. A dollhouse in which the beautiful family rooms conceal secret rooms, tunnels, and cellars. Each hidden room contains a scene of torture or murder. Yes. Just a creepy teddy bear. A stitched up bear composed yeah, just. of... Multiple parts Just of different the teddy bears. It is slightly animatronic and sings a creepy song of being best friends with the owner. It somehow knows the owner's name. 
I want to purchase that. Okay. We don't know about it. And cut off. Unless you us. find out about it. The rat. Well, he showed, he mentioned the bear. Yeah, he mentioned the bear. Did he? Yeah, yeah he mentioned okay. the bear. I, I went through and read everything. The rack, a miniature torture device playset, comes with stretchy arm claw, which comes Jesus. with a stretchy arm clown with menacing spike tooth grin. When the doll is placed on the rack, little wooden gears turn, stretching out the doll and causing it to laugh maniacally. <laughs> and I mean, there, there are a ton more. Um, so <laughs> some of these are Wizards of the Coast. Like the first ones are all Wizards of the Coast. Um, and then a bunch of the other ones are actually Reddit creations. Yay! So no way. an awesome thread where there's a compilation of fun Blinsky toys that have been created by Redditors. Oh, that's, that's great. That's really great. Cool. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of those really fun ones are from Reddit, like the tot in a pot. <laughs> that's really funny. That's fucked up. I hate, so I'm, I'm angry now. <laughs> But a lot of a lot of them are from uh, different iterations of like Dungeons and Dragons things, so like various creepy toys throughout yeah. history, yeah. D and D history. So we've been revealed the dolls, huh? We've been yes. revealed the dolls. You stare in and you see the likeness. At least twenty to thirty likenesses of Irina staring back at you. These are a little more boring, but, you know, they get the job done. They're toys. Professor. Yes? Please tell me. Please do not tell me you are most intrigued by the boring dolls. Yes, yes, we are. Can you tell me a bit about their construction? Well, they are made with what I can find around here. Like most dolls, I spend a little more time on them because if I don't, I get yelled at. And, you know, they're just very boring. You get yelled at by who? The man who has to make them for him, why? And who is that? He's just the local man around town. I suggest you start talking. I suggest you get out of my shop if you're going to be rude. No, 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 we, no, we, we don't need to be rude. It's just... Where did do you get the inspiration for the faces of these dolls? They're quite beautiful. I just, I need to make them once a month, and then everything is all will be well. All will be well. And why do you care so much about these dolls? I was just curious that a grown man would have such a need for so many dolls. Do you know what he does with them? I don't know. It's none of my business. <laughs> and a new one every month. Do they do anything particularly interesting? No, that's why I'm surprised you care most about these. They are literally just dolls. It's not like any of these fun toys. Well... He certainly sounds like an interesting man. Can I... Can I inside check this here? Yeah. Is that cocked? Me. It's cocked. Oh, that's better. Um, Should have asked me whether it was cocked. <laughs> <laughs> it was already pretty good. Uh, so, uh, insight, insight, insight. I like Dusty Shepherd impression. Twenty-two. <laughs> uh, yeah, he seems to be completely honest. He's really confused as to why you care about these dolls instead of the more interesting toys that he's shown you. Um, and he seems to be uncomfortable answering questions about the person who. So do you sell these dolls? I I make extras, so like I would sell some of these, but you could not have them all. Though it does disappoint me quite a bit that you're not more interested in the hearse. How much for one of those? Three gold pieces. Professor. I'll take one. Okay. You can pick one. Are they all different? They're all roughly the same. They're just wearing different dresses. And you notice that, like, as you go through them, um, the faces are more and more close. Like, from the top to the bottom, it seems like the faces are uh, slowly getting better over time. It's like he's, like, mastering the structure of the face. Um, of course. Well, uh, here you go. Uh, I'll start through the payment, and I'll do my little business. Uh, and I'll cast suggestion on him. Yep. Um, well, <laughs> here you are, here's your payment, and you simply must tell me everything there is to tell about these dolls hold nothing back. 
<laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm so excited that you are a patron of my shop. Oh, this is... Um, I've been making these dolls for quite a while now um, at um, order of Isaac Strasny. He's the strange man that works for the Burgomaster. He told me exactly how to make them, and every time I'd get it wrong, he'd yell at me until my face got better. I don't know why he wants this face. I just know that he wants these dolls, so I make them. It's very disappointing to me that he doesn't want one of these very inter interesting toys here because they are much better than this dumb doll with his dumb face. Well, I understand your pain, uh, although the face is very beautiful. So you said his name was Isaac Strozny? Strozny, yes. Strozny, all right. Um, and he works for the Burgomaster. What does he do for the Burgomaster? He's like, uh, what, how do you call a henchman? He's like the muscle. He's one of the men that strings up anyone who is caught being unfun in town. Unfun? Yes. So he is working... Is it really the Burgomaster that wants these dogs? I have no idea. As far as I know, it is Isaac. He comes in sneaky-like every month, and as long as I make sure he has a doll, he doesn't rough me up. How big is this guy? He's pretty big. Not big enough, Shepard. That's what I'm thinking. Sorry, right. Well, um, do you happen to know where he lives? I eat has a room in the Burgomaster's mansion. And is the Burgomaster also known as the Baron? Yes. I see. Um, well, friend, thank you so much for these dolls. Would you like to buy any more of my toys? No, we've already given you 20 gold at this point. I know. It's That's been quite a bit of gold. great yes. for me. It'll feed you so Please, much. make sure you let everyone know it's no fun, it's no Blinsky. You found toys at my shop and I do commissions. Yours will be ready in about a week. I will come back, and I hope it is a in flame. Yes, come back with more coin, and I sell you lots more things if you would like me to. All right, good day, sir. You've made me very happy. Have a lovely day. I'll turn and I will leave. You I'll as well, the thank professor. you. I'll turn and I'll be as I'm leaving. I'm just going through each of the things that we got. I'm just looking at it physically. Fascinated with the the, the clockwork. You do that. Well, that is an absolute nightmare. I, I I just don't understand what it is about this place. Why 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 have toys designed after hags and children? I don't I don't understand it. This whole world is a nightmare. And I think more and more it is almost literal. I believe you're right, Sonax. I wonder. I think at some point we need to speak with Irina. See if she knows about the existence of these dolls. See if she knows anything about this Isaac, about the Baron, she's never left Barovia village. The how this this seems entirely unlikely. Uh, while I'm in full agreement, and, and I couldn't cannot stress that enough, it doesn't seem like it's going to end or stop or go anywhere anytime soon. More importantly, there's a man back at our inn that we need to speak to. I agree, and I don't want to put that on your shoulders until we know more about it. Agreed. That's fair. Is there any way we can hurry back to the inn? Lead the way. I'll put the doll in my case. Okay. You make your way back to the inn, and you are just going in through the main, the main room. You walk into the main tavern area, and it is once again just the same woman uh, cleaning up behind the bar as you enter. She waves kindly at all of you as she continues to dry out um, some of the uh, cups that she's been washing. Ask her. Ask her. If, if he's here. You can ask her too, but I guess I will. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, miss. Uh, yeah, yes? Um, 
Do you happen to know of a uh, comical man? Oh, who's there yes, here? Rictavio. Yes, we just we were just uh, we were about to tell him we heard lovely things. Oh, he's quite entertaining. Um, we are we are very uh, charmed by carnivals in general, and we'd love to just chat with him. He's oh, staying here. He is. Uh, he won't be back until the evening, though. He is out most of the day. He left early this morning. Oh well. Um, we'll have to catch him later. Do you know where he goes? Is there a chance? Chance? No, not rightfully so. I, I, I believe that he checks. He checks on his carnival wagon um, that's stationed in town. Um, but he's quizzical. He, he likes to learn things. I know he, he visits a lot of people and um, asks a lot of questions and performs magic. Uh, sounds like our professor. So he is a man of arcane skill. Well, I'm not sure if they're tricks or actual magic. It's interesting, nonetheless. And where is his wagon, Mattel? His wagon, I believe, that it's stationed. Is it still totally empty, by the way? Yep. So it's, it's been empty, like, every single time we've seen you it. Didn't go, drunk. You didn't go into the area before you went to bed last right. night. But, right. But when we woke up, there were, like, a, what, a couple of drunks. Yeah, a couple of drunks. about it. Um, you know that it, she tells you that it's stationed at, um, Arisek Stockyard, actually. Ar- Ar- Arisek? Arisek? Yes, it's, um, it's a small family-owned stockyard, but, um, I believe that the, I've, I've seen the carnival wagon when I've walked by. How far is that from here? It is, let me show you on the map. It is... Very close to where you came in. From, like, into... Actually, by the East Gate, yes. yes. All right, well, thank you. I look forward very much to meeting this man. Yeah, I'm sure he would be happy to meet you as well. I hope that you're finding your stay in the lock. He is... Comfortable and happy? Are you excited about the festival, or... I'm interested in... Well, I would offer you a drink, but... But... N- no. Don't you worry, you're going to die. Please, is there something wrong? Something we could help with? Well, nothing you can help with, I'm sure. But my husband isn't going to want to talk about it. If, if you had the pleasure of meeting Erwin... I don't think we have. Oh, well. He'll be around this evening. I'm sure he would love to meet you all. We, our stock of wine has been running low. The shipment from the winery hasn't come in, and that word from Barovia, the village of Barovia, of course, that theirs has not arrived yet either, and I'm sure you're having a wonderful time in town, of course, all will be well, but without wine, the townsfolk tend to be in dire straits, and we're running on our last day. So I would offer you some, but I, I really should keep it for this evening. Well, that's quite all right. Certainly understand. Okay. Will there be unrest? And what was it? Malicious unhappiness? I, I couldn't begin to imagine. If there were to be no wine at the festival. Oh. Let's not think about that. Hopefully Erwin will... Have figured out what's going on with the shipment from the winery. This has never happened before, so I'm sure that there's a simple reason as to why, and he will he will resolve it. Of course, and as we all know, all will be well, of course. All will right? be well, and she smiles at you, and you can tell that the smile is forced. But the festival should be quite fun. So. I'm, I'm sorry, did I get your names? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Uh, I apologize. Ma'am, my, my name is Shepard. It's lovely to meet you, Danica. I believe we met, but my name is Professor Clayton Asman. Lovely, and my head has not been... If it if it weren't attached to my neck, I would have lost her. Victoria, Lovely to meet you. Sarnax of the Edelwood, is it a common practice of your people to get lost in temporary distractions from the misery that surrounds you constantly. 
<laughs> uh, well, forward, I see. Um, yes. Yes, it is. I mean, the wine helps quite a bit. Do you know what dream pastries are? I've not heard of them myself. Very well. Good day, madam. Good day, then. She seems kind of taken aback as if she hadn't expected for you to leave. We will be back this evening to meet your husband oh. and maybe meet this carnival man. That would be wonderful. If I see Richavia before then, I'll let him know you're on the lookout for him. Absolutely. Thank you. Of course. Um, are we leaving? Yeah. Uh, as we as we leave, I'll just lean toward the professor in the group and say, uh, if, if we wanted to, we could always leave him a note at his card. Well, you read my mind. Maybe not leave him a note, but at least take a look around his card. Uh, Learn what we can uh, before he knows that we're looking for him. All right. I, I just assume since we have a uh, date, if you will, uh, he may not be awake when we get back. And we can let him know we're looking for him, or he could come find us. But I, I get, I understand where you're coming from. Yes, Professor. before we leave a note, let us do some investigation Sir, of the cart. Whatever he says. Subtly as we can. For what is archaeology but learning about people's lives through their possessions? Poignant. So do we go there first, or do we meet with Irina? I do not think there is any rush to inform her of this sinister machination. Right. Seconded. She's not going anywhere. And the, the more we find out first, the better. And let us proceed to the Arak Stockyard. Arasek. A R A S E K. Is that from June? Arasek. Arrakis. 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 The planet. What is it? A R A A R A S E K. Oh, I spelled it horribly wrong. Wow. Let's go. Yeah, God, Rich. A R A what? Sorry. A R A S E K. Arasek. And then just because you asked, it's Isaac Strozny. I Z E K. Oh. So like the. Isaac. Or is it Isaac? Isaac. It's probably just the Eastern European spelling of Isaac, maybe. And then Strozny. S T R A Z N I. You make your way back towards the gate that you entered into the town of Velaki from the east gate. As you come upon the stockyard, this large stockyard has several lock sheds along its periphery and lies adjacent to a roomy warehouse. A wooden sign above the front gate reads, RSX Stockyard. Parked at the south end of the stockyard is a sturdy carnival wagon. It's colorful paint peeling off. Faded lettering on its side spell out the words Rictavio's Carnival of Wonders. A heavy padlock secures the back door. Is anyone around? Roll a perception check. Good. Uh, I need a tablet, so I just saw it. Um, think about it, that's soon enough. Yeah, me too. I uh, could not survive that way. I had 23. 23. You look around and you can see that there there is a, what appears to be an, old, an elderly couple inside of the storehouse. It appears to be a function as a general store. Um, and they're milling about, talking to each other. They seem to be... Um, it, he looks like the, the elderly gentleman looks to be flirting with the elderly woman, and she smacks his hand as he pinches her rear, but she giggles and is happy as he chases her around. They don't believe anyone's watching. Um, Little did they know. But, <laughs> but out of the yes. <laughs> Mike! Here come the murder elbows. <laughs> Jesus, my Yorks. You're so gross. Yorks. And with that hood on, it's so much worse. <laughs> what do you think? Why, why, why? Jesus. Uh, as, as opposed to outside in the stockyard, you don't see anybody at all. And your your guess is that they're so wrapped up in, you know, what they're doing inside um, that they they wouldn't notice you. Act nonchalant. Please, provide me some cover. Uh, I do not know. I, I look at Sarnax, and I look like 
and I do this, and I go, uh, uh, sure, Professor, whatever you want. And I step a couple steps away from the the cart and kind of stand guard. Are you uh, familiar with breaking and entering, Professor? Like I just said, I'm an archaeologist. That is exactly what I do. I'll leave you to <laughs> And I'll go and drink <laughs> Shepard. Uh, I will sort of like look around and uh, it, once I'm kind of sure that no one's looking, I'll say, Curio, my case will open up and I'll pull out a very fine set of thief tools. And I would like to, uh, as gently and gingerly as I can, unlock it. Do I get the sense that I can close it and lock it? Like, once I'm unlo- like looking at it, can I investigate it and see if I, once I unlock it, will I just be able to shut it and it'll, like, automatically lock like most padlocks? Your experience with padlocks is that's generally how it works as long as you don't break the mechanism when you're unlocking it. You haven't gotten up to the wagon yet. Okay. So you haven't inspected this lock well enough to know whether it functions like all padlocks, but from the distance that you're at right now outside of the storehouse, you would guess that that's how it works. I would like to um, approach, just nonchalantly, like I'm just, you know, like we own the place. The wagon suddenly lurches, as though something big has thrown itself against the inside wall. You hear the cracking of wood, the scraping of metal, and the snarl of something inhuman. Upon closer inspection, you see that the sides of the wagon are spattered with dried blood. You also see an inscription on the wagon doorframe that reads, I bring you from shadow into light. Do we all hear this, or are we not close enough? All you're, I would assume you're all walking. Together. We're all, yeah. So I, I meant like you guys basically provide cover, like body block. Uh, yeah, I'm like five. Yeah. I was gonna say I'm like five feet. Yeah, exactly. But at most, exactly. I just didn't know. Okay, all right. So I want to make sure. Good God, sir. Uh, what was that? Is there some kind of beast inside? Hello. This is horrible. Where is the main? Can you? For this? Can you hear me? The wagon continues to lurch from side to side. You hear a low, strange, snarling sound. How recent does, does the blood look? It's dried. Uh, it's hard to really tell, but I would say um, fairly recentish, at least over the last few days. Perhaps some circus animal? A carnival beast? Well, he did have a monkey. Perhaps it is another exotic creature. Why would he trade his monkey for toys? I would like to listen to the sounds that are coming from inside this wagon crate and, and see if I, I recognize the noise of, as anything I've ever heard of before. Roll a, roll a survival check. Ain't gonna be good. Uh, nine. You you listen, and it's not a sound of anything you've ever heard before, but it does remind you of the sound of wild animals. Uh, um, are there any like air holes, or is, are there any like ways to look into the wagon? Not that you can see. I'll turn to the group. Um, should we unlock it and take a look? You're joking, right? I mean, this man is, is, is in the cart. He's clearly important, and without knowing what's in this wagon, I, I don't feel comfortable dealing with him. And if it's some, which I'm pretty sure of, wild animal, and it starts to rampage, we're gonna have to put it down? No, we'll just subdue it and place it back in the wagon. Professor, come on. I don't know what's in there. That could be anything. Is it just the one entrance to the wagon? Is, mm-hmm. it, like, is it like a door? Yeah, there's like, it's a your typical carnival wagon where it's um, that barrel top and then on the back it's got a door um, with, you can see where there's a spot where you could pull wooden steps. You can step up to it. And there's a big padlock right there on the door. We are not itching for fight, and we are not looking to murder somebody's property. Uh, was, someone just said crossbleed audio. Crossbleed audio? What does that mean? You might be doing that weird echoey Probably thing. Probably echo. There shouldn't, there shouldn't be an echo, but hold Is on. Is it still happening? Why don't, let's Let just take a, like a two-minute break here, and I will investigate. 
Um, thank you for letting us know. Oh, so uh, Fakaga Murgle said so- sounds fine to me. Oh, hold on. So it's fine now. It's fine but... now. So it just happened randomly. It does huh. happen. Just, just talk a little bit. Hello. Check, check, check. We're talking. We're talking. For producer Ray. Why would he sell his monkey for some toys? Uh, no joke. That that's was a, so funny. That's a very serious <laughs> question I have. Why? I, I mean, I like. Could you imagine trading Jack for some toys? Right? Like, why? No, but. It's weird. I mean, yeah. I... This place is Jack. fucking weird! Child. I don't know how that guy feels about it. We'll burn it to the ground. I mean, the monkey was well-trained. It was, like, hanging out. It seemed friendly. Like, that's not just it a... It had a creepy monkey mask. Maybe the mask freaked him out. What? So, I just want to make sure I understand where you're coming from here. You assume that the circus man found the monkey with the mask already on it? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, just as long as we're all on the same page here. I'm not going to be an that You're ruling out Making the, assumptions. You're ruling out the, the idea that maybe the, the creepy toy right. maker put the mask on the monkey. Well, maybe the monkey Barovian the monkeys because come because with masks. With mask. This this just in, everyone. Barovian monkeys come with masks. All I'm saying is if, if Jack took it upon himself to just put a mask on one day, I'd probably sell him too. Because that's fucking freak. Like, I don't like that. I'm not into that. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that I have that statement or you know. You are gonna papers. you're gonna come home at some point and Andy will have put a mask on Jack and he'll be sitting there wearing a mask. Gosh darn porcelain dog mask on my dog. Porcelain dog mask. I'm out. <laughs> All right. I'm out. All right. As long as I can date that as an actual uh, part of the deposition for our divorce proceedings, <laughs> and I can get custody of Jack, that's fine. Video. It's on video. It's on video. Thank you. I'm going to call every single one. My, my attorney will be in touch. <laughs> I am mask averse. I'm not. You, know. yeah, you ain't about that. All right. I ain't about that mask. It's out of All right. So, what's going on? What are you doing? We are trying to convince the professor not to do something so foolish for someone who has goddamn near 20 in. Well, I don't believe it's foolish to at least try to get a better sense of what's in there. Is, is it to... What, so do, do I get a sense from like my knowledge of like in... in Erios and all of that. Do I get the sense of like what kind of beast it might be? Does it sound like avian? Does it yeah. sound it, reptilian? Does it sound mammalian? It sounds it's mammalian. Uh, look, Professor, we, we want to meet with this man, right? We, we don't want to be slaughtering his... I'm not suggesting we kill anything, but if he has a beast locked up and we know that, know that it's not what it seems... And I just, I worry that there's important information here that we're leaving behind. Why don't we speak to the man himself? Are you worried he's going to lie to us? Yes. Are you worried that it's not something that Sarnax and I might not be able to squeeze out of him? Well, if we're going to uh, uh, accost him and use magic to force him to tell him the truth, what's the difference between that and taking a look? Because at least by addressing him as an individual and a human for a person first, he might be forthcoming. At least we give him the opportunity. That's a fair point. I, however, am cautious about approaching anyone in good faith that keeps a creature like this locked up in his own possessions. Well, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but we don't even know what it is. And if the professor opens this thing up, and, it, and it's some creature that means to kill us, we have no choice but to kill it. And that's just, in my opinion, getting off on the wrong foot. All right. Well, All right. allow me to attempt something. Well, what is it before you do it? I look very skeptically at the professor and Sarnax. <laughs> Don't do anything until you confirm what it is. What do you have in mind? I am going to attempt to touch the emotions of whatever lie inside. It is mammalian, and it likely will not work. But I believe if I can calm it down, it might be safer to investigate. I'll look into the lantern. I'll 
my eyes will blaze and I'll just say very quietly, find comfort in your faith. And I'm going to cast Calm Emotions. Okay. Uh, so I attempt to express strong emotions uh, in a group of people. So each humanoid, uh, well, that's all of you too, uh, in a 20 foot uh, radius sphere um, must make a charisma saving throw. A creature can choose to save if it wishes, uh, to, to fail the save if it wishes. Um, but it's only human. It's only humanoids. So wait, 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 wait. We can choose to fail what happens if we fail. Um, oh, that's a good idea. I should probably... Because my charisma is really low anyway. Um, you can suppress any effect causing the target creature to be charmed or frightened. When the spell ends, um, any suppressed effect resumes, provided that its duration has not expired in the meantime. So if I choose to fail... Uh, in, alternatively, you can make the target indifferent about creatures of your choice that it is hostile toward. This indifference okay. ends if the target is attacked or harmed by a spell. I so I would to try to make it calm about indifferent towards us and humans. I, ch- I choose to fail because it's not going to have any effect on me if I'm not, like, amped up and... Well, shit, I might be amped. I choose to fail. <laughs> <laughs> I choose to fail. Yeah. You feel a calmness come over you that feeling in the pit of your stomach of disgust and rage about this place ebbs away and you feel indifferent. What was the saving thing? Charisma. Uh, charisma. Oh, it's a DC uh, 16. I failed. I failed. Well. <laughs> I love that. It's charisma and you're like, I failed. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, that's a fail. Mm-hmm. Which sucks, because I have plus six to charisma. Yeah, <laughs> you see as the lurching of the, um, of the wagon comes to a stop Ooh. and all seems to be quiet. Uh, uh, Sarnax, whatever you did, uh, seems all right. It is a person in there. What? Wait, like a human being? Like, like, well... A humanoid creature, yes. It would not have worked if it was an animal. Sarnax, you never cease to amaze me. After you, Professor. What could be in there? Uh, I assume we don't have too much time now. Can you understand what we are saying? You get no response. One minute, I suggest you hurry. Oh, right, so right. almost like a low breathing sound, but nothing. Just uh, make sure we can relock that if we need. Perhaps another language. We could try. Just, just get the lock open first. I, 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 I and, and make sure we can uh, attempt to pick the lock. Okay, lock roll a dexterity check or whatever the picking thing is, because I don't know. Yeah. Like if you have proficiency with lock picking tools, you double your. You just add your proficiency, you add your proficiency instead of just dex. 27. Unlike Vanish. Oh, no, 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 27. 25. <laughs> You take your lockpicking tools and you slowly maneuver around the mechanisms, and with a with a quick click, the padlock drops down, and you would be able to open the door. Shepard, take the lead, please. Uh, you say so. Right, go ahead. This is your specialty, isn't it? Uh, sure. Well, whatever you say. I slowly open the door. But kind of backing away. You slowly so open the door um, as you start to back away, and quickly you feel pressure on the back of the door. Shepard, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Professor, professor, professor. Dex, open this. Dex saving throw, yeah. you say. Oh, good. Twelve? You feel as a huge weight hit rams into your chest. You fall over backwards. Two paws on your Uh chest. The rest of you see a saber-toothed cat as it pounces onto Shepard. It moves its maw in, its huge fangs so close to your face. As it sniffs in on you. It lumbers off of you, a low growl emanating from its throat. And it moves quickly around to Sarnax and begins to sniff around on you. And then to Victoria and to Clayton. And none of you, it seems to be enraged by 
I will say, um... Oh, easy, easy. Can I get up? Yeah. I will say... I'm um, very slowly. Prestigio, prestigio, and I want to make the smell of, like, of, of raw meat it's, emanate from its the Its head perks up for wagon. a moment, and it sniffs back towards the wagon. In the very back Roll of the wagon. Roll a deception check, please. Twenty, uh, twenty-one. Natural. You, um, I also got a natural twenty on this check. <laughs> my crystal may be higher. Um, actually, let me let me double check. Yeah, it and might no, matter. No, no, no it, it is uses, because it's, it uses insight though. Yeah, it uses and and it's and it's attack. So this might matter. Sarnax, I thought you said this thing was human. So this actually might matter. Yes. Easy, I, easy. I was mistaken. All right, let's just see if we can get you, it called. You see as it begins to start moving towards, and it sniffs and it looks. It rears its head up, and it lets out a snarl as it turns and darts straight into town. No! Damn it! Uh, 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 before it does that, before it does that... Uh, no, it's, it's doing that. Okay, as it does that, I will... Um, I will uh, cast slow on it. You're going to cast something on it? I'm casting slow. Okay. Oh, we have just fucked up the Yeah. Bad move. Bad move. Um, what does it have to make? Wisdom 16 saving throw. Well, I got a natural it, 16 uh, mm, plus one. It, so instead, it gets a, rolls a, uh, a nine. <laughs> <laughs> actually. 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 <laughs> it rolls a nine. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I made you like a pebble under his wall. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, that happens. Yeah, so it fails. Divination wizards, um, my friends. Okay, one action, 120 feet. Uh, if it was in a 40 foot cube of it. And I will say, um, you can roll a perception check for me, Sarnax. Oh, shit. Or not a percept. Yeah, I'll just. Either way, I fail. I got another natural one. Okay, then yeah, nothing. Nothing. Uh, I want to hear what the slow does before I make a move here, but I'm, I, I want to grab. I'm reaching for rope out of my pack. Uh, its speed is half. Okay. It takes a minor, minus two penalty to AC. Okay. Uh, and deck saving throws. It can't use reactions. On its turn, it can either use an action or a bonus action, not both. Uh, it can't make more than one melee or range attack on its turn. If the creature attempts to cast a spell uh, with casting, uh, it's, it's not a spell caster, so whatever. I want to yeah, I I s- see if I can like, lasso it. Like, after having seen oh this God, thing slow down, it, it, it slowly I those starts the to slow. Lasso it. it slowly starts to slow, and it, it rears its head back and lets out a roar, a slow roar, but it, it still continues to move towards, I would say... Yeah, uh, I want to run after it. 50 feet of rope, try to lasso the Yeah, bridge. try to lasso the... Only if you'll the, allow it. Uh, yeah, no, go for it. Well, I, I don't know. Attack, I guess right? an attack roll to see if you... I don't know just just a straight work. attack roll. What would that rule? Work, maybe yeah, sure, that. sure. As I see this, I'm gonna look at what happens and I'm gonna put a, a hand on uh, Shepard's shoulder Thank and you. say, May Garrix guide your hand, and I cast guidance. 1d4? Yeah. <sighs> Just a sh- no, no addition. I got a 9. Uh, hold on. That's my roll. That's all I got. No, no adding anything to it. A large or smaller creature with by a net is restrained. Um, well, I would say there, there's a difference between throwing a net on somebody, though, and, and like, it. actually last. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a net. I definitely Twisted. don't have a net. Twisted. Well, a net bon- lets you to add your proficiency bonus to any attack you make with it. So, I guess... I would say that's fine. I would allow you to add your proficiency bonus. So, profi- bonus. just proficiency bonus. Just proficiency. So, that becomes a 12, then. Okay, and that hits. <laughs> so, uh... There were straight. All right, easy now, easy. I pull back on this thing. I mean, it may be way stronger than me, but I'm trying. <laughs> you pull back on it, and it's it's rearing against you as it's clawing into the earth, but it's moving significantly slower than it expects it than it expects. I'm, I'm going to dig my heels in and pull and just try to like. And you begin to slide it backwards. Hey, I'm hey, hey, easy, make a, easy. a strength contest. Oh, my strength's garbage. Um, I'm at twelve. 
So for the first round, you're able to pull it back a, a few feet as it um, as it tries to resist you and move the opposite direction. Right, so do um, something! I got him! Um, I'm, I'm, so it's on. about ten feet closer to you. I need you to roll another. I'm going to to help to help him. Uh, another twelve. So roll at advantage. Oh, at advantage! I'm going to reach in and grab my my free hand. Oh, it's a twenty-one. All right, you slide him another ten feet closer. He's about uh, um, he's Shut about up. twenty feet away at this point. Shut up. Um, all right, roll again. Still at advantage? Yep. Uh, the first one was an 11, so 12. 24, so he is going to grip his feet in, and he is going to take off and essentially pounce forward. He's going to get 20 I would like to cast a spell magic on him. Okay. You do, and he continues to struggle. Damn it! <laughs> Uh, another 12. I'm just rolling 12s out the ass. 13. So he is once again going to pounce forward, and uh, he's now at 40... No, he's at 60 feet from you. So both you and Sarnax have been drugged, drugged yeah. forward 10 feet. Yes, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. I would like to run after them and... Well, so he, Again, his feet can still float. I know, that's why he's only going 20 feet 16. instead of 40. 16. Huh? 16. Uh, 18. Fuck! Uh, it's a 4. So you're able to pull him back another 10 feet as he is um, struggling against you. So what I would like to do after this initial, we finally gain some slack, I'm going to wrap it around my arm so if he wins the strength contest, I won't lose slack. I'm just going to go with him. You're pulling for him. I'm not, I'm not going to let slack out. I'm, okay. I'm trying to reel this mofo in. All right, again. Uh, yeah, so what do we do? I, I, uh, 19. All right, another, you're able to pull him forward another 10 feet. He's now uh, 40 feet away from you. I would like to... 10. 20. Fuck! So you're going to lurch forward 20 feet as he's able to... Is, is he ever looking back? Professor Cotton, no, please! No, he is trying I'll, to get I'll away. I'm going to the rope and just try to help him. We already have advantage. So I'll say with a third person, you are able to outmaneuver the strength of this cat, and you're able to pull him in. As you get to him about 10 feet from you, you notice that he is beginning to turn and draw his attention towards you, seeing that his um, line of escape is diminishing. Uh, uh, there, settle down! Easy, easy, uh, come on! I will. I mean, I don't. I don't have anything else to, to, to cast on. I've got fucking nothing. So I will uh, instead. Wait, do I? I'm gonna raise up my hand and and cast. Um, just kind of move the shadow of my hand across his eyes and cast uh, blindness. Okay. How does that work? Uh, I can blind or deafen a foe. Um, has to make a constitution saving throw. If it fails, the target is either blinded or definite by choice for the duration. At the end of each of its turn, target can make a con saving throw. Oh. Eight. Okay. He is blind. Um, after she's casted her spell, what I want to do is use Hunter's Sense. Okay. As an action, I choose one creature I can see within 60 feet. I immediately learn whether the creature has any damage immunities, resistance, or vulnerabilities, and what they are if the creature is not hidden from divination magic. I can use this feature three times per long rest. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, you see as the, the eyes on this creature go blind, as it lashes against the rope, it is now flailing around frantically, unable to discern its surroundings. You channel your innate ability with um, with nature and wildlife, and you focus in on this creature, and you see that it does not seem to have any damage, immunities, or resistances, and it is simply a saber-toothed tiger. Fuck. Uh, I would... So it's blind, probably enraged. And tied up. Um, how big is it compared to us? It's it's it a, large a large beast. I'm just going to step forward and, says, and say, Do not scare me, beast. Like I said, find comfort and calmness in the faith of Garrix the Fire Lord. And I'm going to step forward and I'm going to try to like sound as calming as I can. As I'm going to try to walk forward and put my hand on it. What face. have we done? This is a nightmare. Not a not an A plus move in our part. <laughs> you it is lashing around. I can hear your voice. Um, 
it can hear your voice, but it is it is tied up and now blind as it lashes around and it is I'm going to say make it's going to make an attack roll against you um, at disadvantage. Twelve to hit Blast. as it attempts yeah. to bite 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 into your hand. Calm beast. Calm beast. You're doing this and there it is not calming itself down. It is it is in an absolute frenzy as it as it uh, rides against the rope. So if the three of us are able to outstrike you're, you're holding the rope, but you you don't have your arms around. No, this totally, totally. Piece. Um, but but it's not it's not. It's not able us to anymore. pull. Forward. Um, I would. Uh, uh, I will. I mean, she's not here, but I was gonna say, Connor should like wrestle. I would say that you could utilize her to help you. Yeah, I want to try to wrangle it back. In lieu of, of, she, she in is, lieu of, uh, I will cast claim. hideous laughter on her. Okay. While he does that, I want to run into the cart. And how does that work? Uh, it's a it's a, it's a uh, wisdom throw. Yeah, wisdom saving throw. Okay. And doesn't it have? Isn't there an int? Yes. Okay. Four? It has a negative four to the int. It's got a three int. Oh. It's just three. Yeah. So it doesn't work. So it does nothing. And slow is good. So what I'm going to do is shout to Kana and to the professor and to Sarnax and basically say that we need as, to wrestle it towards the As curtain. you attempt to cast hideous laughter on this creature, unaware of the intelligence of a saber-toothed tiger, the slow surrounding this this being is dropped and it immediately lunges forward and it begins to bolt. It is now blindly running from you. I'm going to have to make one more strength to see if you can hold on at advantage. 17. Nine. You're able to hold on it. You lurch forward. It's you, Sarnex, and Kana all holding on to this. Um, But you feel like you have a limited amount of time before it's able to make its make its escape. This is so fucking bad. Uh, uh, Knock it out, and I'm gonna summon uh, fucking what you call it. Um, thank you, Alexia, oh, thank for the you move, so for much the for the follow. follow. Thank you, thank you. And uh, is there some over the moon? Over the moon. Uh, I'm gonna cast web. Oh. Okay. As I'm going to, yeah, let's go uh, right twenty feet, basically around it, twenty foot cube, so centered on it, um, all over the floor. Um, and I'm going to try to run around as if it gets restrained. I'm going to sprint and try to run around it and stand in front of it with my shield. And what is the... How does it work? It's a dex save. It's a dex save. A dex save. <laughs> I will say, this determines whether it gets away. So it either gets hit by the web, or it's going to wrench the rope away and, and sprint. What's your... Uh, use my last thing, so I can't... Yeah, you did. Uh, no 16. I got a 14. Hey! So it is no fucking way. Restrained. I rolled a natural 12 plus 2. Uh, by webs. Oh, hell yeah. And so we have, um... Tie it up! Hurry! So then do something! I'll, so then what I'll do is run up with the slack of the rope that's around its neck. I'll begin to try to bind its its paws, front paws. I'm gonna help. Paws. I'm gonna try to help. With Kana and Sarnax, your Eva, it takes you about ten minutes, but you're able to do this. As this creature is flailing against the ropes and the web, and it's growling and snarling at you. You, I will say, look up, and uh, the two, the elderly couple that runs this place, is very very unperceptive as they don't <laughs> notice that this is happening in their in their uh, stockyard. Once we get the creature bound and we're, we're confident that it's secure. You bound it, you're even able to, for um, all intents and purposes, muzzle okay. uh, this creature. We're gonna, I'm gonna have Sarnax and Kana basically help me like drag the creature back to the cart and try to put it in there, assuming that uh, you have emerged from the, uh, the wagon. Not dead, yeah. Oh, you you went to the wagon? Yes, yeah. oh, sorry, I ran I into the wagon. That. Oh, sorry, yeah. So you run into the wagon, and you notice that there is um, there is some loose straw and bedding where you can tell that this cat sleeps, uh, amidst a few you know other things here and there. Um, 
Let me see. I'm just going to make sure that you get everything. Yep. Um, you also notice in the pile what appears to be a colorfully dressed Vistani doll. Very strong likeness to Vistani. Jingling um, coins and bells, bright colors, flashy embroidery. As you look over the doll, you see that there is a... And this is absolutely excellent craftsmanship and work. Um, as you hold it up, you even can smell the smell of the Vistani camp. And you look along the hemline and right there is the tag. Is no fun. Is no Blinsky. Continuing to look through, uh, you check the front seat of the wagon. I need you to make a perception or investigation check. Perception is seven. Uh, you, you look around and it seems to be a spot where uh, Rich Javio can... Uh, can drive the wagon, manage the horses, but also is able to keep a close eye on the contents of the of the wagon itself, which seems to be mostly used for the storage of this very large cat. Got it. Uh, you, see, you see where there are blood spots on the inside um, and the remnants of what appears to be a large steak. Um, as you look through it, it appears to be wolf meat, just like mm. you had eaten with the Vistani and the previous night when you had dinner. Um, the common fare for this area, um, it looks like a very large wolf steak um, had been brought uh, fairly recently to the wagon and to this cat, and the blood stains along the side of the wagon seem to be where the stake itself bleeds into the wood and has been staining the outside. Got it. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm gonna pick up... Hmm. I'm gonna pick up the doll. <laughs> okay. I don't want to touch the doll. I don't know what to do here. I'm going to um, ask Elnator for some guiding help. Um, and... Oh, good call. Yes. Use your thing. I am. Um, so I am going to grasp my, my prayer beads with the clasped hands of Omitter at the bottom and, um, ask for the guidance of Omitter. Okay. Um, so that will point me, for one minute, that will point me in the direction of all secrets within 30 feet. You... Clasp the hands, and immediately you're drawn back towards the front seat of the wagon. As you look around, you see that there is a hidden compartment. As you move your hands, you are able to unclasp the latch that holds the compartment closed. And you find, be ready to write, an unlocked wooden coffer containing 50 electrum pieces bearing Strahd's profile and oh, six shit. gemstones, each worth about a hundred gold pieces. Holy crap. A small prayer book worth about fifty gold pieces, with a green leather cover and indecipherable notes in the margins. A healer's kit. Three wooden holy symbols inlaid with silver and in the shape of a sunburst, worth fifty gold pieces each. A silvered short sword, a hand crossbow inlaid with mother of pearl, worth 250 gold pieces. Jesus! A bundle of 20 silvered crossbow bolts, and a worn leather case with gold buckles, worth about 100 gold pieces, containing three sharpened wooden stakes, a sack of garlic, a jar of salt, this a box of holy wafers, six vials of holy water, a polished steel mirror, and a bone scroll tube with a silver stopper and chain, worth 25 gold pieces. As you open it and look inside, the tube contains a spell scroll of protection from fiends and a spell scroll of protection from undead. All right. Get it all? 
I got enough of what I need to know. <laughs> how did, Abby how to kill a vampire kit, LOL. Yeah. I read some vampire, vampire hunter stuff. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> And I, I can send you that longer list later if you need. Yeah, that's fine. Well, and you'll have to determine what you what you would take and what you would leave. Okay, if I'm not would. going to take anything with me just now. Um, I am going to just take a final scan. Does the doll produce any like glowing guidance? No, it seems to be just a doll, very well crafted doll. Okay, and, and no then secrets. just walking outside. As you walk outside, you see. Sarnax, Kana, and Shepard, they are essentially at <laughs> they are essentially at the um at the door now. You see a long um path in the dirt where they've been dragging this heavy body of the saber toothed cat as they look up at you, the cat um restrained in their arms um as they are about ready to load it into the wagon. Miss Victoria, please get out of the way. <laughs> My apologies. Please continue. No worries. The cat is glowing, right? No. Okay. We, we can't <laughs> no, leave this. in the cat. Well, we're no. not going to unrestrain it. We're leaving the thing. Yes, can't we, we, we can't leave these ropes. <gasps> Place him in the back of the wagon. As we're loading the wagon into the thing. I'm not cutting the ropes, Professor. Yes, you are. Arachne and I web in the whole inside of the thing. Chuck him in the web, please. Damn it! <laughs> and we, we, we put the we put the cat into the webbing and I'll all the rope. And I'll put I'll pull out my dagger and start like unbinding the cat. Dexterity saving throw, please. Me? Yep. Uh-oh. Nick, you do it. Okay, you you do this. He shoots the web in, you throw the cat in, you cut the bindings, and just as you finish with the last cut, the cat seems with a natural twenty to have resisted the web as it he's lunges forward. He's well, it doesn't matter okay. anyway, because Clayton has been watching this entire thing unfold as he rips you backwards and slams the door shut. Because you got one point more than he did anyway. Okay. So slam the door shut as it barrels against the inside. The entire wagon shakes back and forth. <laughs> Damn it, are you happy? I slam the, 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 the padlock shut. It's, it's almost like I told you that was going to happen. Like, I'm the divination wizard. I Damn drop, it! I drop webs. <sighs> Is it locked? To be fair, as soon as Sonic said, it is a humanoid, you're like, okay, get this padlock. <laughs> I will say, I apologize. roll an intelligence check. Or no, actually, all of you roll an animal handling check. Don't mind if I do. Eleven. Eight. Shit, roll. Five. Five. I'm not a ranger today. <laughs> uh, speak. Yeah, you have no idea. Why that seemed to work. <laughs> I apologize for being mistaken. It's it's Ooh. fine. This isn't anyone in particular's fault. We just gotta stop doing stupid shit. Actually, I I know that that was troublesome, but I, I found some very interesting things within that car. And I, I Wait, you did? Yes, I did. See, it was worthwhile. <laughs> what do you love? <laughs> You should never <laughs> name to be seen, <laughs> Professor. Clayton. I'm the angry chip. We gotta get to a police. Oh my god, I'll make you I'll make you one. Oh my. Professor, so, so inside, I found a, a doll, another of Blink's stories. Well, well, can we see it? No, I've left it in there. Yes, good, good. And this is why. What? We have. I. Frankly, I'm a little shaken from that trip to this toy store, and I'm not going to pick up anything that I don't have to that that man has created. We can't leave any evidence. Furthermore, Reasonable. what else I found inside of the cart, there was a hidden compartment with quite a lot of ammunition, both magical and physical. This man is a fighter. We need to find him. What kind of... What kind of ammunition? I rattle everything off that you said. Yes, you do. Oh, holy, holy wafers, a silver thing, and garlic! He, Do, he has seemed to take in the physical, the the religious, every aspect that he can. Does does that just immediately sound to me like this guy fucks with undead and like kill shit? Yes. Okay. This man is a holy warrior. He's a vampire, vampire hunter, as it were. Um, so I would know, like, this is a, what this was man. the the gold pieces had Strahd on them? What had the yes, electron. Um, electron. yes, fifty electron pieces being Strahd's profile. Why these electron? I I don't know. Twenty five gold pieces. Yeah. 
So what you're saying is that, you know, had we just had a reasonable conversation with this man, he might have just been okay with us, and now we've jeopardized it all. He but might we didn't, have. Because you need to leave right now. Can we, <laughs> can we get the fuck out of here? Hold on, hold on. No, wait, wait, wait. Precisely why I didn't take anything. I think we need this. This is valuable information. And I think that this points to that we can perhaps trust this man. So can we leave the man a note like we were originally suggested? Well, we must meet him. He can't know that we're here. And I'm Presidio, Presidio. <laughs> I'm like, I want to wipe off all of the evidence of a struggle. <laughs> in the dirt. For like a hundred feet. You're going to go like 80 feet like, out and just break over the tiger tracks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why we couldn't just leave him a note. If you're going to sit here and sweep up any evidence of things that I went down. I would say down. roll a sleight of hand to see how well you do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, you you clean up as a twelve would there, allow you to. There's do. nothing saying that after we don't have this meeting, which we still need to talk about, by the way, and I'm like brushing myself off, that we can't tell him to meet us at the end. Well, yes, but now we have the important context that he's a holy warrior and has a saber tooth cat. In his <laughs> <laughs> Can we leave him a goddamn note? He a no. We are not leaving him a note. He can't know we were here. Then how are we going to contact him? He's staying at the inn. He'll be back later this evening. We'll meet him at the inn. We are not leaving a note here. I'm sorry. <laughs> the whole thing with the goddamn tiger really set me off. <laughs> Can we please get out of here stealthily um, and quickly as possible? Yes. I, I proceed to walk. I just I widely. I'm walking. I make myself invisible. <laughs> <laughs> All emotions is very clearly worn off. <laughs> yeah. I have never liked cats. I don't actually do that. <laughs> you make your way out of the um, out of the the yards, the uh, stockyard. As you glance into the general store, you see that uh, the elderly couple still seems to be uh, completely entranced by each other. Um, they're um, they're laughing and playing a, a game of cards at the table. Um, <laughs> smiling up at each other with fondness. They uh, both apparently very hard of hearing. Um, <laughs> you make your way out of the stockyard. You are... You've just sent out your acceptance of dinner with Lady Walker. You are now looking around. The tavern itself seems to be bustling. Uh, significantly more people here than there had been before. Um, the lady, um, the lady of the tavern, is still behind the bar with the gentleman, who you imagine is more than likely her husband, or at the very least a suitor of sorts, a lover. A lover, as. Um, they talk in hushed voices, looking over the room, scanning. Occasionally their eyes dart up to the ravens in the rafters as they watch. It seems he's made his way home safely. Maybe he's found out what's happened to the wine supply. Couldn't hurt to find out, I suppose. Go on. Very well. Are, are we sure we want to send Sarnax to do this? I've already left. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. <laughs> I hope that's what he was getting at. I walk up and I'll, I'll approach. Are they like in the middle of an intimate moment that I can interrupt awkwardly? <laughs> Ears open. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're they're essentially face to face. He's got his arms around her there, talking to each other in hushed voices. Every time that she looks like she's frustrated or wants to snap at him, he leans down, kisses her, gives her a quick Excuse smile, and then me. continues. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to kiss Mike for a second. I was going to give you inspiration. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, we got to win this campaign somehow. <laughs> um. It seems as if your throat was not cut by highwaymen on your way back. <laughs> they immediately stopped talking, and he he tilts, or he had had his hand on her chin. His hand drops as they both turn um, in synchronization as they both look at you. 
I'm, I'm sorry. Honey, the, the, the new traveler's in town. And he looks down at you and you see his face almost hardened. Is there something you need, friend? I am simply stating my relief that you were not waylaid by a highwayman. And also am, would like to ask what the situation with the wine is. His eyes dart to his wife for a second and um, in shock. Talk about the wine. It, it came up in conversation. He looks back at you. I wouldn't recommend that you talk so openly about the situation with the wine. If the townsfolk catch word that it is running dry, it will not be a good day for anyone here in Galati. Yes, the common folk are indeed weak and helpless, especially when the uh, simple fleeting escapes from their uh, terrible reality are withdrawn. <laughs> Come on! Oh, Jesus! <laughs> She's trying so hard. She is trying so hard, Rich. Uh, oh, but not you guys. Get your shit. <laughs> dingle your dingles out. Okay, okay. Just dingle your dingles out. <laughs> Got a jingle. Their dingle. Simple escapes of their terrible existence withdrawn from them for even a single evening. Isn't that true? In not so many words. Yes, I, that, that is, is... Is there something I can do to assist you? I come from a land where the common folk are easily manipulated and guided to the appropriate responses. It would be a pleasure for myself and my companions to assist in whatever way we can. You see a look of... Skepticism on his face. Roll persuasion check. <laughs> Ooh! Can you Ooh. Roll? They roll. Ooh, tomorrow I'll get a 20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the skepticism on his face is bleeding as he continues to make, or attempts to make eye contact with you. You seem to be staring straight through him. Well, honestly, we. We could use some help. Um, we haven't received our latest shipment. And if you happen to be heading out of town, if you head through the West Gate, just past the Vistani camp, you'll find a crossroads that will lead you down to the Wizard of Wine's winery. If you wouldn't mind checking it out. I have heard word from Verovia that they also have not received their delivery and... We've got the festival in a few days. The last thing that this town needs is a lack of alcohol for another one of the Baron's festivals. Indeed, the opiates of the masses are critical <clears throat> for their shallow, empty lives. Yeah. <laughs> he just blinks at you. Well, so if you're on your way out of town... You want to check on that for their shallow, empty lives. I am not the leader of the expedition, but I have a feeling that we will find our way out there, perhaps even this evening, and we will keep an eye out for highwaymen. I'm not sure you'll run into many highwaymen, but I would keep an eye out for wolves. We will. We just ate wolves, in fact. It's in the stew, friend. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs> that was. I would that was even more to take care of all of our future uh, personal. I knew, personal I knew it was going to be painful, and that was even worse. <laughs> That's yeah, like, what's your charisma score? It's actually pretty good. It's 14. It's pretty good. That is pretty good. Yours is higher than mine. Oh, oh boy. He's very persuasive. What was the winery, the wandering wizard? Of wine? It, it is the. It's not the wandering. It's the wizard of wine. Wizard oh. of wine. I'll I'll arrive back to the table. Wizard of wine's winery. Uh, I'll, I'll sit back down at the table. Oh, boy, uh, that you definitely don't make it easy to RP and PC. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Well, uh, how'd it go there, buddy? It went swimmingly. What'd you find out? 
There I'm gonna is... look at the faces of the of the man and woman and just get a read. <laughs> they're, on they're, 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 like... they're they're both standing there going. <laughs> <laughs> As they turn life. back to each other and continue their conversation. There is a winery where the wine is coming from that seems to be waylaid likely by highwaymen. So the gentleman never made it to the winery, I guess. I did not ask. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I just assume if he wasn't able to give you some kind of answer about what's going on, then he never made it there himself. That seems to be my uh, assessment as well. I believe that, however... If the wine does not arrive, there will be mass panic in the streets, perhaps even violence. Is there, uh, is this something that we feel we actually have to look into? Well, if the professor feels inadequate to dine with a lady, I mean, perhaps smaller. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> Indeed. I, I certainly don't want uh, mass panic. That's going to make our jobs a lot harder if everybody's rioting. Indeed. And if there is mass panic, then the agents of the Countess will slip around even easier than they normally would. Uh, so what do they ask? They said if we are in the direction out of camp towards the Vistani camp to keep an eye out. I believe that securing the wine shipment will be critical for the success of the festival in only three days. Don't you think that it would be a valuable service to the Baron that runs this town? It would be indeed. Perhaps we can see the audience once we have completed it. Uh, I would say so, but we got to make sure he's even aware of the shores in the first place. I'd like to think that that's the case, but so far... Nothing around here makes any sense. And we don't want to go around doing anybody favors. They don't realize they're getting favors. Four, if That's you know what I'm saying. Point. So you mean to say maybe we send a letter to him and let him know, hey, we will deal with this for you. If you think that's a wise course of action, I don't see a problem with it. But I'm just not the brains of this operation. What could we gain from this man? This baron. Well, what about his, uh... The dolls. Right-hand man. Exactly. Why should we know enough to write an educated letter to him and make a legitimate claim? Perhaps we... Hmm. Perhaps what we do is we, if we have the evening, we just go take a look. And we see what may be the issue. We may resolve it in the meantime. We may find out that the entire winery has been slaughtered by beasts or highwaymen, as Sonic says. <clears throat> At that point, we might just be able to deliver the bad news that there's nothing that can be done. And then watch the world descends into chaos around us. Well, at that point, what more can we do? <clears throat> I believe that there will be wine. Perhaps if we have to be the ones to ship it, so be it. Well, as, as much as I like the idea, Sarnax, we're not carrying crates up and through these woods with what we know's out there. That would be a death sentence. We'd be set upon by wolves almost immediately. Well, we will not know until we see what is available to us. True. But if we could secure some kind of cart and horses, then yeah, I don't see why not. Well, if we have to pass a Vistani camp, perhaps they will lend us something in a short term if we need it. Maybe. They refuse. It's their life. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you, Mr. Victoria. Well, this is a, I believe, is this, do we, this is a different Vistani camp, right? Yes. Perhaps one could accompany us and it would be very short term. We wouldn't just be buying it from them. Um, you are obviously speculating pretty hard here. At the very least, I like your idea of at least checking it out. It also stands to reason that whoever was shipping this wine in the first place must have had it on cards. Whoever has taken it, if that's what's happened, they must have 
how to cart themselves or run off with the other one. If we can find this wine, we may come upon the cart at the same time. That's certainly possible. Is it at least reasonable to send a letter to the Baron now requesting audience, assuming that we look into this problem? I think that's a fair exchange. We look into the issue, and hopefully he grants us audience. If we solve the problem, then maybe he hands over his man. Draft a letter. That sounds reasonable. Oh, please, that's not really my strong suit. Uh, Miss Victoria, do you mind? I suppose. How detailed do you want to be of this? Do not let him know where we found out the wine is missing, if it is hush hush. Just that we did. Oh my. Let him know it would be a shame if the festival were to arrive and there was no wine in Blocky. But we're happen, happy to see what we can do, provided uh, he's willing to grant us audience. Oh my. Uh, so I'll jot down a, a letter. It's come to our attention that um, wine has been going missing. We know that your important celebration is coming up soon. Um, and we would gladly look into this shortage uh, if you'd be willing to grant us all you have to do. Okay? And you're holding the letter up in the air for the ravens to take? Or? Take it! No. <laughs> Well, I've written this letter and I'm not actually sure that I know how to deliver it. The raven above seems to work directly for the walker house. Well, let's ask. Same way we delivered the, the last letter. Yes, you're right. Uh, Miss Donegal. Mm. Yes. Let me first apologize for our cloak friend. He's eccentric. But part of us are Yes. Um, I'm just I busy engaging in my shallow, meaningless life. Yes, I, I did overhear a bit of that, and I'm so sorry. The wine does indeed help. <laughs> anyway, um, I have another letter, and I was wondering if one of the ravens in, in this roost here work for the Burgermaster. None of them work for anybody, but if you had something you wanted to deliver to the Baron, I could have one of the birds send it yes. Okay, that would be wonderful. And so many pen pals, the people so new to the village, and she looks up and she makes that same strange noise and one of the ravens flies down and she looks at it almost as if she's communicating uh, without words and it reaches its hand out, grabs the letter and flies off. Thank you so much. We're simply okay. trying to make the most of our time for you. Lovely. Well, let me know if you need any other letters delivered and send one of the words to do it. Thank you. Very and um, another round of wine? Uh, none for me. Thank you. What time is it? I would say at this point it's probably getting close to five, almost six. Dusk oh, is one. starting to descend on the town. <clears throat> oh, I believe I'm on. All right, well, I'll be at the bar should you need me. And she makes her way over to the bar. It takes maybe 15 minutes. It's really quick before the raven arrives back and drops a letter at your, uh, a letter at your, uh, at your table. And you open it up and it's this beautifully elaborate gold filigreed uh, parchment. A big B on the very top. And all it says is, who are you? All will be well. The bear. Like a fuck <laughs> This is uh, not exactly the response that we were expecting, I suppose. Perhaps he will be more amenable to an audience once we have already returned with the wine. Yes. And it is at right about this point that the entire room bursts into a loud cheering. Everybody's attention to the door as it swings open, wind blowing in, and you see a finely dressed man, almost Vistani-esque, finely dressed in bright colors. His jacket is a beautiful shade of pinks and purples. His vest on the inside striped 
as he walks in with a flourish and he bows to everybody with flair. And he, you, you see as the, the gentleman behind the bar and Lady Danica both perk up and they smile and wave as he saunters over and exchanges a quick bit of conversation. He leans sideways on the bar and looks around and waves and nods and does finger guns at people. He seems to be really well received here. Um, you watch as Danica runs to the back and she comes back out with a brown paper satchel, uh, satchel and it seems to be moist with something as she hands it to him and tosses him an apple. He nods his head to her, tips his hat, and saunters back out of the inn. You notice a... Oh, you hear a little bit of talk around you. Oh, you know, and... He'll be back later. I, I can't imagine what story he's got for us tonight. He's, he's, he must have an amazing story tonight. I have no doubt last night his story was fantastic. Who is that? Oh, hello, friend. Hello, I overheard you. Uh, there was quite a, quite a commotion. Who, who was that man? The name is Radu. Nice to meet you. Oh, my name is Professor Clayton Azran. Nice to meet you. That was the carnival man, Rictavio. I see. I see. Every night he regales us in town with stories of a far off land. At this tavern? And of course, he stays here. He oh. should be back in maybe an hour, maybe two. Well, what do you think? Uh, perhaps we. Mm. Perhaps we wait. <laughs> Where Excuse else would you go, friend? There's no better place to be than the Blue Water Inn. No. And he raises his glass and chugs some wine. Do you happen to know what's up that staircase there? I believe it is the the private guest bedroom that, where Rictavio stays. And I believe it is the, the owners that they sleep up there. It is uh, separate from the guests, but that's just what my observations have told me. I don't spend nearly as much time here as uh, the Vokter brothers, Nikolai and Carl, over there. And he points to the two men that you've seen here all day, the drunkards from this morning. Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> and then Clayton says, Fuck! <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, oh, over there, them, those two, right there. Yes, they look a little scruffy, but they're both fairly nice. Ah, oh, I see. And how old uh, are they, roughly? Um, it's it's kind of hard to tell, but they're like mm, late twenties, early thirties. Once they get a little drink in them, they become a little less fun as they drool on themselves and ask for more wine. But if you catch them before the drink is fully set in, they're actually you know pretty nice. I come. I'll get, come back to the table. <sighs> I think I need to get out of town for a while. Why don't we go take a look at that vineyard? So, uh, sure, uh, if if you want. Uh, it is getting dark. We can travel. It's certainly going to be a little more treacherous than if we wait till first thing in the morning. Is everything all right? You seem a bit... Uh, yeah, you're, you're a little shaken. Uh, the two men that have been here all day... Oh, they have walked us. They walked us. Excuse me. Oh, no. You, you mean of the, of the mansion? Yes. They are presumably sons of this wealthy woman, Yala. To say they're not exactly what I would have expected. They're not more like, nice. <laughs> no, they're a pretty nice clothes. Oh, they are. You actually okay. take a look at them. Their outfits seem to be I'm perfectly sorry. tailored, and you just haven't paid much attention to them. Um, I heard they, drunks, and I just assumed they were, like, homeless drunks. <laughs> like, <laughs> and they, um, yeah, they, they seem to be fairly well-dressed. They're talking to each other. You occasionally see them laugh. One of them slams their hand down the table. They're both, um, they're both fairly tall, broad-shouldered, dark features, mid-length, uh, dark hair. Um, they look very similar to each other. It's hard to tell which one's the elder, which one's the younger. <laughs> If you absolutely have to get out of town tonight, we, we can go. And we might be making camp somewhere out in the woods. How about this? Could everyone please join me to the room? Of course. Uh, briefly. Yes, of course. 
We'll be right back. Who are you waving to? To the just like oh, don't clean up. We'll we'll, we'll be back. Oh, to to the no. to um. The she piece. she nods and I put a coaster on top of my <laughs> Um. So we get to the room. Here's the thing. I'm convinced this is. You get to the room. Yes. You walk into the room and you see in the corner of the room a rocking chair that had not been there before. Fuck. And rocking on it sits this. Fuck. No! Are you kidding me? Stop! Stop! I hate this Stop game! Me. I hate this! I don't want to play anymore! <laughs> Why? Fuck! <laughs> Nikki always tries to hand me the spoopy stuff, and I you, don't want you to sit here anymore. That oh, it, yes. oh, should I use yeah. your face? You, you notice <laughs> that it sits there. Its head is completely turned around the opposite way. Motherfucker. As if staring at the chair. So we can't see its face. No. Its head is completely turned around the wrong way. So you'll notice on that doll the head's on the back. Uh, oh yeah, look at this little feet. <clears throat> oh. That was not here when we left. Was it? Magic. No shit, Sarnax. I cast a tech magic. Okay. What do I do? I see anything? Yeah, you see transmutation and divination. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. Now, 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 everybody, just I'm saying this for my own sanity. Everybody, just calm down. Curio, and I shove it in my case. There's, there's, there's a tag! It. Check for a damn it tag! Pull it out. I, I don't want to touch it! And I take that, I take, I take, uh, you take one, of those one of my guns, and I, like, use the barrel, like, flip it over, and, like, try to see if I can find a tag it's on it. It's easily, you're easily able to find a tag that says, is no fun, is no Blinsky. I'll reach down and I'll pick it up. Careful, careful. I, I suggest we take, we... Because we got two options. Because I'm getting real damn tired of this shit. We take the doll back to Blinsky. We ask him who purchased the damn thing. Because he seems to know who buys every one of his horrible knickknacks. Or we stop fucking around. And we start cracking some skulls to get to the bottom of this shit. I have a plan. What is your plan, Professor? May you please give that to me and then I will tell you my plan. We are coming for you. And as you say that, you begin to hear the creaking as the rocking chair begins to move backwards and forwards. Backwards. And Is forwards. the rocking chair magical? Doesn't look to me. I would like to mage hand and extend the hand through to see if I can feel anything in the rocking chair. You feel around in the rocking chair and you feel nothing. As your hand begins to pull away. Thank you, Wanawan! Wanawan! And as your hand begins to pull away, you hear. <laughs> coming from the cabinet. The cabinet? Mm-hmm. The mage hand flies across the room and like f- throws the fucking door open. And I'm pointing my gun at the cabinet. The door swings open. There's nothing in there. Except for the noose, empty, that had been hanging around the doll of Morbid Molly's neck. Give me the doll, Sonax, please! One moment, and I'm gonna squeeze to see if I can feel anything inside. Feels soft. Crikey! I'm gonna cut it open. You and- cut it open. And as your blade hits fabric, you begin to see worms and bugs wiggle and worm and plop out onto the floor. Centipedes and spiders. A foul stench begins to to spill out of this of this doll as you hold it in your hand. Burn it! Just 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 burn it! Sorry, take care of it, man. Come on. Very well. And I'm going to ignite it. I'll have some flame lick out. And sacred flame, basically. Okay. You watch as the doll burns in front of you, the sizzling and popping sounds of the bugs as the heat causes them to to burst. And all that remains is a pile of ash where the doll had once been. Do I feel any more magic anywhere in the room? You do not. 
This place isn't safe. We're not safe anywhere. I believe this inn is almost manufactured to keep an eye on us. It, it, it is not... It is not right. That doorway, that, that staircase, that second staircase where they live, why would it be separate from the, the, the guest rooms? Look, I, I'm no innkeep, and I'm, I'm tired of trying to come up with rational reasoning for all of these hypothetical questions. So here is my suggestion. We need to learn more about what is going on in this inn. Hell, in the meantime, I'll sleep at a goddamn pew. Can we stay at the church? I agree. We, we will not stay here tonight. But perhaps we could learn more before we leave. Get to the bottom of this. How do you suggest we do that, Professor? With ravens watching our every move, with patrons, every inch of those tables and chairs. I could make one of us invisible. Oh. Just one. Just one. And I would elect you, Mr. Sh Mr. Morgan. I could make you invisible and you just, as stealthily as you can, perhaps sneak up those stairs and see if there's are there are any clues that these the 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 owner and her husband are even real or maybe are they are, are they in the employ of 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 the countess or are they are they un, un dead abominations i don't know all right so let's let's assume for a second that this works and, and now now might be an okay time because everybody's down yes. in, in the thing. And if, if I can get up there, I hopefully won't run into trouble. But let's say I do run into trouble. Then what? Y'all going to burst in and save my ass? Well, I, we could sit and then continue enjoying our drinks. And you give us a call, a signal, a sign. I mean, the sound of gunfire ought to draw, gun. draw you in. Shoot your gun if you need to. We can get there as quickly as we can. All right. And and please, I'm pardon the phrase, but I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Uh, let's say that, you know, we get into a tussle up there and I got to do what I got to do. What, what if this place is manufactured and we now have to deal with every patron in here? Are we willing to do that? Just burn this whole place to the ground? Because then there's no way we're not drawing the ire of the Burgermaster. And again, I'm not ending up in some stocks or being burned alive. God forbid. I don't believe the townsfolk themselves are guilty of anything. Not yet. Then what are you insinuating, Professor? What do you seek to learn? Isn't this powerful vampire hunter allegedly staying up those same stairs? As the owners. That's what I'm wondering. Is he really? Is he truly staying there? And maybe he doesn't know. Or maybe he knows and he's playing dumb. Or maybe the whole vampire hunter thing is just for show. To trick us. Alright. I'm here. Eager your employ. My number one goal is to get us out of here. If you think that this will answer some questions, I'll do it. But you're going to have to give me your thieves tools. Do you know how to use them? Eh, I'm not necessarily practiced in it, but, uh, you know, it won't be the first time I've ever tried to pick a lock. Here you are. I mean, are you, are you okay doing this? Does this sound crazy? Oh, it sounds absolutely insane, but it's nothing worse than we witnessed yesterday. Or earlier today with the saber-toothed tiger. How long do I have once you've, uh, you know, done your thing? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I may I may be able to do... I believe I've, I've just remembered something. I don't have any second-level spell spots left, so I must do it at a third level, which I believe I could send to. Um, blah, 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 sorry, just real quick. Invisibility. Yes. I could send two. One should not be me. How are you with your divine energy, Sarnax? I'm feeling very equipped. I did not exert 
as much energy against a beast as you did. I'm glad to hear that, Sarnax. Had it not been for my energy, the beast would be rampaging around the town right now. Which Let's I just keep that in mind. We're not judging anybody, all right? Let's just focus. I should be able to keep Shepard alive long enough for the rest of you to join us. That's right. I know this is dangerous. We just need an absolute backup, all everything goes to hell plan. Because Burn it not, down. And, and draw the ire of the entire town, city, whatever you want to call this hellhole. Can you send a message at all? Do you have any way to do that? Not today, I do not. <laughs> I can send a message. How so? Can they respond? What's the range? 120 feet. Do you need to be able to see them? I don't think so. Within range... Uh, you can cast it through solid objects if you're familiar with the target and know it is beyond the barrier. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, thin sheet of lead, three feet This of horrible, horrible plan is coming together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thank you, Lethlin. So then why don't we do this? You get a good vantage point down back where we were at our table. Get closer, a different table if you have to. Yes. Make up a story for while half the party's not there. And uh, Sarnax and I will take care of the rest. Will it cloak my lantern? Yes. Everything you're holding. But... If you cast a spell or make any kind of attack, the spell will end. Furtive movements, got it. You should be able to use those tools, though, while invisible, I believe. Yes. All right. If you're ready. I'm, I'm, I take off my poncho and, like, all of my extra shit. I leave my hat. Can you put this in your case? Yes. I don't trust it here in the room. I'll put it in my case. We should bring everything from the room. I mean, yes. if there's if there's room in there, I can throw my pack in there and whatnot. You open your case like like and you see morbid Molly hanging onto the side of your case, looking up at you. She Good. looks up to you. Hi. Did everyone else see that? <laughs> uh, I'm not so sure. I want to answer, Professor. Yes, I did. So, so... You hear a knocking coming from the inside of your case. So what you're telling me is that the spell, whatever you did to unmagic it, just didn't work. It worked for a time. I open it up just a crack. Stab me. You eye. see two red glowing eyes staring out at you. Do you want to play? I shot it. <laughs> Please go. <laughs> so with just my weapons and no extraneous cosplay bullshit on me, yeah. I am going slick, stealth, sleek, and I'm sticking with the lizard man. You hear like the jingle of my lantern. Sarnax, hey, listen, we gotta go quiet now. All right. Yes. Roll a um, a stealth check at advantage, please. Uh, Shepard, <laughs> please do not take this the wrong way, but so that we may not lose each other, I suggest we hold on to each other's tails. <laughs> Sarnax, you're an odd fellow, so I'm going to let that one slide. You tell no one about this. <laughs> and I just hand him my tail. <laughs> there will never be a soul besides you and I that know that this ever happened. Well, and if, if Stradania <laughs> If Stradania has her way, no one will know anyway, so it's fine. I'm blushing a little and covering my mouth with a kerchief. <laughs> you can only hear it too. You can't like see it. No, you can't see what's happening. <laughs> Let us proceed. It's like they don't they don't fully understand how invisibility works. So they don't really need to hear. <laughs> Double eights. I got a sixteen. Twist it. Oh. Twist it. Can I? Yes. Let's twist it. All right. This is the most critical roll we've had all night. Much better. I got an eighteen plus eight is twenty six. I got a seventeen. Oh. 
Okay. I'm gonna keep that as my lucky coin here. Yeah. You begin to make your way up the stairs to the great balcony. So just real quick, as so basically, I want we would all walk down together. How much time do we have? An hour. An hour, right? Oh, yeah. thank God. Yeah, okay. yeah it's an hour. Um, and then so just we would get settled and just make sure that our table has a vantage point mm-hmm. of the balcony. Uh, the table you were at before had a vantage point of both of the balconies. Okay, perfect. Um, so you you make your way down and you can at first still hear their footsteps as they make their way around. But as you join into the fray of the of the tavern area, the sound of drinking, clanking of tankards, the pouring of wine, and the hum of chatter drowns out any noise that they've been making. As you take your seats and Sarnax and Shepard as you make your way up the stairs towards the great balcony. Upon reaching the top, a wooden balcony stretches the full length of the tap room, enclosed by a wooden railing carved with raven motifs. The tap room's many lanterns illuminate the rafters and cast ominous shadows on the peak ceiling. So you are now along that balcony there. Um, without trying to make too much noise, let me get the other thing so we can get it on the map. We're going to get uh, the camera. I mean, we should be able to whisper to each other. How close? Well, I guess yeah, all you guys can do that. Uh, um, so there's a door right at the top of the steps. How, how looking down onto the first floor from up here, how, um, how many people seem to be paying attention to us? How conspicuous would it be if one of these doors the were door slightly adjusted? The door can be seen, but not very well. The Just light, the first one? Or? Both of them, if you're looking specifically for them, you can see them, but they're fairly shrouded in shadow. The lantern light seems to be relegated solely to the tap room, to the tavern area, and it's illuminating that area. So it's significantly darker here. If the door itself swung open and just stayed open, it might gain notice. But if it were to just creep open a little bit and then shut, it wouldn't be something you think people would really see. I'm going to whisper to Sarnax and say, uh, all right, I'm going to try these doors. One by one. If they're unlocked, we're gonna open it up. Go in close. Go in quickly and close the door behind us. Understood. Understood. Garrix, watch over you. Okay. So once I get a sense that they are upstairs, <laughs> I want to stand up in the tavern and say, "I hear the great Rectavio is staying in this very inn. Is that true?" Yeah. I hear he's a great man of many tales. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I heard he told quite the tale last night. Is that right? Hey, you heard he told the tale last night. Let me tell you I'm gonna tell you that tale. And you don't really know what he's under <sighs> what he's saying. This man is completely plastered. But the people around seem to understand this person well enough. Everybody cheers loudly. He stumbles over, trips onto your table a little bit. I'm tell the well, unfortunately, I arrived this morning, but I will give 25 gold pieces to the man who can retell that tale from last night to the best of his ability. Best tale is just 25 gold. He's gonna tell a tale. Who'd like to go first? And I want to try to, like, gather people. You see as he looks, like, super sad. As he looks at you, he's like, I just gotta tell him. You wanna tell him? Go on. You get the first crack at Everyone kind of quiets a little bit, and the man you'd originally talked to was like, He's literally said like five times that he's going to tell you the tale from last night. Oh, it's a bit of a hard one to stand him. Well, he's a drunkard. I don't know what to tell you. Well, take your time, and, and would everyone else like to come and listen again? Yeah! <laughs> and they all swarm. Aside from the two um, Walker brothers, they everyone else seems to um, mill about around your table. The, uh, the drunkard himself um, seeming a little affected by the fact that you were ignoring his outburst to tell you the story, collects himself. Well, I'll talk a little slower then and yeah, tell right. you the story. All right, well, go on. And I just sort of, as he's telling it, he I'm going to He was telling like, this tale in a far-off land. His wagon made it to- And so the story continues. And, and like, as in pauses, I want to like very- li- You know how like people try to like, match volume level? Yeah. I want to like active listen and be like, Oh, wow! Like, <laughs> and as you do so this- So everyone kind of people, reacts with well, me. Well, roll a performance check. Oh, fuck. <sighs> 
Fifteen. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, you. Most of these people are fairly tipsy by now, so they're they're loving this. This is probably the best moment that they've had all day. Your enthusiasm is infectious, and. Um, as you lean in, uh, Victoria, you lean in listening and occasionally you smile um, at this gentleman as he as he tells you the story and people are interjecting. Oh, no, no, that's, that's not right. He said this happened first. No, he said this happened first. And there it's almost like a communal storytelling. Right. And you see that the um, you see that the innkeeps awesome. are looking and there's a smile on their face. They seem to be enjoying the the overall tone and feel of the inn right now um, as they send over a round of free drinks and you know that that is quite a large thing considering the shortage of the wine but they're they're happy to perpetuate this ongoing joy um, and you do that clever we'll see what you make your way I try the first door you try the first door see the flocks. You, Jiggle the dingles of this first door. Um, you you attempt the you you attempt the handle, and this door appears to be locked. All right, I'm gonna try to pick it. What is guidance? One d four. Yep. All right. Which one is this? The first one. The first one. <clears throat> Just a straight death check, no proficiency, because I'm not proficient in these tools. Yep. Oh, natural 20, <laughs> yeah, which yeah. puts it at 31. Natural <laughs> fucking 20! Yeah. Sorry, Maya's absence. not here. So Thank you, Maya, Maya Thank for you, the Maya. natural 20. 28, right? Yes. Uh, no plus well, with the three a from D. the guides. Plus I, the five from your decks, right? I Oh, sorry, I thought it was a stealth check. I apologize. It is plus right. five, not plus three, so total but still, 28. Totally well, now it fails. Just making sure we get <laughs> You no, really needed a third one. Yeah, you're right on the cuff. Thank you for correcting me. 28 total. You hear a faint click, and, and it's hard to hear at first with the noise that's reverberating throughout this cavern, but you're able to tell that you were able to unlock it, and you slowly turn the handle and enter in. Still got it. As you look around, matching end tables flank a large wood-framed bed with a red silk canopy. Across from the bed hangs a tapestry depicting a beautiful mountain valley. The other walls are dominated by a fireplace and a wardrobe. All right, Sarnax, I, I, don't, I don't know how this magic works. I closed the door behind us. Uh, I don't know if using your lantern might, might break the uh, effect. I, I don't know. I think it will. We should just take our time. All right. Well, tales. not not too much time, and and just be aware of our surroundings. We gotta move. We got we got other rooms yes, to check out. We'll be very brief. So we're gonna start uh, investigating and, and trying to see if we roll an investigation check with advantage. Do you want to roll? Uh, uh, my investigation is plus two. Oh, mine's plus four. Okay. All right. I will help. I still have guidance. Uh, or is it for I, one roll? Well, so I would basically be like, oh. oh. Casting spells that includes cantrips drops your invisibility. Guidance was not a thing I did. I didn't roll guidance. There's you would have no known way. that. You, I yeah, I would, he, I would have did, known he that. did tell yeah, you, yeah, yeah. and you would have passed that check without the guidance. So. I didn't use the guidance. <laughs> yes, I'm not guidancing you. Holy shit. Uh, that'll be a 12 for investigation. <laughs> You look around the room, and it's it's quickly able to tell that this seems to be the bedchamber of Danica and um, Irwin. Yeah, Irwin. 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 Sorry, he's like Steve. Yeah, that's what I immediately thought. I was like, oh, I got that right. Uh, Danica and Irwin. As you you notice a small painting of the two of them on the bedside table, uh, you mill about, and there doesn't seem to be much in here. The thing that strikes your attention more than anything is the bed. It's finely it's finely crafted and the linens and things on it are beautifully made. But there's almost a pristineness to it, as if this bed has never been used. I just want to check under the bed. Roll another investigation check at advantage because Sarnish was helping. I don't like that. Uh, 20 total. You check under the bed and the floor seems to be normal. 
You look around, your eyes trail along the four posters of the bed, up into the wall and the ceiling, as you notice there is a almost completely concealed trap door in the very ceiling of this room. Sorry, do you see that? Oh, how that I look around at your prompting, yes, I do. You know we've got no choice, right? I know you. I'm going to... I have to climb onto the bed to get to this trapdoor. I'm going to go for it. Well, it sounds like there is an uproarious laughter and applause downstairs. Perhaps the rest of the others are are distracted. We may have time. All right. I'm going to climb up to the trapdoor and just give it a little tug and see if it'll move and wedge it, just wedge it. You poke at it with the barrel of one of... with judgment. And it doesn't give way at first, but as you continue to put force, it pops up a little bit and moves to the side. Some hay and dust begins to trickle down out of it, and it looks like some strange dark attic. I, I think if I, I think I think if I jump, I can probably get up there, and, and maybe I can pull you up after. What What do you think? I think that that is a splendid idea. All right, and I uh, I try to jump Acrobatics. up and see if I can and pull I myself wanna, up. Here, uh, use, I'll, I'll boost you with my shoulder. <laughs> Would that be advantage if he's helping? Mm-hmm. Uh, 13 for acrobatics. You jump onto the bed. A loud groan uh, fills the room as the wood settles in, not having bared weight in quite a while. It sinks beneath you, and you're not able to gain the leverage you need to grasp onto the onto the edges of the trapdoor. Alright, alright. One, one more try, Sarnas. Get, get up on here. One more. Get on the, yeah, get up on here, and I'll use your knee. I'll use your knee as a boost. Okay, there we go. Three, two, one. Uh, 18. You, Sarnax, this time you adjust your lantern in a way that you have a little bit more leverage, and as you find yourself on the bed, you bear down. Once again, a loud groan echoes throughout the room as the wood um, sinks beneath your weight, but you are able to time it appropriately as Sarnax helps to boost you upwards. You grab onto the edges of the trap door and you pull yourself up with all of your strength, and you're able to pull yourself into an attic. This 10-foot-wide, 30-foot-long attic has a ceiling that slants down towards the west, dropping from a height of 8 feet to a height of 5 feet. Four straw nests cover the floor, and a locked iron strongbox sits against the north wall. A small square opening in the south wall leads outside. Two trapdoors with iron hinges are set into the floor. And if you want to move that, you should be on... Oh, oh no! no. Oh, oh boy! Oh, there you go. Yep, that's it. Um, I'm going to poke my head back through the trap door and just say, "Uh, which which end is which end?" Ah, uh, whichever. There you go. That's probably for the best. Uh, I'll poke. I'll just poke my head back into the bedroom. Sarnax, uh, I, I can pull you up if if you want, but. There's just some some straw and and, and what looks like a lockbox. I, I can try to, to to make it quick. I, I will notice though that there it seems to be a, a, an entry. We can we can exit. So so maybe I should pull you up. We can go check out the lockbox and then we can just make an exit to the outside. We don't have to go back out the way we came in. Pull up, pull me up on my tails. No, that's gonna <laughs> hurt. And what I'll do is I'm gonna lay I'm gonna lay my body down. Uh, so that basically just my head <laughs> and my arm are reached out the trap door and use the floor of the attic as leverage to try to like help pull him up. Okay. So I'm, I'm basically the way you would try to pull somebody out of ice if they've fallen through ice, you know, I'm going to okay. try to pull him up. I would say roll up. strength to see uh, how well you're fucking abysmal. able to pull him up. <laughs> A 13. Um, yeah, I would say that's it's fairly easy enough to, to pull him up. Um, so then once we get him up into the attic, I'll just, like, kind of point out the things I saw and motion to the lockbox and say, uh, I, look, I, you know, we came all this way. That may be what we're looking for. This is probably of great significance for the professor. 
Uh, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna see. I'm assuming it's it's a lock box. You know, I'll see if I can open it, and I'll I'll just kind of take my, you know, cautiously pro- approach the lock box and see if there's a lock on it. You make your way past the four nests <laughs> the along nests. the room. Well, they are nests. And you make your way to the locked iron strong box. Are there any birds in the room? They haven't asked. <laughs> Not that we've noticed. It's a bird shit. <laughs> you, are, you are now knelt before the strong box. You can tell even just at first glance that it is locked. All right, I'm, I'm going to give this a try. Let's see what I can do. Come on, Shepard, let us see. What, what, what is this trap door leading to? Uh, it, it, maybe outside. I'm I mean, going to put my ear hole down to the trap door to get a gross. to get a sense. Mm-hmm. I love ear hole. Is uh, there any roll a know? perception check to see what you hear? Perception, you said. I do. That is a twenty-four. You listen and you hear absolutely nothing. It's complete silence below the trap door. So. So it's not back out. It's not back down, at least into the the, the, the main area of the inn. I, I would assume. I suppose not. I'm going for the. I'm, I'm, let me let me work on this lock. Fourteen. You use the tools, and you're attempting to, but this is far more difficult than you had expected. And after a bit, you have not been able to unlock it. Perhaps we take it and give it to the professor. How big is it? It's pretty big. It would be cumbersome to carry. You wouldn't be able to. You'd have to just drop from the trap doors. You wouldn't be able to climb while carrying it. Fair enough. Why, why don't we see where this other trap door goes? And maybe there, maybe we just take the lockbox right outside. And then we can take it back up to our rooms. Granted, if, if the professor's right about all this, they're going to know. And we'll probably be uh, in some deep shit regardless. But I agree. But let's take a look. After you, my friend. I'm going to try to open or pull it. You pull open the trap door as you look down into a large, and and you look down into a room. A large painted toy box rests between two small cozy beds. Murals of ravens in flight are painted on the walls above the wood paneling. Appears to be a child's room. A child's room of sorts. But I, have you seen any children on not, the premises? Not that I recall, Sarnax. No. But we've got two options. We, proceed, we press forward with the lockbox. we got three options. We press backwards with the lockbox, or we just go back. Give it one more shot, Shepard. Fine. Uh, we got one more. How much time, roughly, have we spent? Probably 15 minutes. You haven't Not been gone that long. All right, we got time. I'll, I'll give it another try or two. Let me just... I'm rusty, all right? I'm rusty. No, that's a fail. 24. On my third attempt. Just to give you a time you, estimate. You, you fail again, and you, you're beginning to get frustrated, but you know that you have to give this one more college try. One more Miss Tallery University try. For the, for the professor. For the professor. As you focus, you move it left and then right and then just a little further in and clip. Ha! ha. Lock pops. Shepard. Sorry, sorry. I just. Uh, and then I will. Roll for initiative. Stop. I'm fucking. No! <laughs> Oh my god. I can't handle this. Stop it. I'm like, I just killed two people. I killed them. Fuck you, Nikki. You're such a troll. I was like, this whole. uh, Okay, alright. I ease ease the locked box uh, lid open. Looking inside, you find a small black velvet sack containing 150 electrum pieces. Each coin bearing the profiled visage of Stradania. Six pieces of elaborate jewelry worth roughly about 250 gold pieces each. And three potions of healing. What? Uh, well, that, that's it? I, I mean, I, I mean, this is a lot of value, but there's, there's no secrets here. This is just, this is just a box of, of, of jewels. 
This is not what the professor was looking for. I almost feel bad about taking it now, but... I mean, we could use the potions. And and to be fair, we're kind of hard up on cash. What do you think? I do not believe in robbing these people. Well, uh, the potions. The, we can take the potions. I, I'm, I'm with you. We don't need the money. We don't need the money. We can take the potions. I think that is a fair point. <laughs> I'll take the potions. <laughs> <laughs> you have three potions of healing. I give one of them to Sarnax and I take the other two. Okay. You have two potions of healing. You have one potion of healing. Now, now the question... I would say it's been about 30 minutes. Uh, I'm going to close the lockbox and relock it. Perfect. I'll say you're easily able to do that. And now there are only one question really remains, Sarnax. How curious are you where this other uh, trap door goes? Well, we are already invisible. <laughs> Say no more, fam, after you. <laughs> you both lower yourselves into the room. The ceiling seems to be a little bit lower here, and you're easily able to move the trap door back into place. And I'll say that you were smart enough to close the other one before you did all of this. Thank you. We definitely were. Yeah, of course. (laughs) Um, Shouldn't, but that's funny. Um, As you find yourself in this you find yourself in this room. The first thing that you notice as well is the beds as well, the dressing uh, is beautiful and it's childlike, but staring at it, it looks almost as if it's never been used. Right, be careful what we touch. But let's just give it a quick one. So, is there a door in this room? There is. Well, we have only one way in, one way out. So let's just give it a quick once over and get the hell out of here. This is all very strange. Briefly, untouched. I believe the professor's. You can ins- hear dogs barking from outside. The professor's ins- 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 insane ramblings may actually be correct. <laughs> Uh, look, I didn't, I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it either. Your <laughs> word's not mine, but to be fair, we've seen some pretty insane things was, in the last few days. I was worried he was not well. Uh, he might not be. We all might not well be well, I suppose. Anyway, let's just take a look. Give it a once over. Oh, oh, an investigation oh, check. Advantage. Oh, jeez. <sighs> An 11. Your attention is drawn to the toy box on the side of the room. Oh, the DM's done. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's it. Well, That's all you find of interest. Unfortunately for us, Sarnax, my uh, my role has drawn our attention to this. Uh, I am going to step very closely and look at this toy box as carefully as I can. All right. To and sort of, there's anything immediately visible. Without even thinking about it, as if it's second nature, my hand, my right hand is drifted to my holster. Okay. And I'm going to try to perceive if there's anything amiss about it. Uh, roll a perception check. Natural 20. Oh, oh gotta oh, give it up. Natural oh. fucking 20! Gotta give it up to my lizard boy here. Perception, yeah, it'll be a 28. Golf clap for natural 20. Yeah. Gotta give it up. Gotta give it up. 28. Okay. Uh, nothing seems to be amiss. Uh, outside of everything else, this is the only part of the room that really looks used. Well, Shepard, let us go over the possibilities. I believe there is a near certainty that if we open this, there will be a doll that's probably moving and will see us and whoever is behind the scrying magic of said doll will be seeing us as well. Even if we're like this. Fair point. They will see the lid open, I suppose. Not that I'm provoking you into opening up a uh, toy box from hell. Uh, But I'm just, you know, again, playing the advocate. Well, if there was anyone to play a devil's advocate, Shepard, I'm glad it had to be you. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> no, you did not! You open it? That wasn't a go-ahead! <laughs> uh, and then there were two. This is the three, three. stooges of Baroque. Two, three. Stu- yeah. two stooges of Baroque. We need Kana here. And the music yeah. changed. You open the toy box to find a miniature puppet theater with appropriately sized marionettes of a king, a queen, a prince, a princess, an executioner. 
a tax collector, a dunce, a vampire, and a vampire hunter. A garish toy Vistani wagon hitched to a wooden horse and filled with tiny wooden Vistani figurines. A pair of painted wooden clown masks, one displaying a mean scowl and the other a frightened expression. A wooden top painted with images of scarecrows chasing children through the forest. A stuffed, real bat on puppet strings. What what is it? These seem to bear the hallmark of Dolinsky's style. So, a completely unused room. One kind of used toy chest and some weird Dolinsky toys inside. Yes, that seems to be the situation. Do we need to take this with us back to the professor? Can we just leave this be? We can leave this be. Just make a note of what is inside. I, uh... I try to commit them to memory. Do it I'll say it's pretty easy. There's not that much in there. Out the door, I guess? I suppose that's all there is to it. Let's see where, where, where this spits us out, I guess. And we'll uh, head to the room, the, the, the door of the uh, room. You open the door and slip out. And you find yourself back along the grand balcony. You realize you were one door over from the door, from the room you'd entered. Yep. Oh, well, uh, how much time do you think we got left? I believe there's enough time to investigate the far door. It is what the professor would want. One last door. It sounds like he's doing well down there. All right. Good luck, uh, Colin and Victoria and the professor keep him busy. And I'm going to try this last door with the handle. You attempt to open it, and it jingles. Don't. Jiggles. But it does not move. It does appear to be locked. I don't know what's up with me. It jingles and jingles. <laughs> One more time. I love it. Let's see if I can get this open. I think we got enough time. I don't know. Nice. How 23. Yeah. You hear a click as the door itself pops open. You know, I don't know why I ever even gave this up. <laughs> Regardless, let's go. And I, I, I slip in and hopefully close the door behind us. This small guest room contains a bed heaped with wolf furs, a footlocker, a tall wardrobe, and a writing desk with matching chair. An oil lamp rests atop the, de- the desk near a journal bound in red leather in a red leather jacket. Looking around this room, you see things of color. Not much, but you could easily ascertain that this is probably the guest room of one Rick Tavio. Uh, Sarnax, if, if you don't mind, not that I'm telling you what to do, but uh, maybe go through the man's pockets and I'll check out the footlocker. Excellent idea. All right, good luck. <laughs> so what are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for the footlocker, and then I, I you know, he, you mentioned the journal in his coat pocket. Rex hands for <laughs> the footlocker is not locked. As you open it up, it contains nothing but common clothes and travel wear. Uh, as for everything else, please roll an investigation check. Either at advantage, thing. yeah, or separately if you would uh, Do you want to roll separately oh, yeah, since you're probably. looking at his coat and I'll I'm roll? I'm for the journal, yeah. Ooh, baby, man, need this dice. I'm sorry, I ever doubted you cracking dice. I'm on fire right now. Uh, 21. I got, I got a 22. Okay. Wow. Uh, you you look through the room part. and... <laughs> yeah, you look through the room. Um, you're easily able to spot the journal. It seems to be the only thing of importance in this entire room. You pick it up and you begin to look through it. It's The writing makes frequent mentions of conversations with someone named Drusilla and recounts many long and tedious journeys by wagon. There are also notes about various oddities uh, that Rictavio seen in his travels, including a were-hair child, a boy who transforms into a rabbit on nights of the full moon, a half-orc woman named Gora Bacha who could chew through iron chains, a giant man-eating plant that had the most remarkable singing voice, a pair of conjoined goblins, a small man with no legs named Fillmore Stunk who could drink whole casts of wine without getting drunk. Uh, well, I... I... I haven't found anything. There's nothing in the footlocker. Is there anything of note in the journal? Seems to be strange, fantastical travels. Nothing more. Do you, 
Can you commit it, most of it at least to memory, or is this something we got to bring back to the professor? I believe if we bring it to the professor, Octavio will know that we've taken it. Man, he'll know someone took it. It's Excellent fine. Excellent point. <laughs> we, we don't, my point is, <laughs> no, no, Sarnax, I'm just saying, do you need to, can you, you see, you see the, the, the journal floating <laughs> and it disappears? <laughs> I don't think we need to take it if you know, if you can tell the professor everything that's in there. I just don't know if there might be something he might find that, that, that is, you know... Shepard. Beyond us. May I tell you what I want? Please. I want to steal. Then take the damn journal, Sarnax. It's fine. He's not gonna know. I... I do not believe it wise on second thought. Then, then put it back. Just remember what was inside, and we'll report it back to the, the, the professor. I'll try to put it back as, as I left it. All right, uh, roll a sleight of hand. Actually, both of you roll a sleight of hand to see oh, how well you do Jesus. putting everything 18. back. Oh. Two. Okay, thanks. My sleight of hand is a... I think it's... Uh, oh, yeah, plus five. So seven. Seven total. Okay. Well, that's it. We might as well get out of here before we run out of time. What do you think? I just had an idea. All right. What if the journal has secret magical ink where there's notes in the margins? That, I, okay, I didn't mean exactly that, but that's what I'm talking about. What if the professor saw something that we didn't? You're right, we should steal it. Just take it. What? What's a journal? What's the worst that can happen? My first inclination was correct. Look, I'm not a, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not an advocate. We left the money. We're not here for wealth. We're here for survival. We need all the information we can get. And if this guy is not what he seems, and he's not going to give us what we need, then we'll take it. He doesn't need to know we took it, even if we meet the damn guy. Perhaps he will think that the innkeeper stole it from him. Yeah, they look like. Oh well, shit! We gotta get back. Is there a way? That we could frame. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Is there a way that we could frame the incubators? I, I mean, I. Well, if their door's still open, I guess we could take something from the room and put it in here, but. I, I mean, but you saw the room. It doesn't even look like we live in there. That is true. What, we, we can't just. We can't put a picture of them in here. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that would be too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> do I do I recall anything from their bedroom? Do I recall anything from their bedroom that I mean you said it was like pristine, right? So it's like there wasn't like clothing or like hair or anything. Yeah, there were like pieces of clothing and things like that, but it doesn't look like that's where they're where they sleep. Sarnax, I don't I don't know. This isn't right. Even, even if that is their bedroom and it's just fake. They're, 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 it doesn't look like they're staying there. I don't, I don't think like, there's anything we have to plan. Well, then I believe that we should bring this journal back to the professor. It's what he would want most. And, and we got to figure out where they're actually staying, because something's not right about this. A, a children's room? Uh, 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 something's right. not right. There must be some secret compartment that they missed. I'm pretty confident at least everything where we were, everything we saw... Uh, we, I mean, we did a, a pretty... Th- uh, you might be right. Let's Let's just get back... We're, we're pressing our luck. I just had an idea, Shepard. Hit me. We need to go back into the child's room. Why? We did not move the toy chest. We didn't move it? We did not move it. It looked like it had been used. This is a house of trap doors. Would it not be logical Shit. to hide a trap door beneath a toy chest? All right, all right, all right. Let's just get in the room, because if this wears off, at least we won't be visible inside the room, all right? Yes. We'll slip into the... You have, uh, like, ten minutes left. We'll slip into the children's room here, mm-hmm. and shut the door behind us. You do that. And, uh... Move aside. On, on, the, on, the count, on the count of three. One, two, three. Roll and strength. Take... Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I hold to the fuck out. With my, uh, <laughs> with my, uh, zero, plus zero in strength, I got a 17. I got a nine. You, <laughs> that's still a lot. You both grab onto the toy chest. You look at each other and you slowly count down to one oh as God. you wrench the, the toy chest forward. It's not attached to the ground, it's just a toy chest. Your strength <laughs> overwhelms you as you 
fling it backwards and smack it against the wall. There's nothing beneath it but floor. Oh, do I hear those? Damn it! We're making a rumpus. It's too loud downstairs. Okay. Quick, quick! No, uh, just let's get it upright and fix it and put everything back the way it was. Damn it! Fucking Damn. dumb and dumber. <laughs> It's just like, I wasn't gonna us. make you do that until you were like, until you were like, we both grab it. I'm like, okay, well, if they both grab it and try and move oh the fucking toy chest, they're going to be like, they're gonna try and move it thinking there's something there and they're gonna throw it. So you did. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to pick everything up and put it back in the toy chest and set it back oh. where it was. Did you check the tapestry? That's so great. What tapestry? In the other room. No, I I, I went up into the, 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 the... No. <laughs> Quick, into the other room. <laughs> we close the doors. We, we are now in... You have to understand that they may see us coming. We are out of time. Well, let's just do this quickly. Check the tapestry. All right, we look out of the tapestry. Uh, roll an investigation check or a perception check. Uh, 22. I'm rolling pretty hot fire right now. Perception, let me check. Sorry, I'm flipping back and forth here. Uh, 20 total. <laughs> you slowly move your hands along the tapestry, depicting the, the beautiful mountain valley. And at first you don't notice anything at all as your fingers slip behind the tapestry. And where you expected your fingers to make their way all the way down, you hit a couple of bolts because it's mounted to the wall. And there's nothing here but tapestry. Oh, no. You're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I love how in depth let's, that Let's get back to our room. Alright, you satisfied? Back. Yes, yes. yes. Alright, come on. And then we are going to basically book it. Close the door behind us and stealthily make it down the steps and try to like out the front door. I will say you, you make it out the front door and the moment you... The moment you take your your feet heap <laughs> the earth down the stairs, both of you um, become corporeal again. And the invisibility. Works. I'm gonna I'm gonna like basically like drop on the ground, and like slump up against the in building, and be like, "Oh, Jesus! Why do I feel like that was all for nothing?" Well, we learned that the professor is probably right. Something's up. Something's indeed up. We should get the professor this journal. Maybe he can discern something that we cannot. All right, keep it hidden for now. Let's get it to the professor and let's just, uh... uh let's just relax. Would you like a hand to stand up? Yes. You both feel a hand on either one of your shoulders. Come on. Fucking chicken. Watch on! Watch on! And you immediately oh, hear... God. Well, hello to the both of you. Uh, Are you on your way into the inn? Y- yes, uh, yes, sir. Well, the first drink's on me, and hopefully we'll have a round of stories, right, chaps? And they, he smacks you on the back. Ricovio, uh, great to meet you uh, both. Oh, uh, uh, Shepard, it's a pleasure. He shakes your hand, grabs it. There's a strong grip as he shakes it. There's a light in his eyes, a happiness. And you, friend. Sarnax of the Eaglewood. I've seen men like you before. Stricker, yes? So have I, yes. You are also not from here. No, not at all. Uh, we well, have a friend that would very much like to meet you. Oh, that is great. When can? When will I have the pleasure? He's inside. In 20 well, seconds from now. Then it looks like we both have a, um, a place to be and a time to be there. Follow me, chaps. And he walks in ahead of you as he swings open the door. Um, I just look at Sarnax like... I was for... No. <laughs> no, what are you with for, huh? We probably shouldn't have stolen his jerk. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we follow him. Who doesn't notice you say that? No, I don't. Oh, God. Okay. okay. Yeah, so we follow, we follow him in. Okay, and we're going to take just a quick couple minute break because I need to drink and I have to use the bathroom. Yeah, five minute yeah. break. Five minute break, guys. So, uh, how's everybody doing tonight? We're taking a quick little break oh here. I don't know about you guys, but I'm doing very well. I love that. I love the buddy cop paper. shit. <laughs> yeah. The buddy cop shit really makes me happy. You were like five minutes into that, and I'm like, man, I feel like watching Rush Hour for some reason. <laughs> I just can't figure out why. 
So <laughs> like, what absolute nonsense! I so love it. And it's nice because there there are you know it's it's a super dark campaign. So any opportunity that you have to lighten it up a little bit, it, it's much needed. I mean, I'm, and so the two of you in character doing that crap is just perfect. Because well, I'm trying so hard to play it straight. Some I have a lot of adventurous and chill comments <laughs> because somebody in chat was talking about the Toa Felix thing and and. I, this is like I'm trying to play it straight. That was such a disaster <laughs> in a different but, way. But that's why it was funny, right? Because yeah. you kind of are playing. You were playing it straight. We were both playing it and straight. And Sarnix is playing it straight, but he is so alien in everything that right. he does. <laughs> but you're you're in a time crunch. You're both invisible, and so you kind of have to just cater to his alienness <laughs> right. to get the job done. Right. And that right. in, its, in itself is what makes it funny. What do you think, Shepard? It doesn't matter. I'm opening the lid. <laughs> I want to steal. You make a very good point. <laughs> the devil's no, advocate no. line was so good. The what? The devil's advocate line. Oh, um, uh, it's awesome. Very well. <laughs> Dude, fucking <laughs> eating <Yeah>. the toy <laughs> 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 To be fair, the countdown wasn't so much like a, we have to like keep hold this thing. It was a we're gonna move it on three and hope for the best. Was like was Shepard's thought, you know? But, but that thought goes along with expecting oh, there totally. to be something under it. Totally. We were, so I was the moment that the, the two of you try to move oh, something, especially as light oh. as that toy box, it's gonna fly. Oh, so unless you funny. both rolled like less than ten, right. that was gonna happen. Oh my god. Oh my. And so it, it killed me when you were like, oh, I'm hulking we out. I hulked the fuck out, for real. <laughs> yeah. uh. Secrets! <laughs> the world across the room. Oh my god. I love it. I was thinking too the whole time we were doing that if we did get in trouble with with the with the commotion that the professor drummed up, we might they might not have hurt us anyway. Yeah. Like, you probably would have had to like fire fire your weapon. I don't know though. I don't even know if that would have Right, who I mean I would further. Right, I don't know. Um, I would say it would have taken something like you firing your weapon. Uh, because Clayton did such a good job yeah. making everybody loud and I mean it was brilliant. Yeah. Hmm. That was amazing. Uh, thank you, Run Clock. I'm glad that uh, you got a kick out of me telling them to roll for initiative. <laughs> that was fun. Sometimes you have to, like, spike their blood pressure just to keep them on their feet. I love it. Oh, my blood pressure. I loved all your really in-depth descriptions of things that were leading to nothing. <laughs> my favorite thing is, like, telling them and watching them look back and forth like, oh my god. It's really there. Well, that was the last one you got me on the tapestry. You <laughs> yeah. juked me out of my boots. I was like, Sarnax, you son of a bitch, you found it! <laughs> Fuck! <God. laughs> Twas nothing! It uh, was nothing. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Renclock. I will check out the moment we're done with Strahd tonight. 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 I was waiting for a creepy doll to climb out of the toy chest. Creepy doll can't always climb out of the toy chest, though, Abby, or they'll, they'll come to expect it. And you've got to put the creepy dolls where they least expect them. Man, I got a lot yeah, of thoughts like, about the toy chest. Yeah, like, what got out of that toy box was, like, had heavy, heavy bearing on whether or not we're going to have kids here. I was like, if one more fucking creepy doll <laughs> flies out of that fucking toy box, I'm never procreated. No, I'm never gonna. No, it's too, that's, too that's big a no. risk. Too big of a risk. No, Andy need juniors. <laughs> no, well, I might be ruining that idea for you. It's all right. That's fine. <laughs> well, you know, it's fine. Me out. I hate dolls. I love it so much. The fact that this doll is back. I don't with horrible red eyes. You know, it had fucking fingers in it. That honestly, <laughs> that honestly, I think is one of the more shocking things that we've experienced because I've never seen it. Not that I've been playing D and D or even playing a mage long enough to know, but like when you dispel something, it's like, yeah, well, that's it, right? Unless somebody were to somehow recast a spell or have the ability to do that, it's like. How would it reactivate itself, right? Through magic? Well, no, it's been dispelled. So to me, that is like... Like, I am horrified. And when you said that there was a rocking chair with this shit in it... No, fuck that. 
I hate this Why game. was its head on backwards? I don't want to play it anymore. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't Is that like this book game. or are you just like crazy? <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> What you need to do is one night when Mike goes out, put this in his bed, and like, and like when he comes back late at night, so it's like sitting there like, ah, Michael! Please don't. I'll put, oh did you remember those God. yak backs? Yes. From like the 90s? I'll record something so that when he yeah. walks in, it yaks yeah. yak backs yeah. at him. Okay. Very I'm excellent. back. All oh, right, so you're you're able you follow in as Rictavio makes his way into the into the tavern space. Uh, everybody roars in cheers as they usher him over. He finds a seat. He's actually fairly close to the two of you as he kicks his boots up onto the table and leans back to listen to the story as you're told the tale of a of a unicorn that brought candy uh, to a town full of people who just really wanted candy. Cool. Who's telling this story? The the drunk. You can tell that it's not at all the story that was being told. And okay. it's, you, you've, you've listened. It's divulged from something that was significantly more sinister and interesting. And then he, someone had mentioned a unicorn, and now all of a sudden he's just on a tangent about a unicorn. So he's making it up as he goes. But well, Rictavia seems to be interested and find it quite funny. So I, do I see them? So they're now not in this place? Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're there, walking right? in afterwards. You see oh. Rictavio as he sits down, and they're walking in. And I'm just going to give the professor kind afterwards. of a wave. Afterwards. Well, thank you, my man, for that lovely story. Here you yeah, are. and so then, um, and then what happened is the entire town had a big cough, and hey, thank uh, you, thank you. Yeah, yes, and then you. a doctor came in and gave thank them you. all lollipops. Here's from your gold. The, Twenty-five thanks, gold pieces. A lollipop from the belly of this unicorn, and then they thank didn't you. have Goodbye. that thank cough you. anymore. Yes. Yeah, and then <laughs> what happened was I just that. Said turn. <laughs> <laughs> And you see as the group kind of splits a bit as um, a few of them turn towards Rictavio to see if he's going to begin telling a tale. And some of the more drunk patrons uh, continue to uh, clamor around uh, the storytelling man and listen to the tale that he's weaving um, with all of its uh, broken, or all its bottles. Um, I'm sorry to, uh, I, I know you just got settled, but this is the man we were talking about. This is, uh, uh, we call him the professor. His name is Professor Clayton, and, and he's very interested in meeting you. I see. Uh, we, we made friends yes. with this gentleman no, outside the inn. Professor Clayton Azran. Fratavio, lovely to meet you. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes. Uh, a man with culture, I can tell. Yes, as it seems are you. Where are you from, Fred? Uh, I'm from, uh... Ah. Presumably far from ah. here. Bargast. Yeah, yes. Do you know Bargast? I've been. Have you? Thank this you! So El Volganta. Thank you, thank you. El Volganta. So, so you're, you're, really, you. you're really not born here? No. Where I'm are you not from? from here. Where are you from, friend? Ah. Secrets. For now. Yes, but, but, but then... then uh, are you stuck here? Can, can you leave? Can you? Not that if, we know. If I could, I wouldn't be asking. And if I could, I wouldn't be here. Damn! Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm a little on edge. Well, um, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, is your plan to perhaps go home at some point? My plan is eventually to go home. But when? Well, who knows when. Until then, make the best of a bad situation, I say. Yes. How long have you been you. here? You! Oh. You don't speak much. Well, I've just uh, heard quite a tale about you. You're you don't see half elves here often. Yes. I suppose not. No. I'll fix my hair with my finger. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hide much from a man like me. I, I hope that. I'm not being too presumptuous. Not at all, sir. I'm Victoria Isaacs. It's lovely to meet you. And what brings a pretty lady like you to a dark and dreary place like this? Well, I'm assisting the professor here on his voyage. It's I see. eventful, that's fine. 
Well, a round of drinks then. Yes, yes, please, absolutely. I, I think normally I'm... spend the evening regaling the patrons with tales, but I think tonight is a night that you should spend regaling me with yours. I think I'm about ready for one of those drinks. Thanks for the follow. Thank you, Weiss Life Gaming. Thank you for the follow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The overhead light on that's been off this whole time. Oh, yes. I'm Pippi Longstocking. You do look a little Pippi Longstocking during the road. I don't know if she makes that face, but she does now. Yeah. Now it's now it's canon. Now it's canon. Well, Pippi Longstocking shouldn't be canon. Is it broken? Do you turn it off? Make sure that you didn't flip the switch. Oh. Because <laughs> all these switches got flipped, I guess. That really flips my switches. There we go. There we go. That's why. We have Let There Be Light. Let There Be Light. Um, Rick Tavio calls over to Danica yes. and and Erwin. Both of them seem to be really receptive, and he pays for a round of drinks. That's very kind. Thank you. Hey, very generous of you, sir. Thank you. Well, uh, how... I'd love to hear more about you. You seem very well liked amongst the people. Yes, I've, I really haven't seen so much joy since we've been here. You've certainly brightened the spirits. Well, I do, Tiger. But tonight's not about me. Tonight is about you. Regale me. What brings you to Barovia? How have you found yourselves here? Well, this is part of an expedition for Miss Hallery University. Have you heard of it? I've not. It is a uh, university in the city of Bree, in Vargas, ah. like you... I've like not you been to Bree. It's quite a great city. Uh, I do miss it. Um, and yes, so uh, my life's research has been about Barovia and... and uh, as what a strange place to dedicate your life's work to. Well, and then you show up here and find that life is not so heavy here. Well, Lacking is the one thing, life is the one thing this place is lacking. That's right, that is right. It, uh, I must say, after spending my life researching it, I knew that it would seem dark or dangerous if I ever found it, but... It's far darker and more dangerous than I ever thought possible. Well, as you know, most places have their fair share of danger. But yes, I would say I've encountered more danger here than other places. Are you a well-traveled man? I get around. Well, anyway, this, uh, so, uh, as I'm sure you were aware, uh, when you arrived here, perhaps, that most thought that Barovia did not exist. And this is, I, I want to be talking, like, low yeah. enough where people like, aren't just going to camp and eavesdrop easily. Yeah, you, we're, you're basically off towards the side now, um, moved over, you now have your glasses of wine. Everyone else is really engaging in the stories with the, um, the, the, the strange drunk and his unicorn <laughs> tales. <laughs> Um, well, so I, I believe, so uh, most didn't believe it existed, and I uh, just based on the tales that I've heard and, and evidence that I'd found in my previous digs that uh, I, I was convinced that it existed, and I wanted to prove that, and prove it I did, I just didn't realize that it was a place from which we could not escape, uh, at least yes, without no. the permission of Countess Rudania. Well, that seems to be a lot of people's folly. But, as I've said, you do what you can with the dreary situation. Yes. And the, Vol- the Voloki, the Vistani, apologies, they seem to be able to travel in and out as they choose. They mention that to us. So, it seems like there are ways in and out. If you were trying to go home, as are we, perhaps we could help each other. I have a bit of work left to do. Stories. 
to compile uh, when I head home. I want to be able to tell all that I know the tales of what I've encountered here. Admirable. It's adventure spirit. Yes. It's a lot like what the professor's trying to do, at least in some regard. Hey, oh, thank you, you for the tea, the cheer. Yeah, I'm fading a little. Gotta pep up. Have a, have a splash of the old Joe. Yeah, we got yeah a, maybe. Fill up that rattlesnake, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you got a flat knee. Um, well, uh, yes, of course. Uh, so I think uh, I, too, am trying to learn what I can. We're just in a predicament where... If I can learn everything that I possibly can about this place, there's no clear way to get home. What are you doing while you're in town? How are you keeping yourself busy? Telling stories. Learning from the locals. Going on three months. My goodness, in this town. In this and the other towns. How did you... Come to find yourself here. The same way you did, friend. Along a lonely road shrouded in mist. Was it a chapel in Erios? Ha. No, but I believe I've heard the tale of the one you're thinking of. I, I don't want to be presumptuous, because a gentleman such as yourself seems to know a lot about what's going on around here. But the Vistani told us that the only one who really can let people go, or I guess even come in, is the Countess herself. You do plan on meeting her. You do? And how do you plan on accomplishing something like this? Uh, she gave us an invitation for dinner, and we're hoping to seek her audience and uh, go from there. Thank you, Jason, for the Thank biz. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Add it to the add it to the pie. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Are we keeping track of bits? Yeah. Of In the pie. We used one. In the old pot arena. That's three for tonight. Thanks, everybody. Shut, Shut the up. fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Uh, <sighs> three or, or back to two. We're back to two. We have back two. to two. We have okay. two now. Yeah. I, you took one out that I used. So. I did, yeah, I like to do that. And oh, you. you have a, an invitation to the castle. Uh, yeah, so, something like that. And you plan on going? Well, do you advise against it? I do not deem myself worthy of advising you anything. You do what you'd like to do, but I, should you go, I would like to hear all about it. We can arrange that. Have you been to the castle? <laughs> no, I must not be worthy of the Countess's eye. Ritavio, do you know of a young woman suffering the bites of strange mosquitoes? You... Mm. Hit a nerve. That's what you did, Sarnix. Roll a perception check. No, roll an insight check. Not good. Oh, no. 13, actually. Oh, okay. His face doesn't crack as he looks towards you. That depends, friend. What type of mosquitoes and where in the Vantress of such an, have you heard of such an affliction? I myself dabble a bit in medicine. She was not in a Vantress. She was in Barovia. She allegedly met with you not too long ago. When she was experiencing her strange bites, and allegedly you said it was nothing more than a giant insect, when we all know that not to be the case. Well, it has been a lovely evening. I find that it is time for me to retire. Oh, please, don't don't go on his account. He's a little antisocial, but... Um, what he means to say, really, is that we, we had just heard of you, and we were curious on your take. We've come into contact with the young girl, and, um, she mentioned you. Well, a persuasion check. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, that, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That is a 24. Damn. Alright. 
Guess he so. looks he looks at you for a second. He seems like his feathers are a little bit ruffled as uh well, if the half elf wins it. <clears throat> Flush a little. I shall stay. As you know, personally, that some women can get a little flustered when they fear. She was of a highborn disposition. I did not find that frightening the young girl was going to cause here. Elves, as I'm sure you have looked at them and seen, the wounds themselves are not causing any adverse reaction. She's not changing. You confirm that, yes. So, I chose not to frighten her, for fear she might attempt to run away and find herself in even more perilous danger. Wait, is there, is there any chance that she might change? Not at the present time that I left her. Are, oh, uh, how sure are you? We left her with the kids. I'm positive that unless she's come into contact with large mosquitoes of the same variety and incurred more wounds and in a different way than the first, that she is in no danger of changing. Yeah, Shepard, we ex- right. examined her thoroughly. I believe what he is saying is still true. All right. Might I ask, how did you come to examine her in the first place? I was traveling through Barovia, and I heard that she was, the entire family, for that matter, were being shot by the locals as she had come down with some illness. Her father begged me to come and see her. Word had gotten out that not only do I tell the best stories, but I'm a bit of a medicine man myself. So, as I am not feared of illnesses of any kind, I visited the mansion, the mansion, and I took a look. Have you encountered anything like this in the rest of your travels here? This is a strange place. You will encounter many things you wouldn't imagine, too. Don't get us started. Yes, we've had quite an interesting few days. But Irina's case was the first of its kind that I've seen so far. What significance to the mosquitoes do you assume this girl to have? Well, that all depends. There must be something about her that's causing an attraction. But I wouldn't begin to understand the inner workings of a mind like that. Well, I think she's safe for now. We've made sure of that. And now, our goal is to begin to figure out our way out. And so, I believe, do you plan on staying here? Yes, I will be here at least for the next few nights. Unless something leads me in a different direction. They call you the Carnival Man. Do you truly yes. have a carnival? Rick Tavio's Carnival. And you had a monkey. I did, yes. If he was not Piccolo, he was not welcome here at the inn, so I traded him to that strange Blinsky man in exchange for his wares. If you haven't been there, you should. No, we've already it's, been. I don't it's quite an interesting place. Give me ideas for the carnival once I return to Avantris. And Actually, you didn't get anything unusual from his shop or nothing's been out of the ordinary? Everything in his shop is out of the ordinary. Touché. And I picked up a few things, but nothing to note. I don't mean to pry. I apologize. Don't you all mean to pry? Since I've met you, it's all you've done. Well, to be fair, it seems like we've got a lot in common, and it seems like you might have some of the same goals we have, and and that's why we are so quick to cling to something that we can kind of understand. It's very possible that may be true, but up until this evening, I have never heard of any of you. So unless you have a reason for being here to see me, I can't imagine that we know enough about each other to make a decision like that. I, I, I agree, I'm just simply saying we'd all like to go home someday. Someday, yes. Well... It was a pleasure to meet you, and if you need any help or any assistance from five very capable individuals, we would be happy to help in any way we can. Duly noted, friend. And I will be here telling stories, should you 
enjoy a nice break from the dreariness of the land round. Of course. Do you believe in fate? You see his interest peaked for a moment. I do believe there is an element of fate to the world around us, yes. Do you... Have you... Are you familiar with Madame Ava? Mistani? For the first time you see his face crack for a moment. I believe that it is time that I turn in for the evening. Would you like to have a nightcap with me in my room? Yes, sure. I would. We would, yes. Well... Let us make our way upstairs, then. Uh, please lead the way. He stands up, he waves to everyone. I'm heading in for the night. Please, do not let the merriment cease. Continue. Drinks on me. And he winks at Danica as she once again starts to pour more wine. You can see that the stream of wine from the barrel-marked red mash number three uh, seems to be slowing down, or great mash number three, as it begins to slow down. But she fills the tankards and begins to pass them out as he leads you towards the stairwell, up the stairs and around the corner, and through, uh, or to the door that the two of you are familiar with as he takes a key out of his pocket, unlocks the door, opens it, and waves for you to come in. There's not much for seating space, but... That's, that's fine. We, we appreciate the invitation. As you all file in, he makes his way to the desk. And quickly sits down behind it as he props his feet back up on, on the edge of it, one boot over the other. You were speaking about fate, friend. Now, before Sarnax, I, I don't mean to cut you off, and, and please, I, I don't mean to be presumptuous, uh, sir, but I just want to let you know that we are skeptic that the things said in this establishment are not necessarily secret or private. Depends on where you speak them. But if you're worried about the Countess, this inn is not watched by her, though it's watched by someone. Interesting. Uh, Sarnax, sorry, continue. Whom is it being watched by, if not the Countess? What is this fate, Madam Eva, you speak of? Have you received your reading from her? I have. Is that what brings you to the Blue Water Inn? Yes. Go on. It is also what brings us to you. Go on. I imagine, perhaps, that in your readings, you were told tale of the five of us, and in a similar fashion, our reading mentioned you, the entertaining man with the monkey, that you would be a great ally in defeating the Countess. It seems as if our fates are intertwined, unless I am mistaken about your reading. We're being awfully forward, because quite frankly, we're tired of mincing our words and getting jerked around. More options. What exactly did this reading say, if you believe it re it's in regards to me? He believes that there is someone who is not as he seems. That he is a powerful ally. That he has... A monkey. You say you are being frank because you don't want to mince words, but to ask you a question, and you talk in riddles, either tell me what the reading said, or the conversation can end here. Victoria? Just that card. Just that one. Uh, this card sheds light on one who will help you greatly in the battle against the darkness. Look for an entertaining man with a monkey. This man is more than he seems. Oh. Well, Madam Ava is quite a character. Rudolf Van Richten at your service, friends. And he reaches out your hand to shake. Vampire hunter extraordinaire. And you see magic around him shiver, shimmers as he drops disguised self. The man oh, he had shit. been before, <laughs> no longer the man who sits in front of you. This man is significantly older, but 
there's a coy smile to his face, happy wrinkles around his eyes, and you see his heavy leathers. He has stakes and holy water and all manner of things strapped about him that you had not been able to see beforehand. The colors of the carnival no longer present. Well, that was quite the joy, don't you think? Oh. I enjoyed every bit of that. That was the most fun that I have had since I've stepped foot in Barovia. Mm-hmm. I'm astounded. Rudolph, Mr. Rudolph Van Richten to you, sir. Van Richten. Oh. Now, your name, Clayton, you yes. said. Yes. Last name, tell it to me now. Azran. Love it. Miss Toller University. Yes. Been yes. there, done that. You have. Oh, yes. <laughs> You've I've written many a book there. I'm a famous vampire hunter friend. You haven't have, heard of me. Have you? You've studied Barovia, friend, and you haven't heard about have me. Have I heard of him? You see as he snaps his fingers, and you feel a shimmer around the room. Don't worry. It's a silent spell. They won't hear a damn thing we say in here. Whiskey! He brought some, and he pulls out his black, <laughs> and he throws just it at you. And Sarnak's like... So... You fools, you're the one that took my book, yes? Give it back. <laughs> yeah, we were just about to come yes. clean about that. You know, what? We, we thought you would want to see his journal. In our it's just defense, a, it's just a journal. it was the professor's idea. I no, have I no have... doubt that it was. This is a facade. Do you think I'd leave anything important in my room? <laughs> Not a chance. You stole his journal. We you thought should... there might be valuable information in it. To be fair, look, we found a lot more than just that book. What else did you steal? We, did, we didn't take Nothing anything else. else. That's exactly it. We found a chest full of jewels and money, and we left it where it was. We're not interested in stealing, No, professor. we did steal three health potions. But that's <laughs> to save us and our hides, because we're not getting well, any goddamn help around Wait, you here. found all of those things, and the one thing you stole was this man's journal? Oh, and the health potions. But and the health potions. But those were four things, so three We figured the information was actually of stolen. value instead of, 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 of actual valuables. We're not interested. We're not common thieves. I am so sorry. Sorry for Don't the apologize. Men. This is quite the entertaining event. You took my journal. We, you. We thought there might be some information about Barovia in it, or maybe the professor might be well, able to read it in a way that we. Could. You would have been wrong. Well, better safe than sorry, right? Fair enough. Can I insight check this guy? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> uh, I think I'm proficient in that. So <laughs> let me just check. Professor, can I get my hat back? You didn't put it. In the, you didn't put it in your damn case, did you? Uh, no, no, no. I believe uh, when I went to put it in my case, I saw the bag. I, I <laughs> no, it's right here. Thank you. As I, are your bags. Here you go. Uh, uh, again, sir, I, I can't stress enough how sorry we are. You must understand that we're all just a little on edge. Insights fifteen. He seems to be completely honest with you. Oh, have I heard of him? Roll an intelligence check. History, maybe? Yeah, history. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, so that's a little better. Uh, plus eight is uh, 20. Yeah. You've heard tales of a vampire hunter named Van Richten. Rudolph Van Richten. Wait. Wait. Van Richten. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. I've heard of you. Of course you have. You've, you've, you're quite an acclaimed vampire hunter. And at your service. And he bows before he flourishes his arm and he bows down. Yes, you've, you've traveled across uh, Striga and, and elsewhere, mm-hmm. slaying countless untold fiends. I, I've, I've heard of your exploits. How did you, did you intend to, to, to come to Barovia? Um, uh, Professor, uh, before we go any further, yes. just in the full uh, honesty and disclosure, um, the thing in your case... Oh. That is one of the dirtiest things you've said all night. <laughs> yeah. Hold on to that thought, if you will. I wish that wasn't you. Please don't anymore. brandish the thing in your case. I assure you, it's not what you think. Uh, we I just want to make you. sure you understand what's going on, and if this actually is a, a sanctum of sorts. The case is going to float up and spin around ah, and open. I love this. Quite, a, quite an interesting trick. How does it work? It is an old family heirloom. Passed down. Uh, I'll show you later. Uh, Would you please take a look inside? He looks down into the face and what am I looking at? Is this some some horrific devil doll with red glowing eyes inside? None that I see. Is there a doll at all? Not that I can see. Uh, oh, that's, no. that's not good. Uh, there there was this, this uh, creature. You mean that doll on your back? 
Uh, and as you all turn and look, you see as Morbid Mary is slumped over your back. Oh, dear God! <laughs> I drop to the floor and, like, roll and, like, try to get it off me. That is quite the uh, reaction to a doll. And I'm, like, reaching for my weapon and, like, scrambling up against what the What is that? Oh, how? What? <gasps> that! The, the, the damn thing! I'm on him and I want to mage hand and, like, grab it around the neck. It looks like a Blinsky toy. But it, it moves, and it's it's it's, and it it's speaks. a sentient of some sort. I don't believe it's sentient, but yes, it looks like a Blinsky toy. Wait, it just, it just does this? Uh, probably. Let me see. I move the mage hand over. Do you want to be my friend? Let's be friends. Would you like to go murder someone? Let's go murder. It's just a toy. I grab the mage hand. You're, you're kidding me. We know those dolls are horrific, and they multiply. Uh, it, it it hung itself in in our. Oh room. yes, I'm sure it'll do other strange things. Wait, it's, it it has it vomited on you yet? No, no. Oh, no, its head spins. It'll vomit soon. So this it's is a, a it's a fucking toy. Well, yes. What are the strange children that live in this land? The ones that are not being used for ritual sacrifice. Well, this got dark very fast. <laughs> this land is dark. Yes, but I haven't had enough scotch to delve into that bit of trouble. Perhaps or, you should pour yourself more. We have much to discuss or, about that. We're all just moving on. Looks to be so he's your friend, not mine. Let me take my jacket off. Morgan, he takes his he takes his jacket off and uh, gets himself a little more comfortable. So he kicks off his boots. There's a hole in one of his socks. Is a big toe sticking out of one of them. There is a child's room beside us. I'm sure you know that. Oh yes, true. yes, that's the. And yet we've seen no children. And, and professor, from what we found, n- nobody's living in any of these rooms. Oh well. Nobody's living in them, yes, that's true. Uh, but well, wait, the innkeeper? Uh, not not, not in their room. If they're living here, it's it's not in those rooms. Oh, no, they live here, just not in those rooms. What does that mean? Where do Where they do... Well, they're were-ravens. Well, they're what? I'm sorry? Yes, the were-ravens. That's a thing? Well, they're, they're people that turn into ravens, yes. But they have managed to be able to control it. They can turn whenever they like. They sleep in the attic. There are a few nests up there for two for the two for the parents and two for the adults, or two for the parents and two for the kids. Uh, yes. Oh. Uh, They're kind folk. Um, some order, I believe. I'm. I've been doing a bit of research on them. Um, I don't quite have enough information yet to make a valid judgment, but. Those that run the inn are very kind, and the ravens on occasion have warned me away. There's that ho- horrific hag windmill up the way, and they, they frequent it, uh, warning people from not, going Not anymore. Uh, not anymore. I just want to go on the record and say that this, this day, this day in the history of days that I've existed, that I've known you have been a series of horrible, horrible misjudgments oh, and yes. miscalls. I would, I would say that is going to continue to happen. Yes, yes. I'm not blaming yes. anybody, Professor, but I am ah, ah, just a little... the Keepers little... of the Feather. They're called the Keepers of the, the Feather. The Keepers of the Feather. Yes, and so far my experiences with them have been quite good. Wait, so you're saying they send ravens? No, they become ravens. Uh, there's more of them than just the Marchkov family. Uh, um, they, um... Uh, uh, and... I've seen them in a few places, the, but I know they frequent the... The one, the raven that, that was watching the windmill, was that a person? Oh, yes, the ravens that watch the windmill. They they watch the windmill itself, and they watch the circle of stones. They warn people from approaching, especially uh, travelers who are new to the area, for fear that they might succumb to their doom at the hands of those horrific hags. Order of the what? Uh, they're the keeper of the feathers. Oh, keeper we, of the feathers. We just, yes. we can't win. We just can't, we can't win, no. we can't catch a break. I suppose they watch the church as well. You know, I'm not quite sure, I'm, I'm, the church is hollowed ground. I don't know, they spend much time there, to be honest. Would they not be able to fly above hallowed ground? Oh no, of course they can, but what's the point of keeping an eye on hallowed ground when it's already safe? One smashed itself against the window, 
killing it instantly. Oh no, that just can't this be morning. a that can't be a keeper of the feather. That must have been just a stupid old raven. Does this make sense that a keeper? Of you know the that not all ravens in Barovia are keepers. Uh, well, do now, I suppose. Would, it, would, it, would a keeper of a feather, just theoretically, uh, fall prey to a sleep spell, fall a simple ten feet, and die? Does that sound well, right? That depends on the age of the, the human that was guarding, or that was transformed. You, some of them are a- capable of transforming at the age of four. The younger they are, the more likely they are to, to succumb to harm in Raven's form. I'm and, sure and, it was just a raven, <laughs> Professor. And oh, rightfully oh, so, the okay. older they are as well, the more fragile their bones. Yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, yes. Um, that is, is certainly... So, Keeper of the Feather, you say. But, you know, if you're a magical folk like I imagine you are, just like I am, friend, of course. then uh, you can just simply detect for magic on them. And if they seem to glow with that... Glow, then you know that they're a were raven and not an ordinary raven. Yes, yes, then. Uh, uh, I mean, it that makes perfect sense now. Yes. Now. Well, um, nothing can be done. Nothing can be done. Uh, uh, what is the goal of the of these keepers of the feather? You know, as I've said, I haven't very well delved into it too far, friend. But I've been keeping my eyes on the Vistani camp outside of town. Yes. Vistani. Oh, I'm sorry. Was, what were you saying? Oh, uh, you've been keeping an eye out on oh, the yes. Sunny Camp, yes. Yes. I'm not sure about them. You don't trust them? I trust about half of them. And so even so the right. ones I trust, I don't trust. What are you concerned with? Not all of the Sunny are what they seem. Are there any in particular, we should keep an eye out for. More so, the ones outside of town have caught my eye. Traveling to and from Lady Wachter's house. And I'm assuming you've discerned so far that she is an ally of the Devil Strong. Yes. Uh, speaking of dinner invites, she gave us one as well. Yes. Uh, yes. So She had you trailed, didn't she? She did. Oh, I yeah. knew it. <laughs> Sarnax is the one who spotted him. Yes, she had me trailed as well when she realized she couldn't get anything out of me. She rescinded the invitation. Does she mean us harm? Well, that depends. Do you mean her... Do you mean Stradonia harm? She is a staunch ally of the Lady Stradonia. To, to be honest with you, I, I had hoped that once we had achieved some sort of uh, time with the Countess, we could talk to her and reason with her and she'd let us go but that doesn't seem to be the uh, doesn't seem to be an option and, and if we believe anything about fate in these Taroka cars then uh, harm is, is the only way this is going to come to a head So you intend to fight the Lady Wachta? Uh, well we were going to see what happens if we step foot in there fully prepared to do what we needed to do to, 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 to leave safely and in one piece The cards spoke of a powerful Artifact, a relic, that she keeps buried with the bones of an ancient enemy. You don't say. Does that sound familiar? What's the reading say? Verbatim, Fred. Do we we just want to tell him the whole thing? So he has all the info, or... Do you just want to tell him what... Do you mind, Fred? Could you submit to a zone of truth? I would submit to it, but I can't guarantee that I won't pass the save. You will attempt to pass, or you can choose to fail. Oh, no. I I reserve my right to lie to you at face to face. Well? We've just met. I am extending a bit of trust, but I'm not I'm not stupid enough to trust explicitly. Complicitly. Whatever that word explicitly. is. Explicitly. Yes. Uh, I've had we, a bit of Bourbon. We could all stay in the zone, Scotch. and you'd be able to ask us the yes. same things. Yes. <laughs> Uh, we, could, we could all be in the zone. We'd be willing to offer up information as well. Yes. Well, then I reserve the right to say nothing at all if I'm not ready to answer the question. It's up to you, Professor. I... It's not necessary. It's not necessary. I just 
thought maybe we could prove each other's honesty. Uh, but I think our coming, Professor. There is no reason to bring spells into it. Just a show of good faith that I assume you can do the same thing. I figured we would all be subject to it, but if you are against that, I, well, I certainly won't insist. Um, but I feel comfortable uh, sharing, given that I've heard of you and you seem like I mean, all of the evidence points to you are who you say you are. Well, ask away and I'll tell you what I can. Well, let us go through the readings and we will just confirm to you, or perhaps it, it, will, it will, it will, perhaps you have some kind of information. Well, by all means, read away. Sorry. Uh, the Nine of Glyphs, the traitor card. This card tells of history. Knowledge of the ancient will help you better understand your enemy. Look for a wealthy woman, a staunch ally of the devil. She keeps the treasure under lock and key ah. with the bones of an ancient enemy. I should have known. Lady Wakta, what a minx hiding the journal of Stradonia von Zarovich right under my nose. A journal? Ah. A journal. Oh, yes. An ancient tome. Stradonia would want that with someone she trusts. All locked away in Castle Ravenloft. I've been trying to get my hands on it since the day I arrived. So, is it? Why not keep it in the castle like you initially said? It must have walked away from her somehow. And she either doesn't know where it resides, which is my thought, which makes Lady Walker quite the tricksy woman. Or Strong's not worried about it being with Lady Walker, which on its own makes her even more of a formidable foe. Fair enough. So, there's a journal, and it's her journal. Should I? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So and that means that she's perhaps duplicitous. She is fooling the Countess, you mean? Yes. Lady Walker. Yes. It is the traitor card. Quite right. Quite right indeed. Perhaps we could threaten her, and no blood need be sh- shed. Or perhaps well, she has the same goals as we. I, I, I suppose either of those things could be correct, but we take this gentleman's uh, noting that that this woman may be very powerful. That's right. That's we proceed with caution. This would be my only uh, thought. So the Countess does not watch over this inn here? No. She doesn't keep much for eyes in the city of Velocchi. She has on occasion traveled in, but with the hollowed ground, the barricades around the town being what they are, it's not as easy for her to manipulate here as it is in Barovia. What do you know about this Baron? What you want to know about this baron? Why? Why? What is it with children in these festivals? Why are children required? Why is attendance required? Both children and adults are required. Both, neither one is discriminated against. Well, the flyers explicitly required. Children are required. The baron why? hates the lady Stradonia. His family is from a long line of people, original founders of this land before Stradonia came in with her armies and conquered it far before her turning, as it were. And the Baron believes that his family is the rightful lord and master of the land of Barovia. He has a seething hatred for the Countess. But, along with that, a seething fear. He can't seem to overcome his fear of the Countess, and he believes that while he is the Burgomaster, as long as he keeps the people happy, that it will keep the lady away. I don't know how true that is. Actually, I'm lying. I do know how true that is. It's not true at all. But he's ignorant, and he thinks that it works. So he puts on these stupid festivals. He requires that people are there. But he fears that should the town fall into the same sadness and self-deprivation as 
the village of Barovia that Stradonia will soon lord over this town as well. When a soul comes and succumbs to despair, it is far easier to be harvested. This is true. Well, for the Countess, it's neither here nor there whether the person is wallowing in sorrow or not. As long as it's a soul that Barovian has, then Stradonia's interest will be piqued. So if what all you're saying is, is accurate, then why doesn't Stradonia just absolutely crush everybody beneath her? Sounds like she could. Of course she could, but why would she? I don't know, somebody like this this Burgermaster could, could be removed no problem. Especially if he opposes her openly. Yes, he does. But isn't that half the fun? Doesn't the cat like the toy with the mouse before it pounces? And why would she want to rule over an empire of ash? It's better to have a land of people to rule than no people at all. It's much more fun to watch the mouse run than to watch it cower in fear. Speaking of souls, what is the nature of the soul in Barovia? Well, I'm glad that you asked. It took me at least a month or so to figure it out. As you meet Barovians, I'd watch them closely. Some of them do not function like normal people. They're incapable of the normal range of human emotions. Those Barovians have no soul. What's happened to their souls? They were never born with them. Only about one-tenth of all Barovians are born with souls. Well... I don't understand. How, how is that even possible? Well, and I don't know this for sure, the journal of Stradonia would actually give me the information I need, I do believe, on this, but whatever, whatever magic that Stradonia used to make herself what she is, this undead abomination, gave her additional powers. She bolstered the people of Barovia, creating from nothing empty vessels to give the area the appearance of a bustling valley of people. But those that were trapped here on that day long past, those are the only souls that remain. And the adventurers that she tempts in from the material prime of Avantris, material plane of Avantris. Wait. Additional souls she can add to her roster. What do you mean the material plane versus... Well, as it were, she can only gain nourishment from a Barovian that has a soul. So if she is feeding upon all of this Barovians with souls and there are none left to feed upon, as sometimes it can take a century before a baby is born containing the soul of a past a long-dead Barovian. So she uses the Vistani to lure and lead adventurers, travelers alike, into the land of Barovia to feed on them. So, wait, are you saying that we are not in adventurers currently? Oh no, friend. At all? Oh, no. Where where are we then? You're in Barovia, friend. Yes, but I presume that Barovia was just some, some magical part of adventurers, maybe in Shriga or somewhere else. I've not fully discerned its exact location, but I have a few guesses. Do you mind sharing well, what you've learned? Have you heard of the Shadowfell, friend? Of course. Well, I think if there's any plane of existence. I think that might be the one we're in. So we're not even... In the Vantress at all. You were in Barovia. And that's all I feel comfortable enough to say. You're in the Shadowfell. It makes so much sense. I can't believe I didn't see it earlier. Yes. We did cross over from Striga, Professor. Yes, yes, of course. I should have known it was some kind of crossing. Everything I've read with the Vastani, it just seemed like it was a place you could get to. And therefore, Irina must have a soul. Yes. Oh, she does. 
Oh, that little, little minx. She, she contains, I'm, I'm assuming you've put it together already, Professor, as smart as you are, the reincarnated soul of the lost love of Shadonia. Tatiana. What? That poor girl was birthed with the soul, the reincarnated soul of Shadonia's lost love. Such a shame. Poor thing. But you know, nothing that we can do about it now, that's for sure. Is she doomed? Well, as doomed as one can be, housing the soul of the one woman that caused all of this to, to begin in the first place. Yes. Yes. I... But if we, if we prevent her from being killed or fed upon... At the very least, she'll be Oh, she won't safe. be killed. No, I'm sure that Stradonia has other plans. What, what's, what would she possibly want with her? Well, many things, I'm sure, but... Her fate will take her to the castle someday. I have no doubt of that, but... Until then, the best we can do is keep her protected, and her... I left her brother with many things to keep her safe. Well, he wasn't very effective. He tasked us with bringing her here. You brought her to Valaki? Yes, she's currently at the church. Oh, well, in that case... She's upon hollow she ground. couldn't be more safe. Good. You had me worried for a moment. It feels... I feel confident that you've confirmed our belief. Yes, well. You've a lot to unpack here. Oh, yes. Well, and I'm exhausted. I have to... have a saber-toothed cat. Do you? And he is quite... Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. well, that sounds very wonderful. Is it from Avantris, the cat? Oh, yes, of course. You brought a saber-toothed cat all the way from oh, Avantris yes. here. Yes, when you put on a facade like I do, you have to buy yourself a saber-toothed cat and bring him with you. I am i don't trust the Vistoni. There's a scent to the evil ones, the ones who are in league with Strahd. I uh, purchased a toy from Blinsky, and I've been training, I've been training uh, Chad... It's my saber tooth cat. I've been Lucky training you. Chad to sniff out these evil Vistani. He's harmless to anyone else, but he has the scent of them. He'll find them, he'll hunt them out wherever they are, and he will rip their throats from them. But it is quite a task to train him and to feed him. And uh, he was quite the, uh, he was in quite the mood when I brought him his steak tonight. Um. And uh, Drusilla, my lovely horse, uh, Apple. Oh, Drusilla. Yes. Your horse. Yes, you stole my journal. You've read all about her. Though I was clever. I made it seem like a friend, a traveler I traveled with, but no. That is what I had assumed. Yes, that. sweet darling. Incorrect. Drusilla. So a traveler indeed. Yes. Ah, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you put on a disguise like I do, you have to make sure that everything is pitch perfect. Quite right. You leave no stone unturned. That's right. You steal no journal off the desk of a man and do yes. not replace it with another. It looks exactly the same. With the same Rookie problems. mistake. Yes. Yes. Well, your we are are not generally thieving, so it was a... That does not sound that way to me. Three health potions. It's been dire times. At least you didn't take their jewelry or their electrum. To be fair, do, do, do we consider these... Do you consider these people an ally? I haven't decided yet, but as of right now, they're not my radar on my radar as an enemy. They have been rather kind to of us. I was thinking maybe we should just come forward and apologize. We should return the health potions immediately. This is just, this world is harsh and, and dangerous, and we took they an opportunity. They won't notice their bone. They won't, oh, right. No. So we should use them. Might as well, you stole them. Well, we didn't take their valuables, we only took what we needed necessary for survival. Well, it depends on what you consider valuable. Well, obviously. Me, potions. I consider my health to be valuable. But, worry not, I don't think they'll notice. Alright. If you say so. Perhaps we can make it up to them by securing some wine. That's a wonderful idea, Mr. Sanders. Yeah, you wouldn't happen to have any idea or have heard about this uh, wine shortage. I had you? begun to look into it myself. I've heard a bit about the tale. The, um... Did Erwin put you up to it? 
We had just heard a tale from both... His father is the lord of the winery, but he wouldn't tell you as such. They got into a spat a few years back, and they're not on speaking terms, so I imagine he's sending that way, not only to look at what's going on with the wine, but to check on his father as well. You see, the land here is not fertile, and yes. for wine to grow as it does, is magical means, so... I've done a little bit of digging. Ha! <laughs> sort of joke once I finish the story. <laughs> there are three gems, or were, that were planted in the ground, creating fertile land for grapes. You'll notice there are three different ki- types of wine here. The red grape mash, number three. Um, let me, actually, let me look through my notes. Yeah. Hmm. Ha <laughs> Mm-hmm. Ah, let's see. Red grape mash number three. Yes, red grape mash number three. I see. I'm, I'm taking detailed notes. Yes, I would hope so. I would be. I'm not I see. My quill is dry. Yes. Well, here's a quill. <laughs> oh, this is the wrong place. I need to be looking over here for the grape mash. Um, that one is the one that's most common. It is the least of all of them. Is the least of valuable of all of them. One's most easily able to come by. And then, uh, let's see, the wine storage, yes. And the, no, I'm, I apologize, it's purple grape mash number three. Oh, I always purple. think red, because wine is red. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's also one called Red Dragon Crush, which is uh, the second tier on the list. They're completely out of it here. And the other one is a champagne of some kind. Oh. Awesome. Name. The name escapes me. That one hasn't been seen for maybe a year. That, the champagne, is the one that caused the rift between father and son. You see, without these gems, the ground is no longer fertile. And about a year or so ago, the gem for the champagne was mysteriously taken. The grapes were no longer able to grow, and stock dried up. I believe there's only one vat of it left, and it's at the winery for very special occasions. Now, the other two, they were in plentiful supply, until recently, and I heard whisper that at least one, if not both, of the other gems have gone missing. So all three gems are now missing? I cannot, I can neither confirm nor deny, but... A nose nose, and I've been sniffing out the wine, as it were. Do you know where these gems may have been brought to? Well, I haven't made it out to the winery myself, so I couldn't tell you, but I do know the entire area is infested with blights. Needle blights, twig blights, like strange druids of the forest. It's a dark place there. How the inn was able, how the winery was able to stay so well guarded and undisturbed by the horrors of the force for so long, I couldn't tell you. I must admit, I am particularly interested in these gems that affect the soil composition, well, the cultivation of plants in this land. I find the soil to be quite amenable for my uh, my purposes, but my crop is very unique. Well, I can't speak to all that. I'm not much of a I'm not much of a green thumb, but uh, it's definitely worth checking out. And... Perhaps tomorrow morning we will set out. Uh, yeah, I mean that was, that was our plan, at least for tomorrow, to maybe see if we could figure out what was going on at the winery. Well, I definitely wouldn't recommend going in the evening. Agreed. Highwaymen. Not highwaymen. The druids. All manner of things. Well, it seems like this inn is safe to stay in. Oh, yes. I sleep here. Yes, having met you, I feel much safer to be honest. Lock your door, though. Why was there a magical rocking chair and evil dolls? I believe I have already... I, I had already spoken on this. The dolls multiply. 
in the med that they create rocking chairs. Well, where the wo- rocking chair? I'm, my assumption is they probably walked down to one of the other rooms and dragged it in. Oh. And, and and just just to be certain, I mean, we found fingers in the one sh- doll. Yes. Well, that is strange. I have known on occasion the dolls to do some pretty unusual things. Uh, collecting fingers does not surprise me. Does it look like the doll cut the fingers off themselves? No. And you notice blood on the outside uh, of the doll. Not no. that we know. Have you been near a cemetery any time recently? No. Yes. yes. Well, oftentimes they'll dig through the graves and take back trinkets. It's oh, possible gosh. that someone was recently interred. Can, it was a graveyard. Yes. Can, can we just burn it? And, and anyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said cemetery. He said no. Uh, you said yes. And then he goes under his breath. Yes, it was a graveyard. <laughs> it wasn't a cemetery. Fuck yourself, right? Every eye roll. So, so we can just burn them all. Anytime we find one, we can just burn it and hope that it? we stop them from multiplying. You can at least attempt to. I've never seen it work, but this is a terrible. Who, wh- why? Why would someone create something like this? Linsky's a strange man, but can we kill him? Well, no. Mr. You, Morgan. you could. I can't imagine that he would fight well for a man of his weight. But I, uh, he's harmless aside from his strange sense of humor. Well, and, you know, the room full of Irina dolls. Yes. I haven't had the heart to tell him that they're modeled after an actual person. I think that's one of the few things that would actually repulse him. What would the Baron need with those dolls? Oh, it's not the Baron that uses those dolls. It's his strange henchman, Isaac. Do you know what he uses them for? Well, he sleeps next to them. For what purpose? He finds Irina to be quite attractive. I've had enough. And and he needs, like, one a month? Well, it takes about a month for him to ruin the one that he has on him. Oh, dear God. Absolute heresy. I... Don't even know what to say. Are you thinking sexual things? I'm not insinuating anything sexual at all. I, I don't know what you're insinuating, but the bottom and, line is it can't be good. Well, have you met him? No. Oh. oh, well. Well, then it goes to show you wouldn't know much of anything. Yes, um, no, he's, um, he's a bit of a monstrous creature, Isaac. Um, he has a fiendish deformity, a monstrous tiny arm that casts fire from it. The townsfolk are quite repulsed by him, and uh, the the hand seems to move about on its own and do things on its own, and it oftentimes lights the doors on fire. Oh. Well, is I suppose that's less sinister. But... It's still a henchman. It's not the mind of a child. Is he... well, that depends. He doesn't have much of a mind at all. Intelligences. Honestly, I think Chad is smarter than he is. Why does the Baron Chad's a cat? Why does the Baron keep this man around? Well, you haven't seen him, of course. He's quite huge and um he's horrifying. I see. Gets a lot of things done. Now people in town they heavily dislike the Baron, but there is fear, and fear gets a lot of things done. And why would the people of this town that fear the Baron, or hate the Baron, why would they put children into stocks? Well, if they fought against it, then Isaac would take them and lock them away in the Baron's house, and God knows what happens to the ones that go there. I sure don't. So there's part of the culture here where they punish children for being sad. But not just children, anyone. Or, or adults otherwise. Yes, well. It is what it is, friend. If I were you, I wouldn't go poking my nose into other people's business. There's a lot to be done here. There are evils that need to be addressed. And yes. We're just trying to make sense of things and try to get somewhere that doesn't lead to another question. 
<laughs> oh, well, you're barking up the wrong tree. There are nothing but questions here. Many things will go unanswered for you. We've learned that in our time here. We'll let you get some sleep. We need some sleep as well. Yes. It's getting late. Well, a lot of information, but I'm so pleased to have met you. It was lovely to have met you too, Half Elf. You know, now that I think of it, there are some Shadow Elves. An encampment of them. You don't say? Yes. I'm not sure exactly of their location. They move about. But if anyone would know, the were they see all. So if you're looking for someone who could tell you a bit about your heritage, that shadowy I don't know tinge you to you. Oh, yes, you do. What is oh, it? yes, you do. What's he talking about? Drop it, Mr. Morgan. Thank you. If you're interested in that, I would keep your ear about the, the ravens. No, sir. Thank you. Yes. Dad, put your hair down. You're trying to hide it. Though I do like it up like that. Frames your face nicely. <clears throat> well, Burning... I'm off to bed. I'm going to get up and put the room. <laughs> Burning Good night. secrets. <laughs> Sarnax, don't look at me, buddy. Well, as for the rest of you, it was great to finally meet some friends in Barovia, and I will keep my ear out for more information about Lady Wakta. Thank and you. Uh, eventually we'll get together again and we'll have a conversation about the rest of these cards and we'll see what I can tell you about them. But in the meantime, I'll let you know if I hear anything amiss about town. Yes. And you do the same. Of course. Yes. Well. And uh, if you're in my room again, you're not going to find anything here. But next you time me. you rummage through my cart, at least take something. <laughs> Make it worth your while. I hope at the very least you understand that we aren't thieves. No, you're definitely not thieves. Thieves <laughs> would cover the track of the way they dragged my Chad through the dirt. Well, it was more like he dra- Never mind. It doesn't matter. Yes. We appreciate your hospitality, and we look forward to meeting you well, again great. in the morning. Yes, if you'd like to spend time with Chad, let me know. He's... Much more calm around me. Great. Thank you for the drink. And um, uh, your cat is quite strong. Oh, yes, I know. I've trained him well. Have a lovely evening. <laughs> Good night. Good evening. Good night. Good evening. I'm going to head back to the room with the uh, yeah, me with the men. And I assume Connor went with, was with you or headed to She the probably would have followed you guys. Victoria left by herself. Okay. Uh, well, uh, with that... I'm going to go uh, sit, think about trying to sleep. Fucking toys. Well, what the f- They're not malevolent, so we just have to understand this is how they are. And we'll deal with it. If they don't mean us harm, I suppose it's not the end of the world. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little vexed. And that's fine, but I'm just saying, make sure you get some sleep. Don't stay up all night again. We need you in top form tomorrow. Fine. Can we go in? Yes. I still do think that the one from Mad Mary was malevolent and bewitched. It is interesting that it was able to, uh... Oh. Well, maybe it wasn't the original one. God, how many damn things are probably in your case? Open the case. God. It, it, it's, it's, they're probably like cockroaches. You see one, there's, that means there's hundreds. Are there dolls in it? You don't see a single doll in your case. Well, it's gotten off somewhere. I'm going to bed. As he says this, you see as his hat begins to move up, as two red eyes stare out from underneath it. But what you notice is that they're upside down, and there's nothing on his head. <laughs> and it slowly lowers. Did I feel that? I would say you felt your hat lift, but you feel nothing on your head. <sighs> don't. Uh, I, mean, I hate this. <laughs> please don't panic. Uh, like like I did. Uh, in, admittedly, in the heat of the moment, I panicked. Let's all try to remain calm, and we'll just deal with them as we see them. I agree. The magic is gone. At least the, the malevolent magic, I believe, is gone. I would say you can tell that at least the um, the new one that you found with the head backwards does have the transmutation and the uh, divination magic, but the Mad Mary or the um, 
the morbid Molly doesn't seem to have any magic affecting it that you can tell. It just seems to somehow be able to animate. So the new one is a f- the one that you found on the, the pile of ashes. Yeah, on the, the one that we burned. The, the, the one that you burned. One. That one did have stuff. Okay, on it. but it's burnt. But you burn it. Yeah. Okay. Wait, what did it have on it? It the had same. divination. That's right. Oh, man, a transmutation. So it probably had the scry spell and whatever. Well, good night. We'll reconvene in the morning. Uh, all right. Uh, sorry, do you, do you want a minute before you go to bed? I do for you, Shepard. I uh, I had a dream last night. Uh, it, it was uh, not unpleasant. A dream? Yeah, I, I was I was flying over well uh, over Barovia, I, I guess, and and I thought I was like. Riding something, but I was I was actually a, a giant silver dragon, and silver I dragon. laid waste to all of Barovia. And, and I gotta be honest with you, it felt pretty good. It was just everything was burning, and and, and the destruction, and the, everything, all of this evil was was gone. And and I just didn't know what else to really make of it. And and, and I figured maybe you you'd want to know. And you were this dragon. Well, I mean, it was just a dream, but but presumably, yeah, I, I guess I was the dragon in this dream. I mean, it was just a dream, but I was kind of kind of been expecting to to have horrible nightmares after all the things we heard uh, you know, before we fought those god's damn hags. Uh, but I don't, I don't know. There is great power in dreams, especially when the gods are involved. I've experienced. Many similar dreams in the garden. But you said silver of scale. I mean, from what I could tell, it was it's hard to remember, you know? Like, once you wake up, you don't always remember everything. You don't always get all the details. And you bathed Barovia in fire. Something like that. I mean, absolutely. Just laid waste all of it. Does that sound off to me? A silver dragon breathing yes, fire. Yes, that sounds very off to you. You know the silver dragons don't breathe fire. There is something there, Shepard. Pay attention to your dreams. Color is important in the dragon world. Garrix is not just of one color. But he's of red and of gold. Both dragons with the power of fire. Both utilize the power of destruction. One good and one evil. To show the duality of fire that our very own Thomas is learning. But the silver, that is a dragon of ice. And frost. <clears throat> Pay attention to your further dreams. Perhaps Garrix has approved of what you've done to the wind. Well, I, well, I, you know, I mean, like I said, at the end of the day, they're just dreams. It doesn't mean I'll even have any more. But sure, I'll, uh, I'll try to make note. Nothing is coincidence, Shepard. I think you might be right based on just the things we've experienced in the last, like, 72 hours. I look forward to hearing more. Please be forthcoming. Sure. I'll do what I can. You want the bed tonight? No, thank you. Sleep well. Perhaps if you sleep better, you will dream better. Maybe. Good night, Sarkis. Good night, Shepard. Did you want to do anything before you go to bed, either one of you? I just went straight to bed. While they were having that discussion, I was kind of trying to fall asleep. Um, I'm okay. Oh. Are you sure? You all you don't seem okay. You all find yourself drifting off to sleep. Victoria, your dreams, you are awoken once again in dreams. You are attached to the bed like you had been the night before, but looking down, you... There is no hole in your abdomen directly to your spine as blood spills out around you. Instead, you find yourself writhing in pleasure 
And as you look, you see as your belly gets larger and larger, fruitful with life. Until the pleasure turns to pain as lash marks begin to appear on the flesh of your exposed, impregnable abdomen. You look down in horror as you see your belly stretch and move until bursting from it, pale as anything you've ever seen, blood-red eyes, wrinkly skin, an infant vampire begins to claw its way out of your stomach and make its way towards you, its mouth dripping with the blood that is drained from your body. And as it gets to you, to your face, it looks down into your eyes, blood dripping onto your neck from its exposed fangs. Mama. As you wake up. Shepard. I choose to wake up. <laughs> I choose to die. Is there a rule for that? You, you wake up. You open your eyes to the sun oh. barely shining in from the window. And immediately oh. in your face, nestled next to you, is Molly holding a knife, dripping with a strange bloody substance. As she looks up at you, she pulls one of her fingers to her mouth. And that is where we'll end the session tonight. What? Oh my god! <laughs> really? What oh do you mean, really? Oh we started god. early. And we went. And we, we, we were. Oh, it's almost nine. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Mickey. Holy fuck. fuck. Is this. I hope it's a dream. I hope it's a fucking dream. Oh my god. And it's not like actually. Like if I'm gonna if, if the next session starts with Shepard, you've been stabbed. I'm gonna be like, oh, great, great, great Shepard, cool. you have a huge bleeding wound. <laughs> you've been disemboweled by a fucking dog. Oh. So oh, yes, oh. that is tonight's oh, no. session. We oh. will be back next Sunday, starting at noon, and we'll be playing until late then too. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the follow, oh, MJ Tags. Oh, okay. Welcome yeah, to our family. Oh my God! <gasps> and uh, so, for anyone who follow or for anyone who subscribed to us, we are going to be jumping into Avengers and Chill right now, which is where we are going to decompress, talk about the session, answer questions. Sometimes I pull back the veil. It is a sub only stream. Yes, it's sub only. Yes. If you've never checked it out before, though, you do get a five minute preview, so you can see if it's worth subbing for. If not, that's fine. We yeah. just appreciate you being here, hanging out with us. And, and um, just to give a little more context, they're long, so yes. it is going to yeah. be longer than five minutes. So if you're interested in seeing the whole adventures and chill, we highly suggest that you sub, and then you'll get this as your perk. One of the many. Crazy. Oh, Holy thank shit. you so much. It says, on that note, I have to follow to keep up. Wow, oh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, that means if you want to catch up on our previous episodes, they're on YouTube. Our, this is our third Strahd episode. Yes, yeah. after yeah. Death House. Estimation and YouTube. come join our Discord if you want to hang. Yeah, exclamation point Discord. Um, join us. We do. We, we chat a lot in there. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff going on. There. I do, when you were earlier, uh, I'll leave it for Vance and Chill. I'll leave it for Vance and Chill. We have a lot to yeah. talk about. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We will see uh, those of you that can make it to Vance and Chill, and then we will be back for uh, Christmas Trot again next Sunday. So, oh my God. Yeah. and we have we have campaigns throughout the week, but yes. this one specifically will be back. On I'm Sunday. excited for Rudy to. Yeah, Rudy Tootie on Wednesday. I'll be back to Rudy Tootie on Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday. Rudy Tootie, 7.30 on a Wednesday. 7.30. Yep, 7.30. Rudy Tootie, Rudy Tootie. We love you too, Abby! Please We're going to be switching over here shortly. Yeah. So yeah. 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 all of our subs hang yeah. tight. Oh, Everyone else, all our newcomers, thank you for coming yeah. out. Yeah. And we you. answer questions. So if you're new and you want to talk to us for five minutes, please stay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a five-minute trial, so come in, drop in, sub if you want to stay. Everybody really stay safe if you're in the path of the hurricane. Yes, please. exactly. Yes, what you gotta do is stay safe. safe. Please. Enjoy please, your please. holiday weekend um, and be safe. Yes, be safe. Okay. We love all of you. All right, guys. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Next time.